pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. Praise the Lord, beloved of the Most High God, in the mighty name of King Jesus. Thank you, everyone, for coming out this evening. Uh, I am so excited uh, to be doing this evening's broadcast. It's it's funny because I really have been under attack. Sister Angel knows I told her my personal story. I've been under attack all week, <laughs> all week. And it wasn't until, like, about maybe... 30 to 40 minutes ago um, that this, uh, not even just what was going on in my physical body, but uh, almost like a mental um, heaviness or oppression was, uh, was on me. And uh, something I've been wrestling with on and off all week. And then as I began to just pray and praise and get prepared for this evening's broadcast, about it. I, mean, just, I feel like throwing my own little personal praise the Lord Jesus party. <laughs> so I'm glad all of you can be participants this evening. I want to thank everyone uh, for coming out this evening. But before we get started, I would like to open um, this evening's broadcast with prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I come before you right now in the name of Jesus and ask that everyone who is participating in this broadcast this evening, whatever need that they might have, whatever uh, yearning in their bodies, Lord, whatever need financially, whatever need psychologically uh, in their lives, Lord, that you meet that need. We know that you are more than enough. You are the one that mends the brokenhearted, Lord. You are the one who uplifts. The joy of the Lord is our strength. The Lord is the strength of our life. And without you, Lord, we know we can do nothing. And we thank you, Lord, for blessing everyone who is a participant in this broadcast or even comes back later and clicks on this broadcast and listen. We pray, Father, that the words that we speak tonight and only bring uh, what you would have for the people to know this evening, Lord. We thank you so much for that. And Jesus, we bind the forces of darkness, the enemy. Right now, in the name of Jesus, our adversary, Satan, and we rebuke him and we command him to be restrained for the, the period of this broadcast in Jesus' name against us and what we would have to do this evening because we are about our Father's business. And we thank you and praise you for that, Lord. And everyone that agreed with that prayer said, Amen. Amen. N now, may I add? May I add uh, <laughs> yes, please. Oh, yeah. Heavenly Father, just uh, a little uh, postscript on that, God. We uh, just, I want to pray for Sister Lisa. Whatever uh, situation that she's uh, dealing with in her life uh, doesn't have to be made public. Uh, she knows what she's dealing with, and so do you, God. And we just ask that you would strengthen her uh, and, and build her up, whatever her needs are, that you would fulfill them. Um, and we ask for a surrounding of uh, your heavenly angels of protection. The, uh, the hedge of protection around her to be so strong that it cannot be penetrated by the forces of evil. Uh, we really see her as a mighty warrior in the body of Christ, and it, it's easy to uh, be attacked. Of course, we're going to bring attention on ourselves, and obviously she's, she's doing that. She's putting herself out there on the front lines all the time. Uh, you know, they say that the nurses and the COVID and doctors are the, are 
you know, the, on the front line, they're the heroes, but that's not true at all. The battle is spiritual. And so as far as the spiritual warfare that goes on, Lisa is right there in the front. Sister Lisa is in the, in, right on the front lines all the time. So I just ask uh, that you would uh, guide her and keep her and protect her. And, uh, and uh, thank you, God, for uh, hearing our prayer tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Brother Cripps, for that postscript. I appreciate it. Um, thank you, guys, everyone. I know there's some of you out there that have been praying for me. Shout out to uh, everyone that has been doing so. Thank you for coming out this evening, um, Bible Literalist, Sister Celine. Thank you so much. I see, uh, let's see, Brother Luke says, Brother Luke actually is always saying something. So let <laughs> everybody give a shout out to Brother Luke out there. Uh, let's see, Jay Shore, thank you for coming. Joyce, how you doing? Uh, Judith, hi. MG, thank you for coming out. Robert, appreciate you. Thank you so much. If I miss anybody, it's just because I was scrolling through pretty quickly. Thank you so very much for coming this evening. Uh, tonight we're going to be talking about several different things that I think that all of you will enjoy. Um, we're going to begin this evening. I, I had wanted to talk about binary, but I, I didn't get a chance uh, this this week to explore that as deep as I wanted to. I have some things that I wanted to uh, uh, talk about, but I'm not satisfied with my research on that. So I'm going to push that off until again next week. We'll pick up with, with that when I when I open the broadcast. I'll talk about binary and how that tie, ties into the transgender agenda. But I am going to talk about the other part that I wanted to talk about this evening, which is PSYOPs. But before I begin that, I would like to introduce my illustrious panel. I'm telling you, y'all, I, I, I know I say y'all a lot, and I, I'm actually not even from the country. I'm a city slicker. Mm -hmm. I was born, <laughs> born and raised out here in Los Angeles, One California. Thing. Oh, yes. One thing. What's What's that? No, no, the from the movie City Slickers. Uh, uh, you said you were a city slicker, and there's the theme in that movie. They hold up his finger and says, "The one thing, oh. all we need to do is find one thing that we can we can do well." Thank you. You know right. what? I have not seen that movie in what is it? But it's more than twenty years old, isn't oh, it? Me neither. But I remember that. Uh, I remember that from it. it it's yeah. it's easily twenty years old. Yeah. yeah, and it was actually if I if I had like. If I could remember it, <laughs> remember the name, it would probably make like if I had a top hundred list of, yeah. of films, that would definitely be on there. It was, it was a hysterical. It I was a agree. hysterical one. Anytime they can manage to pull off comedy without being filthy, nasty, dirty, exactly, I can usually be a, right? and blaspheme the Lord Jesus Christ. Then you know I can support it. You know what and I'm saying? And a decent message for a secular movie, actually. Exactly. A, de a decent message. Well, I guess you might even have your movie for next week, Brother Cripps. <laughs> well, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, I wouldn't mind he's... watching that again. I wouldn't mind watching that. It's been a long time. For those of you who are just joining us and you don't know, Brother Cripps, the gentleman I was speaking to, his channel is called True Story Live. And I'll let Brother Cripps go ahead and introduce himself and maybe give the audience uh, just, a, just a little bit more for those who are joining us and don't know you, a little yeah. bit about yourself and your channel. Sure. As uh, Sister Lisa said, my name is J uh, Jason Cripps, and my friends uh, and and uh, my my friends mainly, my, not all my family. My sister doesn't call me Cripps, but um, that's kind of the name I go by. I'm from the North originally, but I've lived in the South for most of my life. I only lived in the North for like eight years when I was a kid, uh, and then I went back for my senior year. And uh, up there, they call each other by their last name. And uh, also, uh, Jason's a pretty uh, common name. Um, I had uh, have had jobs at restaurants where there was more than one Jason. So instead of putting Jason on my name tag, I just put my last name because there's not anyone that I've ever met other than family that has that name. So uh, that's the name I go by. Anyway, I'm uh, glad to be on the show. I'm on a couple of other uh, broadcasts. I call it a show, but it's a it's really a, a ministry. Uh, I believe, and uh, it's been a pleasure to be on this broadcast, and I'm excited to see what God's going to do as we uh, tackle all these topics, and um, I guess that's it. Uh, she mentioned my channel's True Story Live. There is a lot of content on there, but we haven't done anything since uh, last October, but I am feeling led to start that up again. I just didn't want to do the same format, and I've been uh, waiting for God to to speak to me in, in what kind of format I, I want to do. And I, I do believe that 
um, I'm, I'm getting an idea of, uh, of what needs to be done. So there may be some new content soon. So I appreciate that. Thank you for mentioning it, Sister Lisa. Praise the Lord. No, no problem. Thank you for that, Brother Cripps. Mm -hmm. uh, now I'm going to introduce Sister Angel Martin. She has a channel uh, that I have enjoyed when she does put up her own content and she goes on rants and stuff. They're awesome. <laughs> I love hearing her. Sister Angel, why don't you say hello? To everyone this oh, thank you. Yeah, I need to do another video. I, I because we've been doing the shows and then um, the the posting them. I just it kind of like uh, kind of makes me run out of things to talk about, so I don't end up making a lot of videos of my own without you know without the live streams. But then has been really sweet to actually uh, mirror everything to or upload everything to my uh, to my channel. Um, I just you know, gave him my password because. <laughs> I'm so technically retarded. I just have my password, and because uh, I trust him, he's a stand-up <laughs> guy. And um, yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm really glad to be here. And also, I just wanted to say to you guys real quick, um, if any of you guys are interested in um, uh, like uh, cryptid type things, uh, if you want to hear an actual like saved believing Christian. A uh, man, a uh, researcher named B. Doss, he has a channel called the BDRP. He is actually, we're, we're talking and he, um, we, we, I'm, you know, we might do, a, might have him come on at some point, but I wanted to give you guys a heads up to, to check out his, his channel. Because I've honestly, I've, I don't think I've ever found a, a Bigfoot uh, dogman type researcher that actually believes the true gospel. So it's actually really interesting to, to hear their perspective on it. Um, but, um, and he is also, I'll have you guys know, the only black bigfoot researcher i've ever seen like he goes out and looks for them so um and he's see, he's you know he's seen these things uh uh before but he you know he has a, a biblical perspective on it but um anyway i just wanted to throw that out there because uh if we do end up having him on maybe it would be cool if you guys were a little bit more familiar with him so his channel is pretty large though so it would be a big get lisa we would really be hitting the big time <laughs> so now, Sister Angel, when you say he is the only black black Bigfoot researcher, you're not just saying the kind he's that goes researcher. out and hunts for them. No, I've, no, never, no. I've never seen one before. No, you're missing what I'm about to say. You're oh, not sorry. saying that he only looks for black Bigfoots. You're saying he's yes, black. Yes, yes, specifically, yes, he does. He's 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 uh he's you know very uh what do you call? It? He's kind of like a, a a black supremacist when it comes to big. No, no, he actually he's seen a, a, a all white. Oh. He um he lives in uh I think it's like Oklahoma, like the very t the bottom of Oklahoma. And so he uh, goes, well, he used to actually go out and, and look for them. But after um, some encounters that he did not like, uh, that he really hasn't gotten over, he, he doesn't believe anymore that he thinks it's a demonic, like, distraction a lot for people to go out. Mm. I guess apparently it becomes like somebody's whole life when they start mm. doing this. And I've heard a lot of people talk like, you know, the more they realize that, uh, that, you know, it's probably a demonic deception because anywhere they look, if they start looking, they'll find it. Like, I don't care where, like in their backyard, like it, it you know, it's, it's just too. Um, oh, you, you're saying no that once somebody it. gets interested in it, it starts manifesting yes. no matter where they are. And it becomes, yeah, and it becomes like an obsession, like an absolute mm -hmm. obsession. Interesting. Where they'll like lose their family over mm -hmm. it. Yeah, yeah, so. I'm skeptical. Wow. I'm skeptical. Oh. <laughs> You're skeptical? I'm skeptical. I think it's a combination. Go ahead, brother. Brother, Chris. Oh, no, that's okay. Go ahead. That's all right. You said you're skeptical. I want to hear what you're skeptical about. Oh, I, yeah. I, I, I think that there's so many sightings of it. I, 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 I'm not saying I fully believe that. Jen and I listen to a show called Sasquatch Chronicles. They're very interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, me too. Very interesting. Um, I think I'm not saying that they don't happen. I just I'm thinking that there's some demonic element to it where it's like, like either sometimes it's a spiritual manifestation that they just, you know, can, you know, it's an apparition and people think it's real or they can manifest physically. But I, I, uh, OK, huh? Mm. Yeah. So what were you going to say, Jason? I think it, I think they're real. And I think that they're uh, uh, uh a leftover result of the uh, gene splicing. That's my right. that's my opinion. Yeah, that's that's. I mean, I I I think that that's a good possibility too. There's just some other stuff I've become aware of recently, uh, some like Christian accounts of like things they've seen and tests they've done, trying to figure out whether it was like flesh and blood, like always there, or whether these things would just kind of appear, um, 
like almost mm-hmm. like you're summoning them with your attention. Like if you, you know, like there, it's a, it's a long story. I don't want to, uh, we'll talk about it when Dee's here, but um, mm-hmm. uh, he, he tends to see it kind of like a, a mix of two things. Like you're what you, what you just said. And then also, you know, he says there's, there's a difference. Like, like, like there's um you can, I guess some of, some of these sightings are spiritual in nature, like completely. And some are, are, are totally physical. He believes there's a physical creature out there and he's seen them before and filmed them and all that stuff. So um, anyway, uh, but, but I just wanted to give you guys a heads up so that he, um, when he does come on, you guys would know who he is. So it wouldn't just be some, uh, <laughs> some stranger, but he is honestly <laughs> yeah. one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet or talk to. He is the, the fruit of the spirit is, is uh, very obvious with me. So I think you okay. guys here will have a great time talking to him. Well, so stranger, you have to get uh, get with me, and uh, we'll we'll have to arrange a, a contact with uh, DDoS so we can set up a time for him to come on the yes. podcast. I would I would love yeah, to hear I'm gonna email what he him has tonight, to say. and then I guess we're, we're gonna talk on the phone, and I maybe you you can talk to him too or whatever because uh, he okay. he wants me to email him, and so we can talk. So, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. We'll we'll set it up. Um, we'll get it set but I uh, just wanted to tell the audience because I don't know if anybody's really heard of him. Even though he does have a large channel, it's usually for super nerds of Bigfoot, like super. Uh, Bigfoot okay. Know about him. So. <laughs> That's fine. We'll we'll definitely get him on here as a guest. I would love. I'm sure the audience would, you know, if for no, if if just for um learning, because I kind of lost contact with any ideas or because it was a big thing for a while and then it just kind of died off now i don't know about here on youtube i'm talking about before youtube you know mm-hmm. there were there were documentaries and stuff that were done and you know then they had people they actually caught wearing suits and stuff to kind of like yeah uh, you know so, so i think it's a combination of of real sightings in with fake along with maybe there is some supernatural stuff going on too so right. you know that would be interesting to explore with him but i don't i don't want to forget to introduce uh, the last panel member this evening, which would be Brother Ben, who is our illustrious producer, uh, the man behind the scenes that keeps everything functioning for us and is going to have, um, I'm just going to probably run one clip this evening as I'm talking about racial psyops a little later, but Brother Ben, do you have an active channel where you're uh, putting up content or are you just kind of still behind the scenes on that too? Hey, I've been, I'm still kind of behind the scenes, and a lot of things I might have made content before I've discussed uh, on these um, different uh, programs that we have. Uh, but I definitely do want to put produce some content, especially uh, around um, difficult passages that are, are twisted out of context and things I, I know the Lord has shown me about how to properly understand them or additional insight or additional perspective on them. Um, I could probably easily make 10 to 15 videos on that. And um, today I'll show you some of the notes I have on that. Um, but eventually I will uh, would like to make uh, content on it. Um, one thing I'm interested in, if there's anyone out there that has like an artistic skill uh, about, you know, just making some basic uh, artistic uh, depictions, um, very simple type of illustrations or whatever, uh, I would be interested in partnering, partnering with. Um, uh, yes, yeah, so, but right now I'm, I'm pretty much limited to uh, these these panels um, and also too with regards to the Bigfoot I'm definitely interested in that I'd subscribe mm-hmm. to his channel uh, and I, I think there is something I think it's potentially tends to be 100% spiritual I mean you don't see any uh, remnants like you don't see the uh, uh, you know buried bodies or bones or anything else it, it gets mm-hmm. it, although I don't know that Satan's realm maybe he just he can he can just uh, take him out of the ground immediately I don't know but um, very hey, interesting man. Yes. Yeah. Can you go back to a little bit? What were you talking about? Illustrations? Illustrations for what? You kind of uh, cut off. Uh, oh, I would like to start making videos, um, but to make a, but but to keep them interesting, um, I think it would be helpful a lot of times to have illustrations uh, with. The, so I want to do some uh, exegesis type videos of, of difficult passages uh-huh. that people often misunderstand, um, and I would like to introduce some illustrations. And I, like, I could like basically. drawings. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, Jen does that. She's fantastically talented. Awesome. Yeah. That's okay. cool. Yeah. Yeah. Very much. So, um, if she's interested, I can uh, shoot you some ideas. Of, uh, not not a ton, but I, I uh, you know, I think it'd be a great collaboration. Well, yeah, we're yeah. we're working on a, actually a, a, a children's book, and she's doing the illustrations for that. I'm I'm writing the um, uh, the dialogue and whatnot. 
Wow. Um, that is awesome. Yeah, yeah. We're just trying it, you know. I mean, well, Jen, you heard Brother Cribs. You, you, you're, you've been conscripted. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she loves drawing, so, yeah. It's, I, I wish I could draw, man. I, I, I could do kind of other stuff, but it's so hard to get what is in my head onto, yeah. onto the paper. Such a True. good skill. Everything. <laughs> when I was younger, I wanted to really, really draw. I was really interested so in it. Frustrating. Everything I draw ends up looking like a, 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 either a comic book type thing, which <laughs> some of those are good, but I just couldn't get yeah. that. Or a comic strip. You know, it's like I, I the realistic drawing I couldn't do. I can do comic strips. I used to do those all the time, uh, oh, but I, I couldn't get. That's sort of my, I can't even do that. I couldn't get the talent to. That's interesting. It's the exact opposite of me. It's I, I'm pretty good at, but everything I do is hyper realistic, and it takes forever. Oh. I'm, not able, I'm oh. not able to do that. Oh, abstract. poor baby. I so really no, no, yeah, poor baby is. must be so frustrated. Don't so. brag much, Ben. I'm not. I mean, <laughs> I, I feel like for me, drawing, it's like when it being in like a dream where you like, you can't, you know, you're like in a dream, you're in a fight, and you can't punch someone in the face, like you're trying, to keep missing, or like you can't, uh, you can't move, or you can't scream, and you're trying, you're trying to run, and you're like in sludge. That's how I feel when I try to draw, if that makes sense to anybody, like that sure. frustrated feeling. <laughs> sure. So you could just become like the queen of stick figure drawing, because there there's some really cool stick figure drawings too you could if you keep your lines clean and neat there's there's great oh no 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 stuff. i just stick to painting i'll, I'll just paint because if, <laughs> if you can't like crap if you can't really paint but it like if you work on it long enough it can look like you meant for it to look that way so you learned <laughs> I'm gonna okay and i'll mention that to, yeah. to jen sorry i didn't mean to talk over you angel oh no i was said yeah. i was dead. i was dead. well guys i wanted to get into talking about uh, PSYOPs as I, as I see what I've been able to perceive. Um, there's a whole lot, so I, I certainly, I'm not going to even scratch the surface this evening on, uh, on the PSYOPs that I have perceived. But there was one, I don't know if you guys saw it, where, let's see, out here on the West Coast, and I don't know if that, it could have been something they broadcast nationally, it was a um, broadcast on ABC, and it was called Let It Fall. And it was absolutely infuriating because it was about, uh, they, they covered some things about uh, the Rodney King riots, uh, mostly is what they were talking about and then in relation to what was going on right now. And the very, the very title, <laughs> Let it fall. Um, I, I I felt personally, in my uh, never to be humble opinion, that if we had a real government, whoever ran that should have been arrested oh, yeah. for sedition. Yeah. Uh, because it was it it was it was it was actually in my never to be humble opinion, trying to infuriate the public, because. Within it, I'm glad I, I learned to become a student of observing uh, what what they call. Um, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm yep. losing my train of thought now because I'm I, I, I'm already halfway down this road in my mind where I want to sure. go. Sure. But a body language and sure. uh, what they call duping delight, which is when they're when a person knows they're lying to you and they trick you. And they, there's this little smirk smile that they do because they're pleased with the fact that they're pulling off their lie. Mm -hmm. And so I saw a lot of that within that. They, they were some you know, clear smiles and stuff. And you're supposed to be talking about all this. You have all this fury, which is why you were out there, you know, burn, baby, burn. But you're smiling. And, and then uh, should, if you've lost a loved one, I don't care if it's been 40 years. When you start to talk about it, sometimes you can't even you can't even complete your sentence. Yeah. So you know, without getting choked up and getting that knot in your throat. So, um, but they're smiling, you know, little smirks and stuff. Um, yeah. But they they had they had black against white, white against black, Asians or mostly Koreans against black, uh, uh, Korean uh, uh, black against Koreans, police 
against whether it's black, Korean, or white against the police and police against the police. So they had all this wrapped up in there. And it was, it was, <laughs> I made myself watch it because it was, a, it was just a lesson in watching how, how psychological operations work. And we already know, if, well, I shouldn't assume that you guys know, there was a time that it was against the law to use propaganda on the American people. And even though it was against the law, they were still doing it. But now, you know, it's not even against the law anymore. So I guess they're just going full bore. But, uh, Psychological warfare, I'm just going to read a quick definition here, which is what PSYOP is uh, short for, um, or psychological operation, is the basic aspect of modern psychological operations have been known by many other names or terms, including MISO, M-I-S-O, PSYOPs, political warfare, hearts and minds, and propaganda. The term is used to denote any action which is practiced mainly by psychological methods with the aim of evoking a planned psychological reaction in other people. Various techniques are used and are aimed at influencing a target audience's value system, belief system, emotions, motives, reasoning, or behavior. It is used to induce confessions or reinforce attitudes and behaviors favorable to the originator's objectives and are sometimes combined with black operations or false flag tactics. Mm. It is also used to destroy the morale of enemies through tactics that aim to depress troops' psych psychological states. Target audiences can be governments, organizations, groups, and individuals, and is not just limited to soldiers. Hmm. Now, that's a whole lot right there. That's a, and, and this is what they've been doing uh, to us, and, and even part of it is to wear people out, literally. So you just throw your hands up, and they can just accomplish whatever it is that they're trying to do without any, any pushback, you know? And boy, if people aren't just Anybody who's even, even if you kind of sort of believed what was being said in the news, I mean, wouldn't, aren't you just sick of hearing about it now already? I mean, aren't you just tired of, aren't you just, I, I mean, really. I, it, everybody's ready to just say, just arrest everybody that's out there cutting up. I don't care what their agenda is, just arrest them because people are just yeah. tired, you know? Uh, but go well, ahead, brother uh, Cripps. Let I'm me get your thoughts. I, 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 I don't want to even talk about it you know the the riots and all that stuff i'm just i'm just so over it. that's all you mm -hmm. see same thing with the virus thing i mean are you seeing it in your area though you no no exactly. it's just on the news exactly, exactly. no <laughs> so, that's that's the that? point i believe that's the point it's, it's propaganda from mm -hmm. the media and, and people that own the media to rile people up and uh, to to get people to think that you know we're this close, I I think Angel was right about that. They're they're not being they're probably never be a race war, but they're trying to. Was my point right? My point is yeah. They want a race war, and so they're using the propaganda to get the Republicans mad at the at the Democrats, the Democrats mad at the Republicans. It's a political thing, as well as different groups of people, um, and it, it as uh, Lisa is saying. I mean, it may not be her total point, but propaganda coming from the talking heads in the media. Yep. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, a lot of people don't know, and, and I remember when I was talking to my mother about this, the Congress, I think there was a hearing, Brother Cripps, you've probably seen it because you, you're very well-versed on a lot of this stuff, I've noticed. Uh, there was a hearing they did years ago where they admitted that, that the newscasters, that many of them were CIA. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, right. So people don't even know that, you know, like I remember a time when you could turn on television and you turned on the evening news and when one broadcast, let's say you were watching ABC, went to commercial, you could flip over to NBC and catch them doing something a little bit different or CBS. Now they all go to commercial at the same time. They all do the sports 
at the same time. I mean, you can't flip to a different channel and go, uh, and I'm talking about the, the, the national broadcast stations, not local stations. Mm -hmm. you, you, you can't even get a different, it, and it's all the same script, all yeah. of it. Some yeah. of it's almost verbatim. And yeah. I think we've all seen those videos where people have literally, I saw one where a guy took like 40 different uh, local broadcasters and they were all reading from the same script word for word. And he literally put the screens up little mini screens going across the, the one screen, all 40 saying the same thing in unison. The they Easter were all Bunny reading has, from a script. Yeah. The Easter bunny has a spring in his step. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. And the one about like a child's birthday, yeah. you know, a, a very precious thing. Well, he literally did it like the old, I don't know if you remember this. I don't know if it was a national supermarket chain. They used to have a chain out here called Alpha Beta. And and there was a, a guy that was married to Suzanne Summers, whose name was Alan. Ooh. Alan and it, you tell two friends. Was it Lamb? Lamb. I thought it was Alan. No, oh, no, 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 no. No, Alan Hamill, he was he was just her husband. I don't think he was ever famous. Yeah, yeah. He was famous for being her husband, you know. Right, and right. Uh, at one time. And and anyway, in the commercial they would say, if you tell two friends and so on and so on and so on, and they would expand the where yep. each, you know, yep. uh little block was like the Brady Brunch, that block, and it would just keep expanding. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess that's what really what we have to do with the truth. You just have to keep telling it to people who listen. Because people are are they not sure what's wrong? They know something is wrong. Yeah. They just don't know what it is. Something's and, happening you know, here. Mm -hmm. What it is ain't exactly clear. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh uh, let's see. Yeah, that song. You better stop. Listen, what's that sound? Everybody, look what's going. It's going down. Yeah, I wish people would stop and look. The problem is, it's like they're just running with what's being said. Although, uh, I did see someone went off on one of these city council members, uh, respectfully, but no, oh, he dropped the bomb on them uh, in, in the city council. We know y'all lying. We, and he said, and there is a hell, and most of y'all are going to it. Well, what you yeah. doing? We know what you're doing. Did you see that one, Brother uh, Cripps? I, I didn't. I saw, but there was a guy that was speaking about the virus and saying, you know, uh, he was challenging um, what, what was being said. I, I, I can picture his face, but I can't think of his name. It may not be exactly mm -hmm. what you're talking about. Yeah, he was living because he was saying, you're forcing us to wear these masks and do the social distancing. And we all looking around. We can all clearly see nobody, like I was saying, nobody's killing over. I'm right. paraphrasing what he said. Nobody's right. coughing up a lung, but you still got us doing this stuff. Why? Yeah. Yeah. Why? I'm saying the hospitals oh. are full when they're not. And yeah. I'm telling y'all, my mom works at a hospital, okay? Out here in Los Angeles. They clear 100 beds and made 500 beds ready. That means nice, crisp sheets. The room is sanitized. Everything's clean and ready to go. They cleared an entire floor. <laughs> they never got one person. Into the overflow, not one yep. for six to seven weeks, and finally they had to open it back up. Mm -hmm. And here's how brainwashed people are. My even my brother-in-law, see that they they know that I believe in flat Earth and all this other stuff. So they're already at, at, a, at a point where they think I'm I'm a conspiracy uh, wacko, whatever. Um, when, this, when all this first uh, came out, I was explained to him. I said, there are people that have gone by these hospitals and taken video and that they're showing that the hospitals aren't filled to capacity. And this was before the nurses started dancing on TikTok, and they had a party in New York out on the street while mm. everyone was supposed to be dying. They got a huge truck here, uh, out, out front, uh, playing videos, praising the nurses. They're all out there with their phones, taking, uh, pictures, probably like 30, 35 nurses out there when people are uh, uh, supposedly dying and they're doing dances on TikTok. Are you kidding me? Anyway, he said, after I told him there are videos out there that I could send you where people have taken their phone and actually gone into some of these, or at least outside of some of these hospitals and showed people are just standing around doing nothing. They're, they're, they're not a capacity. There's not long lines of people waiting to get in. He said, Oh yeah. Someone in their basement making it look like it's a hospital. 
you know, with a you know putting a fake sign up. No, dude, these are hospitals. These are actual you, hospitals. You can't fake the yes. outside of a hospital. I don't even with deep deep fake. <laughs> you can't fake the outside of a of a national hospital. You can't do it. It's not the basement of someone's house. That's uh, so dumb. Uh, <laughs> even if even if it was one, there was like. 20 videos with them dancing and they're all in the hospital attire. No. They're actual nurses. They're actual doctors. Yes. Yes. The double mindedness reminds me of people that like argue like, you know, for in uh, non eternal security for in, you know, um, what eternal insecurity. They people like, tell mm -hmm. the true gospel and they'll try to come back at you like the double mindedness of, of, of like, just you'll have so many clear verses and they will just come back at you. Yeah, but faith about works is dead. It's like, what? That doesn't contradict. What? Like, that doesn't do it. It's the same with these people that think there's a, you know, like there's actually a real deadly pandemic. Like, do you know anybody that's sick or dying? Well, no. Do you know that the hospitals are, are empty? Well, yeah. So then why are you still wearing a mask? Like, and like, there's no real like way to reconcile the two things. Like, right. you know what I mean? And, but somehow they're still doing it. I don't, I, it's, 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 very strange. I, yeah. I don't. I don't understand those people. Back to the nurses, real quick. One of the videos. I don't know if you guys saw it. They were carrying a mock dead body while they're dancing around in the hallway. Mm -hmm. It's in your face. This is. This is what helped wake up. What What you're talking about right there with the dead body. Mm -hmm. When a friend, a family friend of mine, I, I, she wouldn't listen. She was like, "Oh, you're being outrageous. I don't think you know." I said, "Just," I said, "Just, just pretend for a second that I'm sane." Pretend for a second that I might be right. Pay attention to those gurneys that they keep showing you on those bodies that they're putting in them trucks or bodies that they're burying out in a field. Since when do they have the right to do any of that mess where they, they can go do a mass grave? Wait, huh? What? So yeah. you, 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 you saw that, didn't you? There was a video where I they were showing... Oh, okay. That's so, what they referenced. That, that's what my, oh, uh, okay. my sister and brother-in-law, they said, there's trucks out there and they're loading <laughs> bodies in the back of these trucks and i said they showed one gurney with something in a body bag we don't know right that it's an actual body uh, and I, the other point i made was look the news is not scared of showing mayhem and murder they're not mm -hmm. scared so if it was really happening we would be seeing the actual sick people and not just a video that's from italy and they pass it off. They, they show the same video for Italy as they did New York. It's the same darn video. Yeah. Yes. They got busted yeah. with a hospital scene. That's the one you're talking about mm -hmm. where they claimed it was Italy yep. and it was New York. And, yep. and they could prove it. Yep. They, they showed it. They can prove and, it. And this is what my family member finally, oh, my family friend said, finally. She looked at one of those gurneys and she said, that ain't look like nobody on that gurney. Yep. And I said, okay. But see, what they're hoping is that you won't pay attention to detail. You'll just be shocked for the shock value and that you can't see the actual psychological operation that's being run on you. That's it. You know, and they once you, not. once you start looking at it, like the big, pictures, just look at what's actually happening versus what they're telling you is happening. I don't remember if you, I don't remember if you, I don't know if you guys remember, but the early photos from China, like they showed dead people in the street, just like laying down, like they, there's you know just they collapsed yeah. suddenly, and the people in hazmat suits were just walking around like, oh, we're overwhelmed. I mean, it was just so ridiculous. I fell for that. I mean, I didn't think a virus did it, but I was like, I mean, that that made me think that there was at the very least like they were chemically attacking. I, I didn't even think about the fact that oh wait, they could do fake videos too over there. Uh, you know, I that like like it because it was in America. Like if it had happened in America, I'd be like, could this be fake? But for some reason, like I didn't, it didn't occur to me that at first that they could actually literally just be staging videos in China. Um, uh, so I thought that I had to figure out some way to explain why all these people were convulsing and dropping in the streets because <laughs> I knew a virus wasn't doing it, and I knew it certainly wasn't like a flu-like illness that was causing that. Um, so you know, and then uh, you know the 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 I mean, it's probably easier to make psyop, you know, fake videos over there. But they probably have, you know, even more, right. you know, latitude because nobody can, <laughs> none of their people can really expose it. Mm -hmm. But see, th this is what I'm talking about. How right now, 
they're running psyops within psyops. I mean, what are we dealing with? Are we dealing with COVID nineteen? Oh, yes. Are we dealing with outbreaks? Are we dealing with Black Lives Matter? Are we dealing with Antifa? They got all these operations running at the same time right now. Oh, and I and, think part of the reason it's so confusing is they're targeting people like us now. Oh yeah. Not the masses. Do you see what I'm saying? They're, oh, it's yeah. even more confusing because now they're also they're trying because before they just were trying to convince the average person that they knew because suspicious people would be like, no, that doesn't make sense. But now they're also there's enough of us have developed. There's been enough people who have woken up to a lot of these things that their psyops have to change. Yes. To where Andrew. they target yeah. us mm-hmm. to where we can't figure out, can't yes. get a handle on really what we think or what's going on. See, this, this stuff is right in their face because what they know is that for, for everyone that does see it and know what's going on, same thing with flat earth. The, they're they're willing to let people understand what's happening. The few people that do, because they know that the ones that failed, that refuse to look at it, will believe their narrative, and that's the majority. Mm-hmm. We're the mi- minority right here. What we're these mm-hmm. things that we're talking about on this channel, it, we're the minority. We're very much the mi- minority. Um, smaller and smaller minority. I mean, a larger and larger. I don't know. I don't know how. I guess you'd say a smaller and smaller minority. I mean, I, more and more people really are catching on to things like the on some se- like minor level, like not like to where they're, you know, like believing the true gospel, for example. But a lot. I mean, I think that we underestimate people when we think that um, the average person now is totally opposed to conspiracy theories. Although you have surprised me, Jason, and and Ben, by people in your family being that way, because here in Indiana, I literally pulled the parking lot before, and nobody that I pulled believed 9-11 wasn't an inside job. Well, yeah. So I've that made in, me think. Yeah, I've run into people in the grocery store, especially when all this first started, that weren't wearing masks, and we stand in line this one was actually an employee that was uh getting off for the day and i was standing in line and i do uh observe the six foot thing because i'm not trying to draw attention to myself mm-hmm. but i don't wear a mask so i was standing six feet behind the person in front of me well this woman this employee came up and stood right there because i was at the back of the conveyor belt and i had my stuff on there um, because of the distance between the person in front of me and this woman. And I was shocked. This woman came up and stood right next to me. I look at her and said, you don't care about the, the virus and stuff. And she put her hand on my arm. She had no gloves on, she put her hand on my arm. And she, uh, as if it was conspiratorially, you know, kind of in a whisper, she said, it's all garbage. And I don't believe a word of it. And then she said, you don't mind that I'm standing this close. I said, absolutely not. And we had a nice little conversation while mm-hmm. we did. Up. Yep. So there yep. are people out there, Angel. I agree with you. There are people out there that do seem to at least see some of it. Um, well, because I, I mean, I just haven't talked well, to the, one person that has that that doesn't think it's BS. Like to some degree, that's the thing. I'm maybe Indiana's just really uh, advanced. I don't know. <laughs> advanced. Yeah. I don't know anyone who, do, well, who does. Uh, aside from you guys, I don't know anyone who doesn't believe it. Right, exactly. The fact that you didn't have a mask on was a big indicator that you had that's not true. been brainwashed. That's true, Lisa. That's true. So she must have yeah. felt, felt safe in that uh, scenario. It just surprised me, though. It surprised me that she wasn't even observing the six-foot thing. She just was standing right there behind me. didn't bother mm-hmm. me. I'm like, cool. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I, I think a, even said it to me. She said it was all garbage, too. A healthy start lady that was in the uh, playground. I couldn't believe it. Hmm. Interesting. I wanted to talk about, as I was saying with that, let it fall. I mean, the very title. Like, what are you talking about, let it fall? I hope it'd be your lies. I don't think it's going to be your lies that's falling. Because if you calling for America to fall, uh, last time I checked, that's either treason or sedition. And how are you going to put that on as a broadcast to say, let it fall? What are you talking about? How come nobody gets questioned about that and they could just run that? And, and, you know, there's no heat, no blowback, no FBI agents visiting and going, what, what did you mean by that? What are you, what are you calling for to fall? Yeah. I, I just think that's puzzling. Explain but yourself. I want to, yeah, explain yourself at, at the very least. So maybe you're talking about, you know, um, what, what I don't even know how they could spin it any other way because of what they were playing, the content. It was clear what they were saying they wanted to fall. And, and then I shared with Brother Ben a few weeks ago 
where Tom Hanks came out with this really cryptic, oh yeah, bizarre message, like they were celebrating something. Well, we know what they think. We we know what they're celebrating, right? The destruction yeah. of America. Yeah. In my never to be humble opinion. Yeah. Uh, and and I played it in. And Ben was like, "Oh, I can't stand that guy." Yeah. Why <laughs> oh, Ben, I'm trying to put like words in your mouth, but you did kind of intimate that you couldn't stand. I'll, I'll be honest. I I drank the Kool Aid uh, where it comes to Tom Hanks before I woke up. I I loved him. I went to see every movie he's been in, and then when I woke up and I started to see. Yeah, some- but now you know he's he's a player. You know. Oh, totally. Two oh one. Are you kidding me? His, his he and his wife are playing. Uh, I believe it was Rummy. Was that is that right? They were playing Rummy or whatever. And she mm. said, "My wife's beating me by two hundred and one points." Are you kidding me? Well, also the uh, Corona typewriters. Oh, absolutely. And why is he? Po- okay, this is get off on a tangent. <laughs> why is he posting pictures of children's shoes? One shoe. Oh, well, because he he just has a fascination with with singles. You no, know, there's gloves too. It's not just shoes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, who's finding all these one shoe from children out there? Is that is that not a sign to something else? Is, he, is 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 that not a coded message? Are you kidding me? Come mm-hmm. on, man. Yeah, and and if we do have FBI, so called, or criminal investigation units that focus on ch- child rape rings mm-hmm. or groups, mm-hmm. then how come nobody knocked on his door to ask him what that meant? Well, someone had a theory out there that that's why they were "quote unquote" in Australia because they were they were um, operating in a sting all across uh, all across the world at the same time. But I haven't seen any fruit that proves that that's what they were doing. But the, someone had, had said that on one of their on their broadcast that that's why uh, he was you know kind of speaking in code because he was under investigation. And, um, of course, he didn't want that to be public. He and his wife were under investigation. And that's why they were being so cryptic, letting people know somehow what was going on. Uh, I, I, I haven't seen any, like I said, I haven't seen any evidence that, that they, there's any kind of sting. They even said that cruise ship that mm-hmm. was held, I forget where, uh, in the harbor, that was mm-hmm. uh, where they were taking all these these people that they were arresting mm. for the for the pedophile ring. They were taking that's interesting. Well, the, the, go ahead, Ben. Go ahead. Uh, uh, okay, well, I thought fine. it was for the kids they were rescuing. Uh, well, they were rescuing the kids. Yeah, rescuing kids, but they were also arresting people in the ring. That's correct. Uh, there are some things about Tom Hanks. I, I some people that uh, put some p- pieces together that I think I uh, discovered some other pieces, and it's really dark. But it basically involves. Uh, that bloody hand on Wilson Ball. I mean, that's all code for stuff. Yeah. Um, mm. and, and that it involves Ellen DeGeneres uh, it, 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 and uh, Jay-Z. There's a common pattern. You'll see it. And sure. it's, it's pretty ugly. Well, and have you seen his son? Oh, yeah. yeah. Not Colin. Not Colin. Either. That's all you need to see right there. But his, 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 his one of his sons. Chad, I mean, Chaz or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's some kind of white rapper or whatever. Um, he came out and did a video, and it, it just like in your that face, like, yeah, real that so sarcastic funny. about, yeah, we're we're part of the Illuminati, my dad and my family, and blah blah blah. And your day's coming. He's like threat, actually threatening uh, truthers. He's actually threatening. I thought it was mm-hmm. hilarious. I don't think it was. It seemed really funny to me. Like it, I didn't really feel like like I I had to give him that one. I thought I was like, man, uh, he it was I, it was so funny. I didn't think he was really threatening us. I thought he was just like really no, making fun of people. Really? You you thought, I, oh. you thought it was a real threat? Yeah, yeah. I, mm-hmm. He's he's. Yeah, I don't think they. I think they cloak. Well, we know they cloak stuff in here. Yeah, it might have been cloaked. We yeah. cloaked it. Yeah, he definitely cloaked it. He's like, you know, like, like he's got it on his chest. Look at the tattoos on his chest. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. On, well, see, yeah. that was the same thing with the George Floyd oh. thing. That was a Freemason tattoo on his chest, and that that clip. I did not see it. I didn't go look for it. Just in other people's videos talking about. Him being in a in a so called porno that yeah. uh, mm-hmm. that was what was on his chest in the picture the clip that they showed yeah. that it was uh, the Freemasonic uh, what is it eagle or phoenix because yeah. people yeah. argue it's one or the other and we got Christians that uh, found uh, supposedly some kind of uh, uh, information that no no he was he was a Christian and he was leading like working with churches and stuff. 
Mm. And and they're well, believing that. Yeah. Lauren was. <laughs> yeah. <I think> so. <laughs> well, bro brother Ben, if you have that clip ready, if you could, if it's ready to go, I'm gonna ask you to roll it in just a second. Uh, on uh, racial psyops and psyops on how they do psyops. Now this, I don't know what the date of this video is. I don't know if it's the 40s or the 50s. It's somewhere in there of oh, this black gentleman. Um, Brother Ben, what's the gentleman's name on that video? It says uh, what his name is that's in that uh, video. Leonard Patterson. Thank you. Leonard Patterson. And he talks about how he was going to become uh, or was a member of the Communist Party here in America until he realized what was going on and how they, he was being used and how basically people in general were being used for these different psychological operations um, to destroy to destroy America. They think, they think they're in some of these people out there that are members um, mm -hmm. of Black Lives Matter, you know, they're, they're what you call true believers. But what, yeah. who was it in, in um, the Nazi parties? Oh, no, it wasn't Nazi. It was, was it Lenin or Stalin? I get them mixed up that said he called them useful idiots. I can't remember. I, I don't remember. Uh, I, I don't think remember. It was, I it think was, it was either Lenin. Lenin or Stalin. It was either yeah. two of them. But were they just, they're, they're true believers. They, they're they really not trying to <gasps> go was, do evil, but they, was they, it Yuri they're just going to use them. Yeah, Yuri Bezmenov said that. He was, um, I don't he was know. one That's of the USSR like, guys. Mm-hmm. And he called yeah, these he people said, useful idiots because they're just going to use them. Yeah, and then and discard then they go them. Kill them. They go first. Yes, because they're they go, they'll be the first ones to get rid of because yeah, and then because because they also know once they discover that they've been used, they'll be yep. they'll become an enemy, so they have to get rid of them. Yeah. But rather, yeah. Ben, if you would go ahead and roll that for everybody to to hear and see. Yes, I will do what's that. What's going on right now? Yeah, I'll play. It's like five minutes, and uh, I'm not sure if you guys will be able to hear it, but the they they will definitely hear it, and I put a link to the uh, video in chat if you want to uh, watch it independently. Thank you. Number okay. one commie tactic is to destroy the police. Here we go. The Spoken Word Library presents I Trained in Moscow for Black Revolution, a lecture by Leonard Patterson. Mr. Patterson joined the Communist Party in Philadelphia in 1928. He rose rapidly through the ranks, went to Moscow for advanced training along with such well-known party officials as Steve Nelson, Benjamin Gitlow and Claude Lightfoot. In fact, while in Russia, he was the roommate of Gus Hall, later to become head of the Communist Party USA. Leonard Patterson was no small-time operator within the movement. He was a member of the National Committee and National Bureau of the Young Communist League, a member of the Central Committee of the Negro Commission, and chairman of the International Negro Commission of the Communist International. He organized and led picket lines, strikes, goon squads, and riots, all in accordance with orders from party headquarters. He was an active and effective communist propagandist, not only in the United States, but also in Russia and Germany as well. Mr. Patterson left the Communist Party when he finally realized it wasn't honestly interested in helping Negroes, that it was just using him and his people as cannon fodder to create hatred and violence and that the goal of the communist movement was the enslavement of all peoples. I am Leonard Patterson. When I was a young man, only 23 years old, I joined the Communist Party. I was a member of the National Executive Committee of the American Young Communist League. In 1930, I was the official communist candidate election to New York State Assembly. I knew Gus Hall and other top-ranking American communists very well because I trained with them at the Lenin University in Moscow. I joined the party because I honestly thought the communists were trying to help American Negroes. I broke away from the party when it became clear to me what the Congress were really up to was to use the Negro people in this country in a violent and bloody revolution 
aimed at the establishment of the American Soviet dictatorship. It was that simple, and it is still that simple today. Make no mistake about it. What is happening in the United States right now under the banner of civil rights is exactly what has happened in China, in Cuba, in Algeria, and in many other places around the world. When I was studying communist technology in Moscow, my instructors emphasized the importance of using honest grievances and popular slogans as a smokescreen to cover up the true nature of the revolution. We were taught how to use propaganda and arouse the emotion of the masses. We learned how to set one group against the other and to make them hate each other. We learned the necessity of having martyrs. And we were even told how to create our own martyrs if they did not emerge the result from the atmosphere of hatred. We were taught the importance of getting large masses of people into the street for marches and demonstrations. And finally, we were instructed in ways to take off riots and make them spread and to keep them going. When I returned to the United States, I was immediately given practical training. I participated in so-called nonviolent demonstrations that were deliberately calculated to irritate white people and to violence against us. I personally was in charge of organizing a march on Washington to dramatize the Scottsboro Boys case. In New York about 1935, a Negro boy was reported killed by the owner of a store while in the act of stealing some merchandise. Communist Party headquarters decided to make a march out of the boy. So we went right to work putting out handbills and holding open air meetings. In less than a half hour after we started, there was a race ride on the Frisco Street, complete with smashing wonders of white storekeepers, looting and all the rest. I'm not speaking of things I read about. These are things I personally participated in. Yes. We were taught how to use propaganda, how to arouse the emotion of the masses. We learned how to set one group against the other and to make them hate each other. We learned to be set to having martyrs, and we were even told how to create our own martyrs if they didn't automatically result from the atmosphere of hatred. Yeah. Okay. Hey, everybody. I, uh, I hope that you paid close attention to that video. Uh, this gentleman, Leonard Patterson, talked about the racial psyops that they have been using. Now, this is what 19. I think he said he got involved with the night uh, in 1930 with the Communist Party, and how he was trained to deliberately come in and create civil unrest and to work against you know the american people <laughs> and the overthrow of the american uh the government of the united States to foment uh instability between the races so if this was if this was their agenda then you see what's happening now what do you think the agenda is that's why I keep telling. I have to keep telling people, and my family, because they're they. Hey, look, they're they're talking about black men were being lynched out here, right out here, in California, and they're upset. And I'm trying to calm them down and say, don't believe everything you see on that idiot box, yeah. because we don't know what's real. The only way we well, could confirm. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Sister Angel. No, 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 no. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, the only way we can confirm would be one is if we were there and we saw an actual body and a body being taken away. If we see that there was an actual autopsy with a death certificate, I haven't seen those things. 
I don't apparently know. Apparently, he and did he's... have a. They they did rule it a suicide. Uh, the one you told me about. Apparently, there's a video of him hanging himself. It, yeah, and, but here's the problem. Yeah. But here's the problem. With the way that they're able to do technology, we mm -hmm. don't know what we're looking at. Or you if, know, he back in the real, if he's even real. Right. You know, back in the day, they used to have uh, a commercial that they ran. And uh, Brother Cripps, I'm sure you remember this. It was with Ella Fitzgerald. And she's standing there with her headphones on in the recording studio. And she would be singing. And she'd hit this high note. And break this crystal glass that they had. Yeah, I do remember that. Okay. Wow. And then they would play this tape. And the tape, they were saying that because this audio was so crystal clear mm -hmm. and was so uh, just like the real thing, when they would play the tape, it would do the same thing. It would shatter that crystal glass. Mm -hmm. And then they would ask the question, is it live or is it memorized? Memorized, yep. And so Memorex became known as the outstanding, you know, medium, mm -hmm. this is the words they use, <laughs> for, for recording your, your uh, music and, and recording material. So uh, this one I want to ask. We don't know what they're running. We don't know if this is real. And it's sad because we're, this is what's what I'm saying about PSYOPs within PSYOPs. What's even more frightening is if it is. Mm -hmm. Because, okay. Here's the danger we run in if we think that everything is a psyop. Mm -hmm. When they actually do start killing people, and we know they are, they're the devil's children. How are we supposed to distinguish when something is real versus when it's not, particularly when it's not happening to us right next door or in our personal experience? Mm -hmm. and, and this is why I say we're really going to have to, in these last moments we're here on earth, pray and be submitted to God and be led by the Holy Spirit because we literally cannot believe our own eyes and ears. And and this is this is strong delusion. And that tell I, I knew years and years ago, television or the cell phone, which we have now, tablets, it doesn't matter, whatever you're viewing is a part of the strong delusion. Oh, yeah. And I mentioned that in one of my videos, YouTube ended up taking uh, taking it down on uh, the coronavirus in there, how War of the Worlds, the original radio broadcast, oh, yeah. was a psychological operation against a, a small town with Orson Welles. And see, we always have these actors involved. Uh, the actors are agents. Agents are actors. That's just th that's the same thing. Those words are interchangeable. And they scared this town half to death. It, and, and I think a couple of people did, did die, they I think did. by their own hand, yeah. committed suicide. Because they actually thought their little town was being invaded by those tripods, those uh, aliens. And... They actually ended up shooting out a water tower. You know those big water towers you see in these small towns yeah. for the, that provide water? They thought because of their hysteria and fear that it was an actual alien and blew up the water tower. Yep. And they had hearings about this. Yep. Congress had to <laughs> – and they had to get together and they had Senate hearings on this and had to establish certain protocols so that this couldn't be done again because the people who were listening – thought it was real and didn't realize it was a so-called uh, staged event because they made it seem like it was real and they never told the audience this is just a, an act and a, and a play. Mm -hmm. So I guys, I it, think you know, that's why it, they're going after the statues is to, is, is, the, is so they don't have to proliferate their little mobs all over this the, the America. Like, you know, people are paying and putting up like, to it like in smaller towns and stuff but what they can do is get a few people uh in towns near you or your town itself like a few of their operatives to take down a statue to make it real for you to make you think it's really happening you see what i'm saying mm -hmm. like to to because like you might not see any other anything else but if you suddenly find that you're you know, like a statue in your town's destroyed or defaced you're gonna think it's here too it's really happening the commies mm -hmm. are coming you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Well, they have to have a way of measuring what it is they're doing more than just destruction of businesses because right because people a lot of people are not going to just stand by and watch their business be destroyed some people are going to take up arms <laughs> and so yeah. i think that rather risk than risking that they say well we'll go after these statues most people may not uh, be willing to go take up arms to defend one of these statues where they might if it was their business or their home so you know this is calculated what they're doing no no doubt about it and when i found out that antifa was related to all those people who had the big money that have these foundations and you know uh fund these things and then it was right there in the hot point hot spot that broke out right there in minnesota that antifa's headquarters was there uh, you know, when you start connecting the dots, you see how this operation is running. All you can do, beloved, is pray, number one. And number two, let your family just plant seeds. Even though they can't hear you right now, they'll remember what you said. And it may it may be the thing that causes their mind to click later on to realize, wait a minute, something's not right. This This isn't right. Something is going on. This is not normal what's happening. And and maybe we can wake some people, more people up, it's, you know, especially our youngsters out there who are impassioned and they want to be social justice warriors. And say, hey, hey, sit down, because you don't know what's going on. You know, take take a seat, pay attention, look around, because every everything is not what it seems to be. But they know that perception for us as human beings is our reality. Mm -hmm. And if we're not able to distinguish what's really going on, they have altered and created a false reality, which is what most people are operating in right now. Mm -hmm. And it's almost surreal for us who are awake. Uh, it was really, really creepy where now more people are taking the masks off. But they're trying out here, I know for sure in California, they're trying to gin it back up. They're saying, get ready because there's another wave coming. Oh, so now you guys are profits. with that. Yeah, now you guys are prophets. You can tell us what you can't tell us with with any recently uh, about other things. But now all of a sudden you're a prophet. You know that there's a wave coming. Well, the oh, only yeah. way you could know there's a wave coming is if you are the ones creating the wave. Oh, that's what I was going to say. Yeah, if they planned it, they can tell us that it's coming. Yeah. It's confusing because Trump's rally, he was like, even even Trump was saying, oh, yeah, they say, oh, you've got this case, you've got this case, oh, no, we've got another case, but but it's like a little, it's like somebody who has this nipples, so he's going to be better in in uh, in 15 minutes, and it's like, wait, I'm so confused now, because, you know, like, that's, that's like a pretty mainstream affair to be saying that, which is like really what anyone needs to hear, it's like, even if you believe in it. Why do you care if you get it? Why do you care? You know, why would you care? It doesn't, even if you see it real, it's not making anybody sick, you know, which is so sad that we have to put it that way because that you don't, it's not real. It's not actually there, but just, to, you know, but for people who can't, no, I can't handle that. All right. Well, it doesn't seem to be making people very ill, you know, 99% of the time that's their comfort zone. But like, that's all people really need to hear to snap out of this. And I'm just shocked that Trump said that at the rally. You know, so I'm so confused now because, you know, I, I now it's like, do they want us to know it's not real? I am. I can't figure it out. I, that's what I'm saying. They're tra they're targeting people like that are that are onto them now so that they, that we don't even know what their angle is exactly. Yeah. Um, you know what I mean? Sure. It's yeah. just just confusion, just cause confusion. Yeah, no. No, That's exactly. Just, it. I think enough. We beat, we beat the horse to death on that one for now, on these psychological operations. I'm just, I can't, I can't break them all down for you guys because a lot of it I'm still figuring out myself. But I know what to do is when they say jump, I'm not gonna say how high. Nope. I'm looking to see what's going on and pay attention to what's going on, and I'm questioning everything. They don't deserve our blind trust. We have caught them in too many lies. But don't forget. They took us to war. The whole uh, war on terror was a lie. We went yep. to war with a country that never did anything to us. Yep. Don't ever forget that they stood up there under oath in front of 
uh, Congress or who knows if they really even took the oath uh, under uh, with Congress and swore that Saddam had weapons of mass destruction. And then George Bush, a, a couple of years later, after people have been murdered, after soldiers have been killed, stands up there and tells a joke. Well, those weapons of mass destruction got to be somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Wow. All right. Yeah. And people laughing and, and, and good men and women's sons and daughters went over there to die for that crap. Yeah. I ain't going to never forget he's a war criminal. Now, nope. if I live to be 100. Nope. And everybody else who participated in that, Bolton, who's writing books now, and all those other players, all those other players that, that are war criminals. Mm -hmm. So, you know, don't forget they took us to war on a lie and got that little girl to stand up there in, in, in Congress and swear that uh, Saddam was taking babies out of incubators and throwing them on the floor and stuff. Like, mm -hmm. wait a minute. Don't we got Planned Parenthood over here? Yeah. They kill babies right here. But you're yeah. going to go halfway around the world to stop Saddam? I mean, yeah. can y'all not see the level of this? I know y'all do. But the level of psychological operation they've been doing on us forever. Oh, yeah. This didn't just start in 2020. No. No. Yeah, I, mean, um, the, I just uh, want to say, Lisa, I have, I, I'm, I'm just going to be right back. I, mm -hmm. My cat just threw up on our bed. But I did want to ask just for food for thought before I go, uh, uh, whether any of you guys, uh, you know, especially uh, Jason and uh, Ben, because they tend to have families who go along with these things. Are your families like virtue signaling like crazy now on social media and stuff? Just wanted to know if you if you're seeing that virtue uh, signaling. Yeah. Yeah. About all this. You Absolutely. Know, what the heck yeah. is that? They oh, did I'd a, love to hear about that one. They did a video. Well, I didn't mean to make your before you begin, Brother Cripps, I didn't mean to make your cat sick talking about the psychological operations. It makes me want to throw up. So obviously your you cat said. your cat <laughs> she uh, did not threw up. Uh, yeah, not she did not approve. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, Brother Cripps. They actually made a video. Now it was meant in, in to be a comedy, but they did to the tune of my Sharona, my Corona. And they listed it. This is what this is how the you know, the name of the family, I'm not going to give the name of their family, but uh, mm -hmm. this, this is how the Smiths handle the virus and they're dancing around, you know. Oh, I meant with the racial stuff now, because mm -hmm. we're seeing all these people like making Virtue apology videos. For, that, yeah, that, I didn't well, know if your family, I want to know if your families were doing that, because I know your sister's always sold out to, uh, not sold out, she's all aboard with the, with the Rona, but I, 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 that's why I was wondering if she's also now the same people that are going for this whole virus thing, or are they going for this whole BLM thing? No, they're not. They're they're not like political like that. My sister well, is uh, all into it. Uh, she her mind is not her own. Um, she is unbelievable. It'd make you sick. Um, it's 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 almost comical that if it weren't uh, reality, sad. you know. Yeah. yeah, it's just like, are you serious? I, I especially to give the fact she knows me, and I'm I'm the very antithesis of that. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty um, extreme and uh, intense with her because uh, I have to be uh, trying to mm. wake her up and it doesn't do any good. I'm convinced you cannot wake someone up. Virtue signaling. Am I perceiving this correct uh, as to what virtue that is when what? you like um, uh, you're, you try to make sure like if there, if there's like a big, a big thing um, that happens, like say like, you know, there's oh somebody said an uh, anti or homophobic slur, and all the celebrities come on and they're like, "That's not okay." And you know, people both you know men and women both have periods and all that crap. <laughs> like, <laughs> like it, where everybody chimes in to try to make sure it's like I'm not a I'm not a trans, I'm not a racist, yeah. and like it's like fake. It's Blackout. just they're trying to make like you know on I mean? Facebook doing a blackout. On yes, your like the, the square. Yep, yeah, that yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, I, I've already, you know, I've been seeing for, I don't know how long Facebook's actually been around, but for many years now with all this, uh, these different postings that they do yeah. where they're rituals. Um, yeah. yeah, you know, France, what do they call exactly. that? Um, challenges and all that stuff. Yeah. You know, like they had these children that, you know, because they're young and stupid, they didn't know you pour yourself with some flammable fluid and set yourself on fire. Yeah. 
even if you're in the shower, you're still going to get third degree burns, yeah. you know, stuff like that. Yeah. So, you know, we, we, we got to have to also try to warn our, our young people out there. It's going to be very difficult for them to understand. Uh, hopefully videos like the one that I shared with you tonight, if you guys can find other stuff to you need to sit your young people down and, and explain to them that we actually have a government that runs psychological operations against the people. We're the enemy now, according to, to their perception. And this is why they, they can run all this propaganda. And we, we see in the media where it's been this way forever, the slogan, if it bleeds, it leads. Yep. That's exactly my point, that if this stuff was real, they would show the real pictures of all the people that are getting sick. Absolutely. If it bleeds, it leads. They, would, mm -hmm. they wouldn't just show the back of a, of a truck, the side of a truck with one gurney going on it. No, sirree, Bob. <laughs> right. Nope. Right. Oh, no, they would be out there front and center with that camera. When, in but, fact, when this stuff first started, I didn't immediately jump on the bandwagon of, oh, this is a hoax. I waited. Mm -hmm. Me to see either. What was happening. I waited. Yeah, me, me either. I yeah. was quiet for a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then when I saw that there were no real pictures coming, when I saw that the people had was already going to help at hospitals and they took their mm -hmm. phone with them, and they're mm -hmm. like, nobody's here. I tried to volunteer my time and effort, and you know they won't even let me come in. They closed it down. There's nobody in there. It took videos of it. Well, I was long before that. Before that, I already knew it was a psychological operation yeah. because my mom works in a hospital. Yeah. And there was no surge. And every day I was, this is even before her hospital cleared the floor mm -hmm. for 500 beds mm -hmm. in a thousand bed hospital. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, she, she, I'm like, mom, are you seeing any? No. Are you seeing any? Sp no. How about today, Ma? Every day. Uh, any? No. Well, let so, me yeah, go ahead. I want to ask you this because what you're, uh, this is very interesting to me because my sister has a friend that works in a hospital. In fact, it, uh, she kind of smugly sent me a video from the beach where she's showing her friend, who I've met her friend. She's a wonderful person, mm -hmm. um, wonderful church going person that I, that I like very much. And it's her job to call people and tell them that the that their uh, Rona test came back positive or negative. Mm -hmm. And she was doing that. And she says, oh, yeah, she's on the phone. She still has to work, even though we're here at the beach. She has to call people and tell them. And she knows she, she did that intentionally, knowing that, you know, knowing how I feel about this whole thing. But that's not my point. My point is, why are some nurses, like my sister's friend, um, stating that yes, this is real because that's what that's what she told my sister that yeah, this is really happening. Well, you, it depends on where she's coming from. For example, if that's her job, is to notify people that their test results have come back positive, exactly. she may not be aware that eighty percent of those exactly. tests Thank are you. false positives. That's what I tried to tell her. I tried to tell her that's compartmentalized that mm -hmm. she's not doing anything. Her friend's not doing anything nefarious. She's not like trying to spread some lie. She, she delivers what she's been told. Right. By people. Right. It doesn't make them, everybody's not evil. We're not saying that no. we're saying they can't see the big picture because as you're saying, they're compartmentalized. So yeah. she's just been given a job to do. She's a nurse. Yeah. She's supposed to get the results call the patient. So here she's getting all these results. Wow. Yep. There's yep. a whole lot of people that have it, yep. but she don't understand the other part of that puzzle. That's right. Eight out of 10 of those people she's notifying don't have anything. That's right. That's or, what she, yeah, the, that's the, what she the, said the, to the me. The test is gonna, bogus itself. You could test a jackfruit and get a positive. You're going to the <laughs> you're gonna believe YouTube. So, you're going to believe YouTube over my friend. That's a nurse and, right. and our cousin. That's a nurse. I said, yeah, because they're not being told everything. Well, I mean, right? what? No, you're not saying she's lying. You're saying yes, she's she's calling people that they're the the bogus tests are giving them positive results, and she's notifying a lot of people of their fake positives. Yeah. Uh, show her the Tanzanian president. You're gonna believe your friend over the Tanzanian president? Are you a racist? Right. Just go that way. <laughs> See if well, that works. Well, it. <laughs> what cracked me up was how they 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 tried to mock. And I think this is the one you're talking about, sister. Was it the female with the Tanzanian president that said, 
we're not going to we're not going to do all these extra measures. If you're sick, stay home. If you're not, go to work. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, they the, were the like, "Ready, president? He's male. I don't know if okay. Uh, he was the one who said, look, we. He was a scientist. Was for the, he tested. Uh, he he secretly to the lab. He did not tell the lab." that they were sending in samples of, of, you know, fruit and, you know, uh, weird stuff. But, and, and no, they weren't testing the outside of objects. Yes. Cause people think Rona is floating around everywhere. So they, you know, people are like, Oh no, it's cause it was on the surface. No, they took out their samples from the inside of, of like, it was like breadfruit or jackfruit, pawpaw, um, a bunch of different things, like a goat, like all kinds of different things. And, uh, you know, uh, the pawpaw tested pro- positive for, for Corona. The, the, the jackfruit tested positive for a bunch of stuff that, like, it's ridiculous. And he was mm-hmm. a laboratory scientist, so he understands that, um, uh, that the test, you know, he was saying we're being, you know, basically we're being played. Because um, the test, obviously, there's something wrong with it uh, if, uh, if, if it's testing all of these inanimate objects and animals positive for this stuff. And um, and that was like a really I mean it was an incredible uh, a video I, I I don't know if I shared it on my channel but uh, mm-hmm. but you know I, I guess they suppressed that a lot and then also Tanzania is going with an herbal remedy uh, mm-hmm. an herbal remedy from um, Papua New Guinea I think it's mm-hmm. like uh, it's like some type of herbal thing I'm sure it's something that just treats any type of cold or flu right. And, uh, but it, but actually it works so well that like a lot of people all over the world are buying it or ordering it. Mm -hmm. And so people have tried to come at him, you know, how irresponsible, how this, how that, uh, and, uh, uh, he, and uh, I think there was another, uh, it was an African health official were, I mean, just expert in, in, in fending this stuff off because they said, so what is your problem exactly with, with us using, um, this natural uh, plant derived medicine that is developed in, I think they said, you know, it's being developed in Africa. Is it only that only Europe gets to, gets to produce the, you know, the pharmaceuticals that treat this thing. And if it's working and it's not doing any harm, like what's your problem exactly, you know? And, it, but, but apparently, you know, it's helping people. I mean, I guess, like I said, there's all kinds of herbal remedies for the flu. Uh, people mm-hmm. who actually get sick and have symptoms, you know what I mean? But then also mm-hmm. people who just have a positive test and they think I'm definitely, I'm done for, and they, they take it or they take really any medicine they think is going to treat it, you know, even though they have no symptoms yet, uh, they don't get symptoms. They think the medicine works, <laughs> you know what I mean? Because they weren't going to get it anyway. But, but yeah, he, he, that guy is awesome. I forget his name. Uh, we talked about it on a, on a, on a live stream, like, you know, a month or two ago, but. Uh, he, he's like, I wish I said, I said, I wish he was our president because he's like got a spine and he's logical. Whereas we're all being gaslit like crazy. But right. That's the point of this too. They also, I don't think they care about making it seem real at all to anybody. I think because it does so much damage for people to, 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 uh, comply with something so detrimental to their own lives. Um, and believe something that there's literally no evidence of, and all the evidence is to the contrary. Like they see nobody getting sick, they're not sick, but it does so much psychological cognitive damage to you if they can get you to go that far to where you're that brainwashed and that compliant. That you know, there might be it's like a point of no return. You see what I'm saying? It's going to also drive other people to the other direction where they're going to wake up, but it's going to drive a significant amount of people. Uh, in the you know in America and in the West, um, in you know which is like the primary target of all this, it seems uh, to to be so far gone they they can't come back because because they they've detached that much from critical thought and like perceiving reality mm. because you know what I mean like you wouldn't think people would believe that there was a deadly pandemic but it was like a secret pandemic that mm. like never seemed to manifest around them. But well, somehow it's real enough to like throw, close their own business and kiss it goodbye yeah. without a fight. Yeah. <laughs> and well, suffocate themselves with masks all day long. Suffocate yeah, themselves. That's I not, cannot even not put good. one on for five minutes. Yeah, it's not good. I wanted to uh, give a shout out to a sister out there. She is a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. Her name is Peggy Hall. She has a channel called Oh, don't let me blank on it now. <laughs> uh, darn it. 
um, can't remember the name of her channel. Now. Just one second, guys. It'll come Let me back. pull that up. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> the Healthy American. I didn't want to say it wrong because I want to refer for you guys to the right channel. The Healthy American with Peggy Hall. And at, she's out here in California. I believe she's based in Riverside. And she's been exposing how, and this is what I said from the beginning, literally the week that they were coming out with these direct oh, you have to do this. This is a mandate. This is the guideline. This Okay, and I was saying pay attention to the language because only Congress can make law. So they're actually telling you it's not a law. And they were telling people that they had to wear these masks when there was no law. To, you know, and, and, <laughs> and she is, is, is just busting it open. If you guys, I'll, I'll put a link uh, in the uh, chat here in a second to her channel. I encourage you to go listen to any of the videos that she's done on this topic. She's not only helping people who are located here in California, but around the country challenge uh, the language that they're using to try to trick people with their manipulative speech, mm -hmm. uh, which is what they do. They play with words and they, you know, spelling. It's a way to cast a spell with language. It's what the same way I talked about uh, these these so-called newscasters. I don't call them newscasters. I call them spell casters because that's mostly what yeah. they're doing is casting spells on people. Mm -hmm. Yep. And uh, manipulating people and ginning people up to uh, I, to be afraid, so that they wear these masks. Go ahead, sister. Exactly what I, I just I just found. I had a suspicion that what I just said about about how they they like the the um the dichotomy of it of like you know that they, they they give they make sure that it's really really obvious that that this is all fake. But then they also, you know, keep telling you it's real and keep ratcheting up the demands made upon you to comply with something you have no evidence to believe is even a threat. Well, and I had a feeling like maybe it literally does cause brain damage because, you know, I, I was thinking like, you know, if people actually can go along with it and they get that far, maybe it's like there's a point of no return where they're just never going to be able to discern reality again. And so I Googled gaslighting brain damage and the first article that came up, long term narcissistic abuse causes brain damage. Yeah. And gaslighting is one of the things mm. that happens, um, and, you know, and I know that for sure, because my ex fiance, he, you know, we were together for uh, three years and he uh, was like a narcissist, not physically abusive, but just the, the he was very subtle with the gaslighting and the mental manipulation. Um, it, it did cause like it took me a while to get my, you know, to to get my 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 I felt like my brain working right again. I had, you know, um, it, it, just to see things clearly again because he would uh he was really good at like he would do something horrible just absolutely terrible like uh you know spend all of uh, all of our our grocery money on drugs and then also take the the food the, the debit the, the ebt card and trade that and then and i you know i would be furious because i'd always figure him out you know he, he was used to getting away with things um to his you know in his past relationships like he would date girls who were who were really gullible like to where he could pretend there was a break-in uh that somebody stole their you know where they kept all their rent money but he would break the glass from the inside and she wouldn't catch on to that um that type of thing um but with uh with me i would catch on but i would still like like it was very damaging for me to realize what he was doing and still somehow he would manipulate me into a place where I still felt like I was the bad guy for in some way for for being hard on him because he was like he, like I said he was never physically abusive he was honestly you know like very nice uh, very like you would and he would make everybody else like he would speak really well of me to everybody so everybody would always tell me how much he loved me and stuff right and then I but I would know that I was like starving while I was pregnant <laughs> you know with our child uh, because even though he was a chef because <laughs> he was just uh and that was one way to neglect me so but see having the two like like having all the evidence say one thing and then somehow this manipulation uh like you comply with the manipulation instead um, messes your head up and this is what the study just determined that um, it actually causes uh, literal brain damage 
So yes. I think a lot of these people who have been, uh, uh, who, who've just complied uh, and, and they've made it so abundantly obvious that there's no, that this is not real. And even, it's even a mainstream talking point now that people are calling it a hoax. Now they won't go as far as to, you know, they don't want to, they don't want to go too far to where people realize, you know, maybe there's, there's reason to question virology even. Um, yeah. But, you know, they're saying that, that, that it's, you know, a hoax in the sense that it's not actually a big problem. Right. But so that's even a talking point now. Like that's a thing where people are actually saying that this, that, that, that something like this could be hoaxed in the mainstream media. And yet people are still, even like conservative people who don't trust the media are still like going for this somehow. And I'm telling you, those people who, who still think they have something to be afraid of, despite all the evidence to the contrary, that like, I think their brains really are being damaged <laughs> by, by that because, because the, uh, the information doesn't line up with, um, you know, with, with, with their actions. You, you right. see what I'm saying? And I think that oh, might no, be part of why they're doing that. Mm -hmm. Well, why the why I, why that way the agenda is to make it obvious, but to still keep on going, even though uh, nobody really should believe it anymore. They're they're gonna you know try to keep ginning it up <laughs> uh, and mm -hmm. see how many people they can get to continue on complying. Because at that point, those people are just compliant for the sake of compliance. Like like it's not about you know. Uh, uh, ha like they don't know how to perceive reality anymore. Mm -hmm. They only know mm -hmm. how to do what they're told and to comply with consensus, which we have also been trained to think that the mainstream media determines our consensus reality, which uh, is so weird, which is one of the things we were talking about, about trying to figure out, like, look around you and talk to people and, you know, suss out what's really happening around you in your environment. Is there any evidence of anything actually happening? Like, are, am I having race riots anywhere around me? Have I seen any sign of it, you know, of any type of hostility, you know, from, from anybody else, like, you know, black people, brown people, whatever. Um, is anybody acting different? No. But, you know, that's a very important thing for everybody to do right now is to right. make sure you actually go out and observe reality uh, and, and don't base what you think is reality or what's happening, like whether something's real don't base that on, and I don't mean just the mainstream media, I mean, especially the alternative media, the alternative like YouTube and, and Twitter and all that, that is very weaponized now. I mean, I think that's the primary propaganda um, uh, outlet right now is, is, is the internet. And they also know, they know when, when they'll say, for instance, the mainstream media will say, um, Car vehicle attacks on protesters on the rise and talk about a story about a woman supposedly driving uh, running over protesters right um but then you see the video and in fact they were holding like she was a woman with a child in the back and um she was just driving and then they pointed a gun at her and told her to get out and she called 911 and the, the the police told her that they couldn't do anything and to basically do her best not to hurt a protester and um, and that if she had a problem with it, she would have to take it up with City Hall. Like, that's what really happened. But see, the media knows that you're going to see that on the Internet. They know mm -hmm. what you're seeing on the Internet. It's not like a secret. So so they know that um, that like their, their stories are going to be perfect, like just 100 percent proven to be lies. And I think that people who are used to watching stuff on the Internet and YouTube conspiracy type people, I think they underestimate how aware the controllers are of what is what you're seeing and Cambridge Analytica is something we should talk about on a, on a show one of these days because it is it's like a it's actually classified as a weapon uh it's like a British weapon there's actually like export controls on it because it's considered a weapon but it's basically like a it's hard to explain but it's, it's like a it's a software that they use to uh, basically um, load up your recommended videos and the things you see on the internet specifically designed to get you angry. Um, mm -hmm. And here's what's interesting about it, though, and what might surprise a lot of people, because people, you know, um, some of the more uh, well-known and I, I think compromised uh, people in, like, the alternative media will talk about Cambridge Analytica just a little bit, but they won't tell you what Cambridge Analytica promotes because people will tell you that, you know, the, the, that the, the, the agenda is to push all these leftist ideas. They want you to basically be a leftist. It's all about communism. Well, that, I don't 
you know, that's <laughs> Cambridge Analytica is actually promoting the opposite. Cambridge Analytica promoted Brexit. And mm -hmm. uh, it is, listen, it's owned by the royal family. So what mm -hmm. does that tell you? Mm -hmm. And they promoted Brexit. It's in fact, the reason Brexit happened is because of Cambridge Analytica. And they all, it also controlled Trump's campaign. They used Cambridge Analytica. And um, so it, it pushed Brexit and it pushes this um, anti-immigrant stuff. Now I'm not you know, anti-immigration stuff. Now I'm not saying, I, I'm not for, you know, like unlimited immigration or any of this stuff, but I'm just saying it's interesting that Cambridge Analytica is actually promoting all this stuff about all these awful crimes committed by um, Muslim immigrants and Mexican immigrants, all, all this stuff. And it's also, I bet you anything, pushing a lot of these videos that we're seeing of black on white attacks all of a sudden, which we were talking about, actually, a lot of these videos, they don't have the date. So you think that it's all from just right after this whole protest thing started kicking off. But a lot of these videos are very old. And they're all suddenly getting flooded into everybody's social media feeds. Uh, at least for me, I'm seeing it. And it's making people angry. But that's what Cambridge Analytica does, is it actually is, a, is an incredibly sophisticated, um, uh, powerful a tool used. And it, the way it's being used is actually to cause a right-wing backlash. If you look at the mm -hmm. stuff, it, it's pushed. It's, it's, it's fascinating. Um, and like I said, it's owned by the crown, by the British royal family. So uh, that's just some food for thought. Might not be what people okay. expect. Okay. Uh, that's good. I hadn't heard that expression before. I know I was, uh, or, or or what it's called, Cambridge Analytica. I know Facebook got busted for doing that stuff uh, and playing with people's feeds and playing with wow. people's emotions based on you know and i've perceived that because you can even see it in the uh the youtube algorithm for what your suggestions will be based on what you've already watched uh That's and it'll we'll make see. uh you know offerings of suggestions this is all a part of that we see it on our phones when you happen to mention oh i need to stop and pick up some toilet paper and then it'll be 12 toilet paper at phone or, or whatever uh, you know, this is something they wanted to do for a long time and um, based partly for consumerism because, hey, they, they, they don't mind making a buck while they burn everything to the ground either. Mm -hmm. uh, but also for their demonic agendas as well for this whole new world order, one world government. And you see, I think they even had a music um, award show or something where the whole theme was the, the global uh, we, we are the world stuff. You know, but I wanted to shift topics here, and uh, I think we we beat up <laughs> psyops enough for one evening. <laughs> as I think we're actually going to touch some more on it as we we go on through the evening, because that's what that's the whole thing of what's going on right now. The whole thing is is all about how we're being manipulated, either by politics, uh, well, no matter which side you're on, uh, in the media. Uh, the way that they're pushing us one way or the other and trying to create these race wars. They, they are trying to push that. They're trying their darndest to get something to pop off. And I'm so happy that even though people may not be fully aware they're being manipulated, that they are not participating. They're not going for that mess. Thank the exactly. Lord Jesus. Well, that's because they interact with their fellow Americans every day. Exactly. You know, it's very hard to get people to start fighting each other. First of all, black and white people are like co-workers, friends, and like uh, family members now, you know? So people would think that there would actually be this all-out split down the middle bloodbath. It would never happen. It would not, it, would, it really wouldn't work. We're too intermingled. So, but, but they could, try, it, 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 it could be like a leftist versus normal people war. But even that, those people really are in the minority. The people that are like Antifa and and all that, though, and and then the rioters. That's the vast minority of people, you know. <laughs> and that's one thing I did. I always try when I say about how I've been going to Louisville, which is a place where they've been put a lot of these violent, like scary headlines are coming out of. And I'm not saying those things didn't happen, but I'm go. I go to Louisville regularly, like you know, almost on a weekly basis now. Um, I make a point of it to see what's really going on because my area, like I live an hour from Louisville, it's not going to have you know, it's probably not going to have a lot of this stuff happening. Mm -hmm. But in Louisville, that's one of the places, and it breaks my heart to see it. Right now in Kentucky, they've just passed a law where um, 
only black people, but black people are going to get uh, free health care and everybody else is going to have to pay for it, uh, you know, with their taxes, obviously. But that's that's totally designed to make people angry, obviously. Mm -hmm. And um, it breaks my heart to see them doing this in Kentucky, driving this thing, because people in Kentucky, the um, like the blacks and whites and they get everybody gets along really well. Ben will back me up on that. It's it's one of the nice they're the nicest people you could ever meet in in Louisville, Kentucky. And um, I like I said, I haven't seen a single BLM shirt. And I, I where I go in that area, it's like a majority black area, like Middletown, at least when ter- the residential and most of the people that are working um, in these stores that I you know like Lowe's and Walmart, whatever. Um, it's uh, you know it, it, it's it's at least half black. Right. So there's a lot of black people there. Not a single BLM shirt, except, like I said, for the one uh, funny guy in the parking lot asking for money that had like, I can't breathe shirt on. But then when I gave him a couple bucks, he's like, God bless America, which obviously isn't what a BLM person would say. But it it was part of his grift. That's the only one I've seen in the past three weeks. I have not seen any BLM anything. Uh, (laughs) So uh, uh, that's uh, uh, I think one of the reasons why people aren't buying into this is because Mm -hmm. you know they're not being mistreated people aren't getting you know an attitude with them that that it's not actually happening in reality and you Mm -hmm. can drive it so much as as much as you want in the media but you're going to ask people real people to commit acts of violence against their fellow citizens they're going to have to have a real experience you have to be real for them unless they're really deranged Right. right that's that's what i was was saying is that uh people do not conduct themselves in this way. You would have to be psychotic or have a death wish to think you just that they're just going to foment this into this absolute violence when whatever particular ethnic group they're trying to gen against one another, or if it's the police versus the public, you, you'd have to be a nut to want to try to engage in, in the level of violence they're actually trying to take everyone too. With that being said, I want to shift topics here and and go to Brother Cripps uh, because Brother Cripps, you had started to talk about something last week and we promised that we would pick it up again this week. Yeah, we were... uh, And profits. Sure, yeah. uh, Profits and uh, people that have the um, prophetic word for the month. Um, Right. Right. And this isn't just one person, guys. You know, it's not just one person out there that's uh, every month they're given their prophetic uh, word of the month. This is a lot of uh, at least people that have YouTube channels, YouTube ministries out there. And a lot of them have a lot of, uh, of followers. And I don't get it. I don't get how, uh, how they have uh, so many followers other than the fact that there are people out there that buy into this uh, stuff. They buy into it. So they dream to dream. They've had a visit to heaven. They come back to tell us what it's like. These are all related to each other. Uh, um, on uh, Fighting for the Faith channel, I don't know if you're familiar with that. Um, they uh, that's their whole ministry is basically to fight for the faith. And by doing that, they look at other people's YouTube channels that call themselves ministries and Christians, and they uh, they they go through and they listen to their sermon. And they use real scripture. They pull the same verses up and they say, they, this is how they're twisting this uh, scripture. Not just by the interpretation of the guy that reads the channel, but he's pointing out using scripture that said, look at it in context of the chapter. Very useful. So he goes and, and scours the internet to find these people. Um, I discovered his channel about two years ago. And uh, before that, I did know of some people that were doing this. I would run across a channel on YouTube uh, you know, I had this dream and here's what God told me in the dream. And then they tell the dream and stuff and people just, just eat it up. They're like, Oh my gosh, thank you so much for this sister. Thank you so much for this brother. This really helped me in my walk and all that. Mm-hmm. And, and none of them seem to have any indication, uh, that these people are, these people are charlatans. Now, before we get going, I said this last week, but I want to say it again. I am not saying, please hear me. I am not saying that God never gives someone a dream, okay? I'm not saying that. I'm also not saying that prophecy doesn't exist at all. The Bible clearly states, or Paul says, um, 
you know, be, I, I'm paraphrasing this, but he says, you know, be on the lookout for prophecies. prophecies. Um, but there are certain uh, things set in place in Scripture that if a prophet uh, prophesies and what they prophesy does not happen, does not take place, we're not to be afraid of them. In other words, we're not to pay any attention to them. Um, and back then, they had some pretty strict consequences if you were found out to be a false prophet. They would kill them, okay? But there's people out there right now, and I want to talk to you guys about this, see if you've seen some of this. These people that have the channels that have, they, they come out every month. God's talking to them in the month like clockwork at the beginning of the month. So they can come out there and they can pass their prophetic word onto their uh, subscribers and let them know what the Lord's saying. Now, not all of them uh, use the phrase, thus saith the Lord, but there are some. There's even some out there um, other than just people, there's a few people out there right now that are claiming to be Christ himself. Okay, so that's happening too, but, you know, we were warned of that. Um, we thought probably it was more like general, like, yeah, they, they're kind of saying they're Christ. But no, these are people that are uh, they're saying they're the reincarnation of Jesus Christ. Um, but anyway, there are people saying that thus saith the Lord. They're having conversations and they're transcribing them as if to say, um, Jesus said to me, and this is what he said, and they're quoting him, and it's not biblical. Um, how, how can you tell if someone's a false prophet or not? One of the ways you can tell is if it doesn't line up with Scripture. In other words, if someone is giving you a works-based gospel and they're saying that they're having a conversation with the Lord, that's an indication that they are not hearing from the God, hearing from God. Paul said, if anyone comes along and preaches a different gospel, or we preach a different gospel, uh, they are to be anathema. They are, they are to be accursed. And uh, Brother Ben was with us on Wednesday when we went over some of these verses. So he's he's uh, very familiar. And he's actually done a study on the word uh, and uh, came up with some very interesting stuff. And he can weigh in on this too, if you want, Brother Ben. Um, but we're not to be, we're not to fear these people. We're not to take any consideration of what they're saying. We certainly shouldn't be subscribing to the channels and listening to everything that comes out of their mouth because they're, to me, they're cl clearly not hearing from, from the Lord. Right. So uh, I have more to say. Go ahead, Ben. Well, I was going to say, uh, with, with regard to the anathema, it's like it's almost like you're supposed to treat them they have like a deadly disease. It's yeah. contagious. Uh, their yes. their, their words uh, can, can spread and lead uh, to... Uh, defilement and making others weak with false doctrine and we're supposed to treat them like they have a, a d deadly disease you know get away from us you're contaminated yeah. get, we, we don't want anything to do with you you know no fellowship nothing uh, mm -hmm. and i actually was fooled by some not really fooled but probably about 15 years ago when i started kind of dabbling and oh what's you know i wanted to know what you know i think one reason people get get um reeled in by these people is that you know the bible is a big book and it, and it can be hard to understand even peter said uh he had a hard time understanding some of paul's uh, epistles so um it's a, it's a big intimidating book it can be hard to understand especially we don't um understand uh it takes a while to get a, a acclimated and accustomed to you know different uh what different words mean and, and different you know what what uh certain things uh, are a picture of things like that and mm -hmm. so a lot of people want to take a, a, a you know shortcut, and they think, oh well, I'll just get get it from people who are talking about, you know, the Bible's an old book. I, I want to hear what God's saying today. You know, I think that's the allure, and um, and that you know, I, I would see people that would uh, talk and say, oh, you know, this lady, I remember, for example, she she said she was um, she was like a, a, a music producer, so she had you know, kind of reputable. She was some reputable. She was a famous music producer, and she would say, and, and she would. You know, it seemed like she really did. I mean, her emotional uh, and her demeanor uh, would be would be suggestive that she had a real experience. And she would say that Jesus like would appear in her room and have a message. And then she would say things like that. She was obviously proven false because she would say uh, things like, "Oh, there's something going to happen at the Super Bowl." And then as soon as that didn't happen, I realized, okay, this is garbage. But mm -hmm. um, but they, there's always giveaways, you know. And if you're serious, I don't think I don't think you can easily be led by these people for long. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, Brother Ben, I'm, I just sent you a link, and if Sister Lisa cares to, to do this, I mean, I understand if you uh, don't want to take the risk, 
Um, uh, fighting for the faith does it all the time. It doesn't seem to get any strikes or for playing a portion of someone else's video. But I put an example. I sent uh, uh, Ben a link uh, as an example of one of these uh, people so that people can get an idea of kind of what I'm talking about. Uh, it, Sister Lisa, would you have a problem with Ben playing that video or not? Uh, no, I don't have a problem if you want to play an excerpt. That's fine. Okay. Uh, Brother Ben, did you receive that uh, through yeah, the get, Yeah, give me a minute. I'll let you know when I have it ready, okay? Okay, perfect. So uh, what what Ben's going to queue up for us, uh, her name is Kay Nash. Now, uh, she is a person that um, uh, has a pretty big following. Um, she calls herself a prophetess. You know, she's, she uh, does prophetic word every month. She And she's uh, not only fairly popular, but actually – People are hiring her to go, you know, travel around the United States and out of the United States to other countries and have these seminars where she, you know, lays hands on people and, and tells people, uh, teaches people how to uh, learn how to be, uh, to tap into your prophetic gift as if it's something you can pass along to someone else that's not a gift from God. Now, my understanding is that uh, if you uh, have a gift from God, of prophecy it doesn't come from you can't teach a class on it it's something that you either receive from god or you don't if you receive a gift from god it's from the holy spirit and it's not taught in a class you can't just go to the local ramada in conference center and have someone to <laughs> teach you how to accept any gifts from god it's given from god and god alone mm. so this is this is this would be an example of of kind of what she says and she's Fairly interesting too, because when she's talking, she she'll say, "Oh yeah, here's my prophetic word." Mm, 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 Jesus, it, it, to me, it's a mockery. I mean, the whole thing mm -hmm. is a mockery. Um, okay, well, just one quick disclaimer mm -hmm. before you run the clip: all property video concerning this video remains that of the original content creator. Mm -hmm. And the producer. Okay, just just for sake of, of, of full disclosure and disclaimer. <laughs> okay, and, go ahead. And, uh, and I, I am playing the video now. I don't know if you want audio or not, but mm -hmm. you okay? Uh, okay, so here we go. New to this channel, also I've the, been in the, ministry for seven years. I've been traveling a lot, um, whether it's in the U.S., outside of the U.S., just going wherever the Lord would have me go. Um, I'm going to be going to France um, in about a little over a week, and so I'm excited for that. And maybe if you're watching this later, then later, but or sooner. Um, and but I I need to let you guys know all the it's full. Uh, nice and Paris are both full. Um, so you can't register anymore. I know I had said I would try to leave registration open, but they kind of capped me out with the numbers now because of COVID and stuff. So I'm only allowed to have so many now. So I had to stop registration so that I can only have that many. But um, if you are going to the events, I'm really excited to see all of you guys there and getting really excited to go travel over there to see you. And so we'll be headed out soon. And for all of you who are our members or who have donated one time to get us out there, we really appreciate it. It allowed us to put on these conferences for free. And so that's really exciting to us. And we're excited to train you in heart healing, physical healing, discerning the spirits and more. All right, you guys, with all that said, let's jump into the word. All right, this is the verse I felt like the Lord was highlighting. This is Matthew 13, 47. Once again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was let down into the lake and caught all kinds of fish. Mm. When it was full, the fishermen pulled it upon the shore. Then they sat down and collected the good fish in baskets, but threw the bad away. And when I read this, um, I felt like this was for the summer, so the next three months. I felt like the Lord said, gather and organize. Mm. Go ahead. Okay. All right. All right. So that's just an example. Uh, I, I'm not going to, uh, we're not going to subject you to too much. Um, and I'm looking at some of the comments in the chat and, and uh, it seems like uh, a lot of you guys can, can pretty uh, clearly see some of the problems uh, that there may be with this person. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, Mike said, uh, sounds like she's got uh, some craziness. That's a good point. Um, uh, maybe not the right gospel. Yeah, I, I, uh, you know what's funny? She, I've never heard her even uh, give the gospel. It's all about her prophetic gifts. 
So uh, one of the problems, and I could, uh, in this video and all of her videos, one of the main focuses is on herself. That's one of the uh, biggest problems I see with these prophets. Um, also, along with everything that they're doing, which I think is, is not biblical, is the attitude that they represent. It's an attitude of arrogance, in my opinion. Uh, it's like God has given this thing to me. Um, uh, they're they're uh, glow-in-the-dark Christians. Uh, it's like they're representing these gifts that no one else can have. Now, uh, this particular uh, lady, Kay Nash, she does teach classes on the prophetic, and, and she's not the only one. There are other people that do it as well. But she's constantly talking about uh, her, her gift that God has given her. Um, she's one of these people that talks about how much time she spends in the prayer closet, how much time she uh, spends talking to the Lord, things like that. Now, I don't think there's any problem with you sharing with people that you speak, speak with God. I, I think that's wonderful. But when you're telling people uh, pretty frequently how much time you spend, quote unquote, in your prayer closet, uh, to me, that's a private thing between you and God. Um, it's not It's not to be something, it's like the, the publican, um, Am I getting that right? The 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 where the one guy beat on his chest and said, uh, uh, "Forgive me, Lord, a sinner." And the other guy says, "Thank you." Then I'm not like the, that man, the publican. But, I mean, they're praying. There's two different ways of praying. He's praying uh, from a place of, "Look, I I I'm I'm a sinner." The other guy's talking about, "Thank you that I'm not like that sinner." That's the difference in attitude. So uh, have any of you seen any of these on the panel? Have you seen any of these prophetic word uh, kind of things or people calling themselves apostles or prophets? Hello? My. Hello? Sorry, Brother Cripps, I couldn't get to my mic button. Uh, yeah, I have seen, uh, not this particular person, so I'm very interested to go back and check out what it is you're pointing out here because again I wasn't able to hear the oh, video yeah but uh, I do know the types that you're talking about there have been several different personalities who have come and gone um, some have been called out and so they've they're still on YouTube but they they've like uh, that they, their following has shrunk and because some of them got exposed for some of the stuff they were doing but yeah, yeah and as I said um, I alluded to, uh, I think we weren't on, on on air when I said, how are you spelling that word profit? Because uh, a lot of them, it's all about the P-R-O, uh, the F-T, F-I-T, not uh, P-H-R-O-P-H-E-T. I am so glad you brought that up. I think you said that off air. Um, I'm glad you brought it up on air. Uh, that's what these people are in for, filthy lucre. Um, do you think that uh, the, these people just come and speak at your church uh, just out of the kindness of their heart? No, you have to buy tickets. You have to hire them to come and speak at your Ramada in conference room or in their church. Uh, they're charging money. And I don't mean just uh, you know taking up what is, it's generally used to be called a love offering, which means if someone comes and sings at your church, um, they uh, pass the plate around for people to support their ministry. That's that's no problem. I have no problem with that whatsoever. But uh, it's a different thing to charge someone to go and speak at their church, especially if you're preaching the gospel. If you're preaching the gospel, the gospel should be free. It wasn't free for Christ. He paid a, a great price to do what he did for us. But when you're passing along the gospel to someone else, you should not be charging for that. And, and they're not even preaching the gospel. So uh, I, I guess it's okay if you're just going to list yourself as a charlatan or, or a, a secular speaker. Of course, you, you, you can charge. You can charge uh, for that. But in this case, uh, these people are charging money to pass along their false uh, dreams and their false prophetic words. Um, another thing, and this is, I didn't come up with this myself. This is something I got from Fighting for the Faith. Um, if anyone has not seen Fighting for the Faith, uh, it does have the right gospel. And uh, he, he does what Renee does with scriptures. He untwists what's being uh, 
preached about, and their focus is mainly on these type of people that I'm that I'm mentioning, these prophetic words. In fact, they play a game every month. It's called Prophetic Bingo. And uh, what they do is you can generate a a bingo card and, and have it home at home with you. And they go through and they look for words that are on your bingo card because they use similar words. All these all these people, uh, word comes around like elevation, uh, step into step into your prophetic uh, or step into the, the prophetic um, uh, similar words. So uh, they'll play a clip from like Kay Nash or from someone else that it, like I said, it's not just one, it's several out there. So each month it's it's a different group of people uh, pretty much doing the same thing. It's hilarious. So it, the name of that show is fighting for the number four, fighting for the faith. Uh, and, and that's a, a good resource for you guys if you want to uh, see what's uh, going on out there. Um, also, I saw someone mention, uh, there's a big one. And, oh, Clement, Kim Clement. Now, uh, he's one of the more popular ones that's out there. I think he's dead now, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, yes, but, he passed away. Yeah. So there's an example of someone that a lot of people have heard of and follow where he does these long rambling prophetic things with his eyes closed. And he's speaking as if God's speaking to him right then. And he's passing that along to someone else. Mm -hmm. And people fall for this. People actually mm -hmm. fall. And he, like I said, he's a popular one. I've heard a lot of people that follow him and they get mad if I even uh, even try to breathe a word against him. And they they bring up the scripture, don't touch God's anointed. That's the one they hide. They all hide behind. Um, trust me. I believe that everyone on the panel is part of God's anointed. I wouldn't say anything negative or bad about you until you start going against scripture. If you were to start going against scripture or uh, saying things that do not line up with scripture, especially the essential things, then I, you're free game. You're free game to point it out. We are to point out these people and avoid them. We are to mark and avoid them. Now, right. I'm not going to take, there are people out there that their whole ministry is marking and avoiding. That's what they do. They find these people, they talk about them in a negative way. Uh, mm -hmm. There's a place for that. I'm not saying there's not a place for that. I would rather focus on more positive stuff. But this stuff is so prolific. It's it it's so pervasive out there that I, I just wanted to talk about it a little bit and try to kind of warn people of the kind of things that are going out there on YouTube other than just the false gospel. Now, I do yeah. A lot of these folks don't even have the right gospel, but they're going beyond just having a false gospel and saying, so what if someone, I think here's the problem, and you, you guys may agree with this. I think part of the problem is there's a lot of people, why they get so many followers is because these people are uh, relying on being spoon fed by someone who's claiming to have all these special gifts. Mm -hmm. They're not reading the Bible for themselves. Sister, right. Lee, you would not be taken in by any of these people in any way. Uh, because you read the Bible for yourself. You have a relationship with the Lord yourself. So if someone is saying something against Scripture, you're going to recognize it right away. Brother Ben, you said, you know, 15 years ago, you kind of not got taken in, but you kind of, you know, uh, were, were following one of these uh, types of people. Yeah, 15 years ago, maybe. But now you read the Bible for yourself. You, you also would not be taken in by some of this. You have the correct gospel. So if you hear someone saying that they you know, have a prophetic word for the month, you would pick up on it. And you as well, Angel, all of us would pick up on it, I believe. But the problem is that there are some other people, and I'm you know, I'm not saying they're not saved. I mean, the people that are watching these videos, I'm not saying I'm not. I would never say that. I would never make such a statement. What I'm right. saying is they don't have enough biblical knowledge to immediately see that these people are grifters. And if you yeah, don't that's... hear somebody, every video they make just about, uh, you know, or at least, you know, every few, like actually talk about the gospel and it's the correct gospel. And honestly, in my opinion, you know, the uh, eternal security, because especially considering that it's not a foregone conclusion that uh, people will understand that considering what we see on YouTube, which is if you Google eternal security, I mean, it's pretty much just doctrine of devils. I mean, it's like the most, out I, I Googled, I just put it in Google period the other day and I couldn't believe just how, it's just all attacks. It's all attacks. Uh, so if you don't hear somebody, you know, t 
talking about the gospel and they claim to be like a, a man of God and they have these visions and they're not like stating the gospel pretty much, especially if that's their whole channel, if they should be talking about the gospel in every video. But yeah. if you don't even know what their gospel is, you can probably, it's a safe bet they have the wrong gospel. Exactly. So it really, if you know what the true gospel is and you believe it, um, uh, you, it, it should be really easy not to get taken in. You know what I mean? Because exactly. you're going to be looking for it. And, it, and you know, it, it's sad. It's, I'm, no, I'm not saying, you know, write somebody off immediately if, if you, you know, if they're unclear on the gospel or, right. or whatever. I'm just saying right. that, you know, definitely don't take them as a prophet if you don't even know, if they've, you've never even heard them, touch, you know, uh, uh, give the clear gospel or, it, you know, especially, um, you know, if, if they give a, a false gospel or, or a, an incomplete gospel and they don't, they don't uh, take a stand on, on the fact that, you know, uh, <laughs> we, we cannot lose our salvation considering that's under attack. You can bet if, if the Lord is speaking to somebody and giving them visions, um, but he hasn't, what, he just hasn't, he, he hasn't gotten around to making sure they're clear on the gospel yet. You know, right. that was one of the things he showed me, like, you know, when I was trying to discern who, you know, who was legit and who, you know, who was questionable. Yeah. And, um, you know, like, especially with like that guy, Russ Gizdar, you know, who claims to be you know, at war with the Luciferians, you know, deprogramming people, all this stuff. And, and, uh, you know, God, I, I feel like it was God telling me, like, Angel, don't you think he would, he would, uh, he would need to be really clear on the gospel. And yeah. uh, you, you think if I was, he was doing all this spiritual warfare, yeah. uh, but you don't even know exactly what his gospel, you know, presentation is mm -hmm. after all the, you know, I've listened to so many of his videos and man, they're, it's, it's a lot of oratory and, you know, they, they use that preacher voice, but, mm -hmm. but they're not saying much of anything. Absolutely. You know, that's right. what I've noticed. <laughs> and that, that's, that, that should be a sign. You just don't, if you don't know for sure where somebody stands on the gospel, don't, don't, don't take, tr ever trust them about their, their, their word from God. You know, I mean, you can watch them and, you know, maybe, you know, pray for them, give them the benefit of the doubt, but don't yeah. trust them. <laughs> Especially like yeah. uh, in Acts, you know, they're those uh, seven sons of Sceva yep. who uh, claim yep. um, the, the Lord's name. You know, I, I cast you out in the, in the, I think you said the, the Jesus that Paul preaches or something. Yeah. And they said, we don't, I do not know you. I know Paul and I know um, uh, Jesus, but yeah. who are you? And again, I, I mentioned before that uh, the word Elohim is, um, I guess, primarily is a place of residence. So again, Paul, Jesus, obviously we were in a place of residence that was, uh, you know, spiritually saved. And uh, these men were not. Mm. Uh, another example. So one of the things, uh, a lot of these uh, people before, uh, like in March, the prophetic word for March, here's how you tell no one's a false prophet. Uh, I mean, when they are a false prophet, none of them, not one saint. And he scoured the Internet looking for one person that saw this coming that God told about the uh, Rona coming. Not one of them warned. In fact, all of their uh, pro prophecies are positive. That's the other thing. Um, in the Bible, the the prophecies generally, if you read any of the prophets from the Old Testament, generally they were not positive. They were, if you don't turn back to God, here's what's going to happen. If you don't do this and that, here's what's coming for you. I will do this. I will. God says, I will do this. I will do that. Uh, you'll go into captivity. Um, I will make, you know, I... They're not positive. I'm not saying God never passes a positive word onto one of his prophets. I'm saying for the most part, it's not this month is going to be good for you. God's going to take all the your empty coffers and fill them with money. Um, if you if you've lost a job, God's going to provide you with a job this month. I see this and I see that. None of them saw the coronavirus coming at all. In fact, there but the the month that that all hit. All of them were positive. All this is going to be a great month. God is turning over leaves mm -hmm. this this month for you. Uh, he's he's uh, a transition is a big one of the big words. The, there's a transition coming for you right now. On and on and on it goes. Um, say I don't know how long you want to go on. I mean I can go on and on, but uh, in the same vein, I'll just mention really quickly. A lot of them have dreams. God speaks to them through their dreams, and they pass their dreams along. And they're these really obscure kind of ethereal dreams. There's nothing solid in them whatsoever because that's what dreams are a lot of times. <laughs> I mean, I've had some some really, really weird, complicated dreams that make no darn sense whatsoever. And you can't make sense of them all. 
I mean, sometimes you have a, a dream that you can make some sense out of. I love dreams. I love talking about dreams. If you guys told me about a dream, I would think it would be fun to try to, well, here's what it could be. Your subconscious telling you this or that. Right. Uh, but when it comes to someone saying that a dream is from God and, and you look, you listen to the dream and they're preaching either a different gospel or they're taking scripture out of context to try to say, try to make some kind of point that you're supposed to believe, then you know that it's not right. It's not from God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, I, I don't disagree with you, brother Cripps. I think your analysis of this is spot on. Uh, I have, st I, I don't, it's gotten to the point that I don't, I'm certainly not looking for a prophetic word right. from a personality. Yes. <laughs> you know, if yeah. I get a prophetic word, it's usually from a family member mm -hmm. who doesn't even realize that's what they're, they're saying. Amen. Or a, a friend and they just happen to say something. Mm -hmm. And it resonated with something the Lord's been ministering to you about. Sure. It's it's never thus saith the Lord, you know, saith that these the people Lord. do all. It's, it's like when I hear that, I'm already like, uh oh, here it comes. Mm -hmm. You know, so I, I that to me is is a rough fight because most of these people are running. They have itching ears and they're running for experiences. You know. I, I want to go over here so I can experience God in this way. And then the next personality comes along. And they want to go over here, and I want to experience God over over here. And I'm like, I can experience him right where I am. I ain't, I ain't got to run nowhere else to experience the Lord. Exactly. You know, just start praising and worshiping and put on, put on some music and start praising the Lord and worshiping it. You can experience him all right by yourself. And so I already know that, you know, a lot of these uh, ministries, they're always either they're right, they just finished writing a book, or when they're the process of writing, or they just released a new book. So, okay. you know, it's oh, just yeah. all I of these, these different sides of this stuff, you know. I'm uh, reposting a comment that John made in the chat uh, up a little bit, and uh, there it is right there. Um, I wanted to address this really quickly. Uh, John said she felt, uh, in, in reference to the Kate, Kate Nash video, she said, uh, she felt like feelings don't, uh, she, she felt like that's something she says, I feel like God's telling me this. Um, she's not one that comes, that comes right out and says, thus saith the Lord. Others do. She doesn't do that. Uh, he's right. She says, uh, he picked up on that. She says, I, I, f I feel like God is telling me this, telling me that. And he states feelings don't get us anywhere. The Bible does. That's absolutely true. Um, now, I'm not at the point, I hear people talk about feelings and they they seem to discount them altogether as if God didn't mean for us to have feelings. Feelings are something, are, are a gift from God. He He made us feeling creatures. He didn't make us auton, uh, uh, automatons. He didn't make us robots. He gave us feelings for a reason. We have feelings, but feelings can can be misconstrued. They can, uh, they can be misinterpreted. So we have to be careful about that. So when we have feelings, doesn't mean, dis I'm not saying discount them, but go to the Bible. Go to the Bible and see if your feelings match what's being said by God. We don't need to hear a prophetic word. It was useful back then before the Holy Spirit came because people didn't have the Holy Spirit. I mean, he existed. I'm not saying he didn't exist, but people didn't have the Holy Spirit in, in, in them at that time. So uh, God used prophets to communicate with his people. It wasn't the only way, but he used uh, prophets to communicate with them in many ways. Uh, but once the Holy Spirit came, there, there's no need for us to have a prophet that's telling us what God's saying. We have his word, and we have his inspired written word, and we have a relationship with him, a communication with him through the Holy Spirit ourselves, that we can determine whether something is true or not true. But we shouldn't be just trusting our feelings. So if someone's saying, I feel like God's telling me this, or I feel like God's telling me that, well, that's great. You have a feeling, but let's let's open up the word and see if your feeling matches what scripture says. That's the that's the keystone. That's right. the cornerstone of our chat. Faith. Can you Yes. Can you guys hear me? Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, I wasn't sure because I've I've been getting a little feedback. Um where sometimes I can hear you guys and you're fading out on me, and I don't know if it's me or you, so apologies. But um, Stephanie in the chat has said, Prophet Emmanuel, 
Mm -hmm. I'm going to spell it because I'm I, otherwise I'll butcher it. It's M A K A N D I W A is his name, Christ TV on YouTube, and he has one million views on his video uh, making a prophecy in 2015 about the coming, uh, I guess she's saying, the, yeah, the virus coming from China. Well, hey, look, we're not saying there aren't real prophets. We're we're pointing out the ones that are flawed yeah. and the ones who are clearly not real prophets, okay, right. uh, because their objective is P-R-O-F-I-T. <laughs> they, they're those kind of prophets. Well, um, yeah, There's also some, too, yes. I'm convinced that the virus is uh, man-made, mm -hmm. and it was in a laboratory. Yeah. I think there's plenty mm -hmm. of evidence for that. I mean, it, I think it's overwhelming for that, and uh, I think demons could watch that. They know what man's going to plan, and they can, uh, they well, can, you know. Here, here's the point I wanted to make. And I, I'm not familiar with Prophet Emmanuel. I'm not uh, familiar with him, so I'm not going to attack him. I don't know enough mm -hmm. about him to say whether he's real or not. But uh, a writer named Dean Kuntz wrote about there being a virus that uh, came from China to America. Um, in fact, when all this coronavirus came, a lot of people were posting that because he, it, was, it had a different name. Uh, but that book was written sometime in the, I believe, the late 80s. Uh, so uh, a secular writer of suspense fiction uh, said that there, uh, you know, uh, wrote about a virus coming from China. Anybody can think or come up with something that eventually comes true. That is that is not necessarily prophecy. Just saying. And I, I, oh, yeah. Sorry, go on, Jason. I, no, that's all I was done. That was, that was I, well, and I want to say about the evidence about it. Cause I, like, I, I really don't, I don't think there is one. I don't think there is a virus. And so even with the evidence, so they, like, I, I believe that that's also, the, I think that's on purpose. Like, I, I mean, I haven't seen it myself. I haven't poured over the, the you know, the nope. physical evidence myself. There's a lot of stuff on the internet. I think that's that, because I, I, I don't think there is an illness. I think there's a bogus test, like yep. I said, because in Tanzania, they're testing jackfruit positive with the coronavirus. So, I mean, if there's a bogus test, I mean, I, these laboratories are complicit in uh, uh, like with, you know, the HIV situation that I mean, they said that our, I think our, our first broadcast on, um, I, I, I agree. There's evidence that, that there's, you know, there was some virus create because they want us to think there's a bioweapon. So everybody's afraid. So there's going to be tons of evidence, uh, but put everywhere on the, on the message boards and everything that the virus came from China and it's a bioweapon, because what does that do? That drives even more fear. Even, I mean, if, if it's one thing to think it's a, just a regular old pandemic that happened, spring up out of some some natural reservoir in an animal somewhere and crossing, like just like with HIV. Um, and, and guess what? There was tons of evidence that they created HIV right, right. to go after the black population. It's not a real thing. It's a mental, it's a psychological right. weapon. Exactly. And, and that's well, that worse. It's actually worse if you think it's a bioweapon. Because even people who wouldn't normally get vaccinated, even if they don't, you know, they don't trust vaccines, they might get vaccinated because they think this isn't because just they a, believe a it's regular real. thing. It's even worse. And it's manufactured. It's, it can do all these things and defy mm -hmm. all the laws of virology and all the coke pot. It can just, it can be a broken leg in one person and a car accident in another and a pneumonia in another person. <laughs> and it's all coronavirus. But like, it's, I don't, I don't, uh, uh, see, that's what I'm saying. When, like, they're targeting us now. People who will question. So uh, mm -hmm. they're absolutely going to put evidence of a different type of like conspiracy it's it's the same thing they've done this they've done this for decades where mm -hmm. for the conspiratorially minded they'll give them another rabbit hole to 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 to, to drive another narrative where, like with the hiv like i said they knew people are going to start questioning this whole thing so they for the longest time nobody could talk about the the, the actual provable uh, uh fact that the hiv test was was a fraud and that that they were making people healthy people sick with chemotherapy drugs from a bogus test and that the people who had actual aids got that from their lifestyle choices destroying their own immune systems but and, and there were doctors and and the head of the nih who, who got fired for speaking the truth um and doctors injecting themselves with hiv positive blood uh, in, in speech trying to prove like guys please they're desperate desperate to prove that 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 the lie is killing people not the virus um and we couldn't even have that conversation 
for forever because there were so many people saying the conspiracy is that it's a bioweapon and it was created to kill black people that was and gay people but for I for a long time I heard that it was you know that was the conversation and so um I, I you know I, I I agree that there's evidence uh, of uh, you know China manufacturing a virus uh, but I don't trust that you know like I, I think that just like they're just like anything else i mean it's actually really easy i've seen it myself i've watched videos about this where they'll connect all these dots um and it's like a two drop and and all these dots like memory hold will do it and like oh look at this look at this this guy died and he worked at this lab and and this is look and look at this patent and this patent it's all just it's all just fluff yeah. it's all just i mean there's no actual evidence that there's even some but people are getting sick so what kind of bioweapon is created that doesn't make anybody sick yeah, <laughs> you know, like yeah. that's what I, I don't understand. But Ben, maybe I could be wrong about that. Like, like that. I don't know if, if, uh, like, what are you saying? They created like a, a something like a marker to test people positive. Well, I could be wrong too, but um, <clears throat> and I, I, yeah, both both positions are, <laughs> are, are possible. Uh, I just the evidence I've seen, and I can have it really. It's not something I really care about that much. So I don't really hold on to it, but yeah. I've seen. I. I, I you know, after a while, you start watching things. You don't take notes. I'm talking about taking notes later. And if you don't take notes, you kind of forget. Like, okay, well, you get confirmation and get confirmation. Uh, yeah, and you, yeah. You kind of forget why you believe something. Um, and so uh, it, it could be, either could be true. Um, but I, I just evidence I've seen like where they were uh, allowing. Um, they were they were not. Um, just some of the evidence I, I get it, uh, that they were not allowing, uh, or they did not block um, travel. Uh, into the United States from China, and they were doing certain things to, yeah. They oh the there's a legislation going on right now where the they uh, were against certain governors where, uh, in New York, Michigan, New Jersey, a couple others where they were purposely putting, uh, corona, supposedly corona, uh, positive patients into nursing homes, and so they would maximize the death. Um, mm -hmm. And so, well, I, yeah, but, but, but again, I see, I've seen evidence in both ways. I can see it going both ways. I tend to think it was, um, there's other things too, like with, with, with I've seen, um, it's particularly, particularly around the, um, the Wuhan and, and, and the funding that was going into that from like, uh, from, um, there was like links to the Gates Foundation and things like that. Um, and so maybe again, that's, there's various evidence. But do you see I, how I, it could uh, be like a second layer of propaganda? Because yeah, the people who question, absolutely. yes, all. The, but what it does is, where does it lead you? It leads you to the same conclusion, maybe a worse one. There is a, a virus. A, B. It, there's not only a virus; it's a bioweapon virus, and it was designed to. to I, I, I mean, I guess pur purportedly to kill, but we don't see anybody getting sick. So, so, um, but the, but it brings you right back in. It's like a loopy loop because the people well. that question because they smell a rat. Um, well, here's paper trails. Look at all this funding. Look at like and and the nursing home stuff. I do think a crime was committed when you know when they did that. I don't think it was Corona uh, that killed anybody, but the stress. I mean, in hospices. But see, that also vents frustration because a lot of people lost loved ones. Uh, I, my 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 husband's uncle right now. He uh, he had a stroke and he's in a special care home. He hasn't been able to see his family. In, in, in months now and he can't talk because of this stroke so he can't talk to them on the phone and he can't even he can't he can't even have it he can't even use he can't see his family like the only way he can is, is if a nurse holds a phone up to his ear and he can hear his loved ones but other than that he's been all alone that will kill sick and old people dead you herd them into a nursing homes and then you tell them that there's a virus and oh by the way if you get sick uh, they're not going to give you any uh, medical help because they're triaging all these corona patients and you're too old. That stress will kill them. And so the only reason I'm pushing back is because um, I, I've i heard a lot of people, like I'll, the people like, oh, corona hoax exposed, but then they'll go in with the bioweapon thing. And it's like, you just undid everything. Um, and I don't want people to come away who who... Because what it doesn't actually help because if people think there's a virus and it was created in a lab to by China to kill us, uh, even, even if they think like, well, I don't, they're going to still be scared and they're still going to wear masks and they're still going to, uh, uh, you know, social distance and, and try to stay home and all that crap. And, and, but the, the thing is, we see no one getting sick 
And so that I almost get more frustrated with the bioweapon thing because, well, this is a really lame bioweapon <laughs> that mm-hmm. they've done because uh, what it's what is a bioweapon that just clears out hospitals. <laughs> there's nobody there, yeah. but they're not Make all sure dead. the hospitals are empty. Uh, you know, well, just to state for the record, the coronavirus is real. I mean, according to the home, let's see, the American Medical Association's Home Medical Encyclopedia, 1989 edition, under V, if you look up virus, it says the coronavirus is the common cold. So then what everyone says is, well, no, this has been weaponized. Okay, like she was just saying, if it's been weaponized, it's a pretty lame weapon because it actually guarantees hospitals will be almost empty as far as it relates to coronavirus. And then also, I I, I think that when people were going and being able to look up that it was a patent for it, that just mm-hmm. helps to propagate yeah, like the belief that it is definitely weaponized. Uh, and then also, I lied unsubscribed from so many people because <laughs> I was so heartbroken that all these pe- that, that's what they went with. That's what they went. With. It doesn't, yeah, it doesn't do anything to fight the narrative at all. It re- it makes it worse. Right. It put, it gins up people's fears even more because now oh it's it, well it's okay so it was the common cold but they found a way to weaponize it okay and then on top of that's why I kept putting up uh, who are you gonna believe I'm talking to believers I I don't the world gonna do what they are gonna do but believers we believe that the word of God is the truth and so if something else comes up and, and contradicts the word then the word bears witness to the truth. So we say, I can't believe you. I don't care what your evidence is. The word of God says this. And when I read Ecclesiastes and it says there's nothing new under the sun, I kept pointing that out. Either we're going to believe the Lord or we're going to believe these devils. Well, I'm sorry. I have never, first of all, I've never caught the Lord in a lie, nor will I ever, because he has already declared is an immutable fact that he cannot lie. So since he cannot lie, the word of God says there is nothing new. So whatever this is, is something that humanity's already seen before and will see again. Then you find out it's yep. the common cold. So now they're claiming they weaponized the common cold. Well, like Sister Angel and I just got through saying it. If they did, they weaponized it to keep hospitals empty because it ain't working. But I then, haven't even seen a cold going around. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. Seen- I've seen bad cold and flu seasons, and this one wasn't it. No. I didn't even know anybody that got a cold. No, the, yeah, the, exactly. the, the CD, if you look at the CDC right now, we're actually under the numbers from the same time last year. I mean, really? So there's supposed to be this deadly virus that everyone's getting, and we're under the same numbers to this time last year. I mean, I'm not making this up. Go look it up on the mm-hmm. CDC site yourself. Look at last year. Look at this You're year. You're not lying. I've looked. I've been looking at the numbers. I'm so bored with the numbers. They're so, mm-hmm. they're so anti their propaganda. Uh, I'm amazed that they aren't just fudging the numbers. I mean, they are fudging the That's numbers, but I mean, even, you, it's even on these up. statistical sites yeah. that they would be yep. lying. But I guess they don't want to lose complete credibility. Right. No, uh, I think it's because they want to screw your head up. They want it to all the evidence to point there's no illness. You could factually, there's no evidence of it. And yet all you do is see people around you. Double-minded man yeah. is unstable yep. in all his That's ways. So let and, me just. Oh, sorry. Go oh, I'm sorry. The, the last, last little point I wanted to make was, was uh, oh, I did make it about the uh, patent giving the whole concept legitimacy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But also, if you're going to have a vaccine, you got to have a patent on the properties to be able to have the vaccine. Otherwise, anybody can make it. But go ahead, brother. Uh, yep. Brother. Well, we got off on the viruses, and I, I just wanted to close out uh, the topic. I, um, I, I feel like enough was said about it. I just wanted mm-hmm. to end, end by saying, guys, just just be real careful. Uh, I mean, a lot of you probably aren't going out there looking to see what else is out there, but uh, uh, as we've talked about, when you watch things, uh, watch sermons and stuff on YouTube, they uh, suggest they suggest uh, similar programs and stuff, and that's that's how I uh, ran into some of these and also from the Ministry of uh, Fighting for the Faith. Um, so I'm, I'm just stating that th- this stuff is out there. They're not, uh, they're not preaching the same gospel. They barely preach the gospel at all. They're cherry picking scripture, not reading in context. And that's nothing to do. A lot of people are doing that. 
So I'm just saying I wanted people to be aware of it and just to be careful. And be careful about people that call themselves apostles or prophets. There are no new apostles. Uh, there's no one living today that has actually seen Jesus and uh, commissioned uh, by him to be uh, a, a true apostle anymore. Uh, um, so uh, just be careful. That's all. Mm -hmm. Good. Thank you, Brother Cripps. That's a perfect way, place to end because it's actually time we're, we're a little overdue for your breakdown of the movie the lord of the rings now i want to say i'm a little frustrated with you mm. because i don't remember you announcing that this was going to be the movie we would i i actually yeah, forgot we needed it. to review this one announce it i forgot what movie i said i was going to do that oh. okay i should have okay, then... gone back and listened i thought i said i didn't know for sure but that, that i i could be wrong about that you guys remember? Yeah, but brother, you got my you got my cell That's phone. That's what I remember. I remember you didn't know yet. And you could have gave me a heads up so I could have been prepared because it's been a long time since I watched Lord of the Rings. And I'll be honest with you, I don't remember half of it. But good, please go ahead with your breakdown. Well, you know what? We if you wanted to, we could just we could just do it next week so that everyone has time to prepare. That, that'd be all right. We we can just. I go was over next I week. was just busting your chops, but oh, no, I know. Was playing. I know you were. <laughs> no, no I, I mean I I've there. seen it recently. Last week I hadn't seen Tower of Monte Cristo. It, it, I mean I think it it, it it you know it's okay, right? Uh, you don't. Uh, uh, not everybody has to. She's seen it a little bit. It's a pretty basic thing. Oh, you know, I saw the whole thing. Of, I think I've seen yeah. all the the whole. 15 years or so, but <laughs> no, go go ahead, brother. Because when you're talking about it. You're gonna probably uh, jog my memory some. Oh, I was gonna say, yeah. I mean, when 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 we talk about it, I'm sure it'll come up. Um, so there, there's been several movies made. There's a trilogy which was very well done. Uh, Peter Jackson directed, who directed King Kong, uh, which I liked. I thought it was fairly good. Um, but these movies are really well done. Uh, I have read a lot of novels. There's a lot more novels. I haven't read all of them. Uh, there's a lot more novels than they are. What they did was they took some of the novels and they condensed them into uh, the movies are almost three hours long, each of them. Uh, so it's, it, they, they did a good job of doing it. Um, so the first, the first movie that they actually did it backwards. There was a cartoon done a long time ago, I believe back in the mid seventies. Uh, for The Hobbit. Uh, I like that as well. Uh, actually, The Hobbit should have been first, but what they did is they did the Lord of the Rings trilogy first, and then they went back and did The Hobbit, which is also a good movie. So they had a lot of the same actors uh, that, that uh, actually played uh, the same characters, but it was done. Uh, it, it, the story took place before uh, the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Uh, so the first one was um, Fellowship of the Ring, then The Two Towers, and then The Return of the King. Uh, the, the first one uh, was in 2001, and then um, they continued to film. So it, the, the next film started where the last one began uh, in 2002, and then they did the same thing with Return of the King in 2003. So those th three movies were uh, pretty much back-to-back, -back, um, wildly popular uh, like I said, they were very well done. Um, had a lot of good uh, stars in it. Uh, Elijah Wood, Miranda Otto, Orlando Bloom, etc. cetera. Uh, lots of good stuff there. Um, so the story, uh, basically, and I won't go over all of it. I'm sure a lot of people have seen it. But the basic story is about uh, a hobbit uh, that, you know, is kind of living a quiet life to himself. And he gets uh, wrapped up uh, in, in an adventure. And they're... Uh, pretty much going across, traveling across country. And uh, he uh, runs across a, a ring uh, that has special powers. It makes you invisible. But when you're invisible, the only way I can describe it is you're on a, a spiritual plane. That's the way I look at it, is it's an actual spiritual plane. Everything looks the same, like you're standing in the same place. Uh, but when you have the ring on, uh, you're a able to be noticed by Siron, who is the evil force uh, in that particular storyline world. And I believe it is a direct representation of Satan. Uh, no doubt about that. Um, this uh, particular creature, he brings up um, all these evil uh, characters that end up being the enemies in these uh, films, like uh, 
uh, goblins and orcs and things like that. Um, all creatures uh, created by this uh, uh, Sauron evil character. Uh, and it's represented as an eye. It looks like an eye, a big red eye that appears uh, like in the sky and stuff. And, uh, and people do his bidding. Um, so these characters travel. He finds this ring puts the ring on, and then he's invisible. Nobody can see him, so he can slip in and out of uh, the shadows and things like that. Um, there's also a character, uh, his original name was Schmeagle, and uh, he uh, turned into a character called Gollum. Now, when a human has this ring or, uh, or a hobbit has this uh, ring, you have to be very careful because over time you... Um, you want it. You want it. You want to possess it. Uh, Gollum, who was initially uh, a hobbit, uh, he wanted the ring so bad, he killed his brother to get it. Um, and when you have it, like, let's say that I had it and Lisa wanted to see it, I would covet it and I would hold it. I wouldn't want to let her see it because I wanted to possess the ring. And uh, Gollum, uh, was a like I said, he was a hobbit, and he turned into a, a completely different character uh, that lived in like a swampy area uh, when he had had the ring, and uh, the the character uh, uh, runs across him, and he ends up getting the ring, and he ends up escaping with the ring, and so Gollum comes after him. So that's the storyline that goes through through the movies, and um, so. The, the character has this ring and he uses it most times only to escape people that are hunting them and things like that. But he even starts to covet uh, the ring. It starts to slowly wear on him. Uh, and I believe that the ring is not only an example of things that we covet as humans, like riches and glory and things like that, but it is a rep to me, a representation of sin itself. Uh, sin can be pleasurable for a season. Uh, and so when you have the ring and you're able to be invisible, uh, if you were a thief, you'd be able to put the ring on and steal things from people, and that wouldn't be a problem. So there are things that you can do with the ring that you can't do without the ring. And then the more you use the ring, though, the more you're able to, uh, you're in this other plane, the more you're able to be recognized by these dark riders. So there's the, these characters that are on horses, that when, uh, when he has the ring on, he can't uh, leave it on for too long because while he has the ring on, they can see him and they, they, they try to find him when he has the ring on because uh, Siron wants the ring back. It's a ring of great power. And uh, they even tell a story of how when uh, a king used to have it and while he had the ring, he you know ruled the kingdom and stuff like that. But the same thing happened to him. He started to covet the ring. He didn't want anyone else to have it. It, it had great power, and the power started to corrupt him. He started out good, and toward the end, he was all old-looking. I mean, it had a physical toll on the people that that uh, kept it. So it, it's it's uh, the writer of it, uh, uh, J.R. Uh, Tolkien. Um, he was a Catholic. Uh, he he claimed that he was a Christian, and I'm not going to get into whether he was believed the right gospel or anything like that. Uh, there is a uh, biography done about him. Um, I haven't read it. There's also a movie about it, too, which I haven't seen. Um, but he was actually friends with C.S. Lewis, uh, real-life friends with C.S. Lewis. And whether, whatever your feelings are about C.S. Lewis, I've had a lot of people attack him and say he didn't have the right gospel, things like that. I, I personally have uh, had a lot of spiritual growth from reading uh, his books. I love the Narnia Chronicles. I'm not going to get off on too much of a tangent on this, um, but they were friends. Um, uh, so uh, there, there are definitely some um, spiritual messages in there. Uh, he didn't just use uh, Christianity. He used uh, Norse religion and some other things and kind of mixed it all up. So there's some things in there that aren't, aren't Christian. Uh, but the very message of it is good against evil. And like I said, uh, uh, Siron is uh, the representation of Satan who is uh, getting evil minions to do his bidding and um, uh, trying to take over the whole uh, area. And he does take over quite a bit of it. 
and the forces of good keep kind of fighting it back and things like that. And that's what the movies are about. It's them uh, trying to fight back the evil and uh, things like that. And uh, the uh, uh, Samwise was the first one, and then Frodo was the one that had the ring. And Frodo, uh, he'd had the ring so long and realized uh, what it was starting to do to him. So he was on a quest to, uh, I forget the name of the 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 volcano it's a big fire pit and he ends up throwing the ring in there and Gollum had chased him around the whole time and he ends up trying to chase the ring he puts the ring on as he's falling into this huge fiery pit and he turns invisible and then he uh, dies he dies with the ring on and, and it gets burned up in the in the volcano um so it's it's very much about sin it's very much uh, the battle of good and evil um, there, there's some magic in it. And a lot of people are, you know, they don't like there being like wizardry and stuff. I understand that. Um, there's some in that, you know, there's a, one of the good, good characters, uh, Gandalf. He's a really, really tall, uh, uh, magi or whatever. I don't think that's the term for it, sorcerer or whatever. Um, but he's represented as good in that. Um, so he, he travels along with these guys and tries to, you know, like keep watch over them, things like that. Um, so there's some magic use in it. Uh, if you have any problem with that, then I wouldn't really suggest it. Uh, if that's a mm -hmm. real big thing for you to me, it's all just fantasy. It's not teaching people how to use real sorcery and things like that. So for me, it wasn't an issue. Um, there's magic in the, uh, Chronicles of Narnia, but the, the certain, certain people use magic, things like that. It doesn't really uh, affect me, but it might affect some. Um, but it's a really good, it, you know, there, there's a lot of um, like traveling, traveling through this life as a believer and the things that try to attack you and try to uh, uh, get you to change to, to the dark side or, or change to, um, I used a Star Wars reference there, sorry about that, mm -hmm. uh, try, to, try to change to uh, Satan's side, you know, uh, to, to do evil in the world. Um, so, uh, I would definitely suggest it if you haven't seen it. Uh, I watch it pretty frequently. Uh, I've seen, seen all the movies a couple times, including the Hobbit. That was really well done. Um, if you haven't seen it, I would definitely, uh, start with the, uh, Hobbit, uh, start with the Hobbit first, even though that was done afterwards and then, uh, watch the other ones. Like I said, as well as kind of having that, uh, message in it. Uh, uh, I mean, for believers, you, you'll be able to see it. You'll be able to see the uh, good against evil. You'll be able to to see uh, Sauron as, as being a representation directly of Satan. Um, you'll be able to, uh, I, I was able to identify with uh, some of the characters and think about how it is in the Christian life, uh, just uh, having all these things come against you. And even the fight with him having the ring and having to fight against um, letting the powers of the ring overtake him and change his whole uh, personality and even physically, that's the ravages of sin. Sin has the capability, depending on what your sin is, but it definitely has the capability of changing who you are internally if it's not dealt with. Uh, but when you become a believer, we're no longer a slave to sin, we're a slave to righteousness but we still have to carry these bodies around with us. So we have to be on guard. It's a constant spiritual warfare to walk in the spirit instead of walk in the flesh. So to me, that was a representation. He had the ring and he saw what it did to Gollum. He saw what it did to other people. He knew it could happen to him and he wanted to get rid of it. That's what ended up happening. He wanted to get rid of the ring, just like we want to get rid of sin. And, uh, so, uh, I think that's it. Uh, I, oh. I uh, saw a lot of parallels, a lot of spiritual uh, messages in it. Um, there's, one, there's one thing you said, Brother Cripps, that uh, I wanted to share a little concept. Please. Please. Step with, uh, which is this whole concept that uh, people, I, I don't perceive it as such. I don't think power is the problem. The problem is, and I, I remember having a conversation with my dad about this years ago, uh, where I said, I don't think, I'm, I'm exactly what I'm about to say here, I don't think power corrupts, 
man is corrupt and power in his hands becomes corrupted. Mm -hmm. And I think you can see that in Lord of the Rings. Their pursuit, the ring itself wasn't good or evil. Right. It was what was in the person's heart and what they wanted it for and then trying to get it and their lust for it and all that in their conquest mm -hmm. and what they're willing to do to try to get it. Sure. Sure. Yeah. I can agree with that. Uh, but I, and I'm not saying you, you know, I wasn't saying that you didn't agree with it. I'm just a lot oh, of people yeah. will say, you know, power corrupts. And I'm like, well, I don't think the power is the issue. <laughs> I think it's no, the, that's a good point. the uh, man's heart, you know, man's heart is deceitfully wicked. Who can know it? I mean, yeah, absolutely. So that's that's made clear. So if a believer is given power by God, then he can do different things with it than, say, someone who who's not a believer, someone that doesn't have the Lord. Absolutely. I mean, there are people out there that have power that do good. Uh, unfortunately, there there are way more uh, that have power that don't do good. So that's what that's what really what we see a lot of times. But yeah, there are people out there that uh, God has given power to. I would say that in the Bible, there's many examples. God gave power to David, and you know, David wasn't a perfect person, but he he was a good king. He did a lot of good things while he was here. Uh, Solomon, same way. For a while, he got corrupted toward the end because of his chasing after God, godless women, you know, pagan women. His wives, uh, uh, Scripture's clear about that, that his uh, wives led him to worship other gods. And it's so unfortunate because this is supposed to be the wisest man that ever lived. But yet, as wise as he was because of his flesh, he was able to, to be corrupted. Um, right. So we have to be very careful of that. I, I completely agree. And I know you weren't saying I, I disagreed. I'm just, mm -hmm. I think that's a great point to make. Um, so, uh, yeah, uh, uh, that's, that's all I want to say about that. Like I said, if you, if you haven't seen it, I do, uh, suggest it. Um, there's, there's some battles in there, a little bit of blood and things like that. Um, I don't remember too much swearing. I don't think they swore a lot back then. There might be a little bit in there, not not too bad. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's a good movie there for for a believer to watch. There's a lot of, uh, like I said, there's a lot of connections in there that can be made. Uh, yeah. So thanks for the time. Hey, no problem. Thank you for sharing. Uh, yeah, it's still it's still kind of hazy to me. Uh, I was never, nor have I ever, <laughs> in been a fan of those styles style or styles of movies uh -huh. the whole like new um, what what is that what's that called fantasy. the um, it's called uh, generally called fantasy fantasy and then there's a time period like it's the dark ages type thing and never medieval, medieval yeah i've never really been in, <laughs> never been into those types of movies i've watched them yeah. but i could never go oh that was a great i haven't seen one that made me go that was a great great flick can you guys even think of one that was medieval that you would say was a great movie well um the the, Mon the count of monte cristo actually was yeah um pretty good uh really good um i agree with you uh lisa i i for some reason that whole period kind of uh turns me off too my brother was really into super into like dungeons and dragons and mm -hmm. um and uh lord of the rings and i watched them and i liked them but it's it, for him it was like for me, like when I was a kid, Star Wars was everything, and for him, Lord <laughs> of the Rings was everything. So uh, I, I never got, got quite got it, and they for me they kind of go on forever. You know, it's like okay, uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're, they're yeah, a lot of movies. That's they're the way I movies, felt. Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, but I, I understand totally what you're saying. I mean, I, I should go back and watch them now that I'm, uh, you know, woke. Well, yes. I am the opposite of you two. I I love uh, fantasy stuff and dragons and and all that. So there are several movies that I that I could could talk about. Um, I also like the uh, King Arthur myths and things like that. I mean, I realize it's all a myth. Robin uh, Hood, Princess Bride, yeah, Excalibur. You know, um, movies like that. Um, never seen never seen any of those. But yeah, I understand. Yeah. Well, yeah, when I looked at the trilogy of, of Lord of the Rings and then all the sequels, uh, I, I was like, why don't they just call it Rename it the Never Ending Story? <laughs> but, uh, I love Never Ending Story and The Princess Bride. Yep, so I, I oh, was Princess trying to think Bride. of the things I liked. But... That's a good example. Gosh, that's a great movie, too. 
I still Perfect. haven't seen it. <laughs> oh, you yeah. have to at least see that. Never. I've never seen it either. Oh, my I never gosh. saw it. I remember it was at the box office for a long time, you and people, people were raving about it, and I was just shaking my head going, simple things. <laughs> the hero's at the journey. Time. That's, it's, like a, it's like a substitute for Christ, the hero's journey. A lot of times I feel yeah. like it's like with the never ending story, I, I know I watched it like a few years ago. I think it was after I got saved. Mm -hmm. And I, I remember seeing a whole lot. Um, I hadn't watched this as a kid, seeing a whole lot in there, but I can't really remember now. But I know that, you know, it's usually um, it's usually going to be like a, 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 a person of exceptional virtue um, or an innocent who has to go on this um, this journey to save yeah. the world. And Frodo was you know innocent and he was the only one they could trust with this responsibility now it's interesting because the response i see it like with the with the you know the power in the ring like it's it's almost like the, the temptation to be your own god instead of um instead of to to to, to worship god right so um mm -hmm. it, but i see it like there's an antichrist theme that it's hard to always tell if it's really pushing an antichrist theme or if it's actually warning against it in a lot of these heroes mm. journey uh, um narratives but uh but i know that uh a lot of times it ends up you know pushing it because the person shows that they were able to withstand temptation and um and be righteous and save the world sure. as if you, mm. yeah you could do it too that's all it takes is one good man mm. but um but I did like how Lord of the Rings, it didn't, you know, like Frodo, Frodo was tempted and he did, you know, he did uh, falter. But he, I mean, he ended up doing, you know, the he right did. thing, but it showed him he wasn't, uh, he wasn't beyond sin, you know, because no. he, uh, he, he was, he, he had to, you know, throw the ring out in order to, to not get consumed by it. Um, yeah. I think it's funny because it talks about magic and I see the ring is like, you know, there's magic all around in Lord of the Rings, right? But um and and but if you put the ring on, then Satan or I mean, Sauron can see you. Yes. And you know, and, mm. and it's like that's the ring, the temptation to do magic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, because what if you do that, then you're you know, you're you're really opening the door wide open to Satan yep. when you do it, but it gives you all this power, right? And then you would get addicted to it if if you really could mm -hmm. manifest your will that way. That's um, what I forget too. I was thinking it's like pharmacia, you know, where, where they would do drugs to um uh, for for you know to open the door to spiritual realities. That's a whole another subject, pharmacy, mm -hmm. uh, what they used to do back then, and how we're headed that way again with all the things mm -hmm. they're trying to do medically. Right. Thank you. Well, Those are really good points. They added added to my uh, added to my thing there. That's the uh, uh, good thoughts. Thank you. Yeah. Any yeah, well, any I wish I seen it again recently? So because I, I know there's a ton in that movie. Yeah. I hadn't read the book because I wasn't ever really into fantasy either. I always thought it was like, I like horror as a kid. I was really messed up. No, so. me too. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, brothers and sisters, we've reached that time where we're going to need to take a break here. Okay. Let everybody stop, stretch, stand up, refresh their beverages so we can come back on the other side of the break and we're going to resume with our discussion. Let's see, we're going to continue with. Sister, well, actually, it'll be Brother uh, Cripps again. We're going to talk about uh, some of his insights concerning what he perceives in the world with illusion uh, and what's going on. Brother Cripps, am I framing that right? Yeah, the illusion, the illusion of the world, the, the, the way that the mm -hmm. world represents itself and the way that we see it as believers and the way that we should. It represents itself. Yeah, it represents itself one way. <laughs> when you have the the biblical lens, mm -hmm. you 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 see what what is really going on. Exactly, exactly. I also and want to talk I'll, about Angel's marriage thing. If she yes, yes, that. we're going to continue. We're going to uh, also be continue with marriage. Uh, talk the topic of marriage. Sister Angel wants to talk about marriage. And let's see what her okay. insights are <laughs> regarding that should be a lot of fun. And then also coming up after the break, we're going to have Brother Ben with uh, his uh, spiritual insights and also regarding tech. And he said there's some interesting going on with QAnon. He said there was some activity this week 
that uh, should be very fun to discuss. So that's going to be on the flip side of this break. And I hope to see you all right after this.
Praise the Lord, beloved of the Most High God, in the mighty name of King Jesus. Thank you for coming back and staying with us, uh, so those of you that never left, uh, on the, the second part of the broadcast on Late Night with Lisa and Friends. We're going to be continuing with Brother Cripps talking about the way he sees the world with their, how the world makes us perceive itself, which is really an illusion. Brother Cribs, would you please enlighten us as to what you're perceiving right now? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So um, one of the best ways to kind of kick this off, I think, is here in America. Now, I, I believe that each part of the world, each country has their own little thing that they set up and they use it to control people, uh, to rule them and kind of in its countries. There's not a whole lot of uh, good things uh, going on. It's all about control, like China and uh, formerly uh, the Soviet Union, uh, other communist countries. You know, there's not a whole lot of rosy things that are uh, uh, put out there that you can attain, things like that. But there still is propaganda. There still are means of control, uh, a way of presenting the world. You know, it's all about camaraderie and it's the best thing for you. Communism is represented in a way that it's really the best thing for the people rather than democracy and other things like that. But here in America, uh, uh, back in the 30s, uh, it kind of started out uh, after the uh, Great Depression and things were building up again. Uh, the, uh, things started to get really good after World War II. And the idea of the American dream was uh, presented. And the idea of the American dream is that if you work hard and, you know, obey the law, pay your taxes, uh, you know, just do the right thing, that anybody could have a double car garage and a white picket fence and uh, Chevrolet and apple pie and, and, and all that. Um, uh, that American dream uh, it, it seemed to be attainable for a lot of people. Now, it was never attainable to everyone, but the idea was so widespread that even people in other countries uh, wanted to come and live in America so they could, you know, use free enterprise and use the way things were set up to kind of uh, have a better chance at life. Because comparatively speaking, these other countries, a lot of them, uh, their uh, standard of living is a lot lower than it was here. Um, so even all of the people that came through Ellis Island, even earlier than that, in the late 1800s, uh, when they came into America, the reason why they came to America was to have a better life. They didn't just wake up and decide one day, oh, I just want to move to America for no, no reason. Mm -hmm. No, they heard uh, that when you come to America, you work hard, you know, you keep your head down, you do your thing. And it, it was going to be the possibility of having a better life than uh, European countries and, and, and other uh, countries uh, around the world. Um, so America itself has always been over the past, you know, two and a half or 250 years. I think it was 1776, right? It became a country. So uh, it's, it's a good 200, 250 years, something like that. Uh, that w we've been kind of considered by the rest of the world, you know, a, a place of opportunity. Uh, for those of us that have lived in America, I remember uh, as a kid growing up and being taught the same concept that if I worked hard and I did well in school, uh, you know, if I o obeyed the authorities and, uh, and all that, then when I grew up, I could you know, have an okay life. And also the idea that each 
uh, child growing up uh, will end up doing just a little bit better than their parents did. You guys heard that? Do a little bit better than your parents did. That's the that's the idea. So it got me thinking, this whole idea of the American dream. I've read several articles on this. People have written articles. Is the American dream still alive? Was it ever even possible? And I believe the time it was the most possible was in the 50s. The 50s was a time where, uh, like I said, after World War II, generally after a war doesn't happen all the time. Vietnam didn't uh, come with a lot of uh, things being great when that war was over in America. Uh, but certainly after World War II, uh, people came back from the war, the soldiers that didn't die come back and, uh, you know, get jobs. Houses went up like you wouldn't believe during that period of time. And these houses had a, a garage and a lot of them had white picket fences. That was the ideal. The white picket fence was a big deal back then. It's not so much a big deal now. Uh, so uh, in reading these articles over the years and things like that and, and realizing for myself that I was given a bill of goods. I was told that if I worked hard and I, you know, kept my head down and did well in school, I did all those things. I've worked very hard in my life, but I just couldn't seem to attain these things that I was told growing up that I would be able to attain, that I would, um, you know, get a, get a great job and, you know, I stay at the same company and work my way up the, the corporate ladder, so to speak. And I would get to a point where, uh, you know, I, I, I had, uh, a, a decent life, you know, I had, uh, 2.5 kids. I don't know how you have a half a kid, but you know, 2.5 kids in a garage. And like I said, the white picket fence. So I, I started to think about that uh, as I, uh, gotten older and I thought, why did people lie to me or am I doing something wrong? Am I not uh, why am I not fitting in with the world? Why why uh, are they representing this ideal? And it seems to be so elusive to me. Uh, and then uh, as I continue to grow in the Lord and continue to, um, I went through a, quite a rebellious time in my 20s and it stretched out almost to my 30s. Um, still believed and still prayed and still had a relationship with God and listened to sermons, things like that. But I really was rebelling against the church. It wasn't in my mind, I wasn't rebelling against God as much as I was rebelling against the idea of the church. I'd had a lot of bad things happen, uh, a lot of betrayal and, and uh, people saying that they loved and cared about me. And the Lord says, hey, brother, be well. And then, you know, I would share something with them that I was struggling with. And then all of a sudden, everybody knows about it. Uh, so I experienced a lot of that. And, and uh, I, that's a story for another night. But the overall, I started to see a discrepancy between what the way that the world represents itself and the way the Bible represents the world. There, there are several verses in the Bible that tell us that, you know, we're, we're, uh, we're in captivity. You know, this world that we live in, this, is, this world is not our home. It really isn't. Uh, we're waiting for the next world. We're waiting for when Jesus reigns and rules. Uh, rather than these uh, these politicians and, and uh, crooked kings that rule this land. We don't have a king, we have a president. But same thing applies. Um, and there's a, there's a uh, I believe there is a, an angst and there's an anguish in our hearts because we do not have the, the thing that uh, God has promised us eventually. You know, it was the same thing for the Israelites when they were promised uh, the, the promised land. I'll say, okay, so God presented an ideal to them and said, I'm going to take you into a new land and you're my people. I'm your God. And I'm going to take you guys to this place where flows the milk and honey, this wonderful, great place that, you know, you're not going to be slaves. You're, you know, I'll, you'll have a relationship with me and I'll, rule over you and and everything is going to be great and so that was the promise uh for them and uh interesting enough they spent you know 40 years wandering around the wilderness to find this place and then when they finally get there oh it's filled with giants and they have all these things to overcome um so the idea of the promised land we're promised a, a, a land we're promised to have that when jesus reigns and rules uh, and things will be great. It'll wipe all the tears from our eyes and uh, there, there'll be no more sorrow or the work that we do in that scenario won't be backbreaking work. It'll be work that we enjoy, I believe. Uh, and uh, it, it, it'll just it'll just be wonderful. Well, 
the world promises that we can have that wonderful thing here, I believe. I believe that there, there's, um, there's things represented uh, to us, uh, and to me it's all propaganda and lies. Um, I believe that in America we have a lot better than some other countries. There's no doubt about that. There are some other places that I, I am uh, just so grateful that when uh, when God uh, decided where I would be born and to what family I would be born, that he chose America for me rather than some other impoverished countries where uh, life is way harder than it is for us here. But still, my point is that there's a representation of the world that is different than it is in Scripture. In the Scripture, it's very clear that uh, for believers, there there will be persecution, there will be tribulation, there will be hard things, and certainly God's people went through enough hard things. The Hebrew people they they were always taken into captivity. Now, granted, they were taken into captivity because of of their sin. They were taken into captivity because they ran after other gods, and they um, they they didn't do the things that God wanted them to do. Uh, that's not the case for all of us now people have this idea of America and they say, well, America, if they would follow after God, things would be better. And I agree with that. I believe that God blesses uh, people as individuals and he would bless a country that totally followed him. But Mm -hmm. we've been even sold a a bill of goods on that. When people uh, talk about America as being a Christian country, we're not, (laughs) we're not. The founder, the founding forefathers of this country yeah, they say they uh, follow God, but which God are they following? Uh, mm-hmm. There's a lot of information that says that a lot of them are Freemasons, and they uh, Freemasons uh, they they call his name God, but they worship Lucifer. Mm-hmm. So even this nation, when people say no, you're founded on Christian principles, yeah, I mean, yeah, some of the some of the principles may be Christian principles. But they're worshiping a different God. When they when they claim the name of God, their God is Lucifer, and not the God of the Bible, not the God that we worship. So the the way that it's represented in the world, um, I think, for instance, the the coronavirus and all these things that we're talking about, all these psyops and things like that. The reason why it's such a problem, the reason why a lot of people are blind to it, is because they believe what the world is selling. They believe this idea. Uh, maybe not specifically the American dream. I don't hear about that uh, too much from other people now. But they believe that that this uh, this world is basically good. I've actually heard people say that, oh, yeah, I believe humans in general are basically good. You got some few bad apples out there. But they have no concept of what sin is. They have no concept that we're born into this world of sin. This world is ravaged by sin. Uh, We live in a place where everything is affected directly by sin, and we're affected directly by sin as well. Now, for those of us that that have received the free gift of salvation and and we have the Holy Spirit in us, we're no longer slaves to sin. We're slaves to righteousness. Praise God. That's, Mm -hmm. That's the condition that we're in. But just like we're still in captivity in this world until Christ comes back or until we go to be with him, we also have this uh, pesky flesh that we carry around. So I just wanted to bring this up and ask you guys if if, if this means anything to you. Uh, do you. Do you agree with the idea that this world presents itself as a, a pretty decent place and that, that people are basically good? Like I said, you have a few bad people out there. You got people that do evil. But generally speaking, at least in America, uh, most people are even considered Christian. 70 about 70 percent of people polled if asked if they if they're a christian they'll say yes and they don't go on to ask you what gospel do you have or anything like that i'm just saying a general poll saying what people believe about 70 percent say that in some way they're christians so what do you guys think of that hmm. uh 70 of christians Seventy percent of the people polled in America say they're Christians, but yeah. then you, <laughs> they can't even they could not define to you the true gospel at all. Oh no! Many of them, probably ninety five percent of that number, <laughs> couldn't do it. Right, exactly. That's what it was so puzzling to me one time. I see 
debate between Christopher Hitchens and another person that was supposed to be a Christian. Mm -hmm. Hitchens, and it, it cracked me up because when he asked the Christian <laughs> what 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 being a Christian was, and he defined it, Christopher Hitchens rebuked him because <laughs> he didn't define it correctly. And Christopher Hitchens said, "That's not be that's not what being a Christian." is according to the bible and then he defined it correctly he did that man understood the gospel he laid that blew my mind that. when i saw that yeah. yes he did he laid waste to him. <laughs> yeah so did you guys grow up here yeah. this idea that Mary oh go ahead ben well yeah i was gonna say i mean I, it's amazing to me um it, it's easy for me to beat myself up, but I, I most people are still this way. Is that I think all my life I grew up in thinking that yeah, generally people are good, um, the, the government's generally good, you know, and, and they're just inept but good, you know. They they have they have well intentions, uh, good intentions. Um, but you know, as I, as I started reading the Bible and started looking, in fact, one of the things I started off with early on is that before I was ready to really dig deep in the Bible. I wanted to prove that evil was real or I wanted to, I, I had to see how evil the world really was. And I spent a lot of time doing that. I think a lot of people do that. Yeah. Um, and I kind of wasted a lot of time and then I started getting serious. Okay. I've, I've seen the evil side. Let me, let me look the other side now and, and get what, get focused on what's really important. But uh, after exploring all that, it, it became clear to me that, you know, most people are absolutely naive. And if they, even if they're not naive necessarily, they will dismiss or reject or not believe the, the you know, conspiracy theorists, so to speak. Um, uh, and so, you know, the, the, all, almost all the evil that, that they they hear about or uh, they, they, you know, they, they hear about in the world, they, they you know, dismiss as a, a conspiracy theory. Mm -hmm. Um but you don't, you don't need to look at the Bible and ancient history. These are these are documented things that happened in the ancient world. I mean, my God, people would sacrifice their own children. I mean, yes. I mean, even Josephus mentioned that um, people during the uh, it's the eighty seventy uh, leading up to it, uh, and this was prophesied that uh, I think it's in Deuteronomy that uh, the mothers would be eating their children and things like that. I mean, I, I couldn't even conceive of something like that, mm -hmm. and yet. They're not only people who do that kind of thing, but they revel in it. And there's, you know, they, they, they there's absolutely, they try to commune and, and uh, uh, commune with evil and, and, you know, there's ma evil magic. And I was just totally um, naive to all that stuff. And now I look at it, it's like, oh my gosh, how could I be so dumb? You know, why, why, why would I know, why would I just accept? Why would I never even question, you know, the government might have, uh, not my best interest in mind, you know, it, 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 it of course it doesn't, you know, um, it's just mind boggling how sleep I was and that everyone else is like that too. But, it, but once presented with the truth, I never rejected it. You know, I never, I always accepted truth. In fact, I welcomed it and I sought it out. Most people not only not seek it out, they don't welcome it. They, they suppress it. Um, and, um, so I, I, I mean, I totally know what you're talking about, and and all of Satan's uh, deceptions are in areas that you can't go out and prove yourself. You, there are things you can't see and things you can't prove yourself, like like you know cosmology. There's nothing we could do to prove any of that stuff. Um, you know, the eight men they're out in, in a remote desert, at, out in the desert of Africa that no one's going to go to. It's an inhospitable. Um, uh, the you know flat Earth, so to speak. You, you can't go to Antarctica into the extreme edges right. of the uh of the plant to, to check these things out for yourself right um the coronavirus you know you can't see it you can't prove it right uh, but it, and, and i think it in that sense i think it's kind of like mockery of god like where god would speak things into existence yeah. they try to create a narrative that's absolutely false but get people to act and and, and uh you know uh conduct themselves as if it's absolutely real you know and i think that that uh you know satan's uh mockery of god and believers thank you ben you're you're helping me make my point thank you i appreciate the the words yeah i, I um, go ahead Angel. oh sorry no go on no, no, no well you, well no. Okay. um so yeah i mean uh when it comes to the american dream i've you know i grew up like my, i was not patriotic i was always so i was I, like i said i was like a proto sjw it wasn't a thing yet i didn't realize that i was totally indoctrinated mm. uh, i was bitter and 
I was mad at white people because I felt like they saddled me with this guilt of slavery. And um, I was mad at, I, you know, I was mad at my ancestors. I was, and I was mad at this country. I was mad, you know, because to me, slavery was so traumatic when I found out about it that like I hated the country for, I just was like, no, I, I understand these people that are so psychotic, except I don't understand um, like, like uh, the fact that they, like, I understand that like, why they why they feel the way they do or why they think that they feel the way they do they, they've believed a lot of lies um but the way the the, the, the extent that they'll take it I, I don't that doesn't make any sense to me at all i mean tearing down abolitionist statues and stuff that that's insane but um i wasn't i i did, i was very critical of the country and everything growing up and um you know it was only once i got older um especially that i got saved i became i realized um as I still do agree that it was founded by Freemasons, um, uh, you know, I, the construct of this country uh, is one thing, but the people now, I, I also used to always believe that people were basically good, um, which, which was why it was so confusing to me, especially about the slavery thing. I, I didn't understand how that could happen and, and you know, how, how everybody could just go along with it. Now I, now I, I realize that, that, you know, uh, it, you know, like that I'm putting a perspective on it that, you know, is modern and all that stuff. But but it, that really tormented me for a long time. That was my first glimpse that people are evil, but I couldn't reconcile it because I didn't I didn't believe that. And um, I believe politicians were um, mo they thought they were doing the right thing uh, and that, yeah, maybe they were corrupt because they you know had vices or whatever. But basically they were you know, they were trying to do what they thought was right and all that stuff. Um, but, you know, now, um, while I, I recognize that people are evil, um, uh, you know, to, you know, and they have the tendency to do evil. And, and, and actually, uh, there's really no depths of depravity that they won't sink to um, if allowed and uh, if they, uh, you know, the farther they get away from God. But um, I, I am I'm also a lot more more grateful than ever uh, to be American because I, I, I really can't think of a single place where I, I would feel that the people are, are better because I, I know, and I, I think it's because of the, the prominence of Christianity in this country and even like non-Catholic, you know, true Christianity. Uh, mm -hmm. I think, I think you're, you're more likely to, to throw a stone and hit a believer here than you are probably anywhere. So yeah. I think that there's this dichotomy between, you know, whatever the, the, the uh, you know, the evil people who, who designed the country and the government, you know, like I personally believe that, that the whole constitution is, is there's, it's one of two things. Either the goal was to create the perfect, the perfect system of government uh, as best as, you know, maybe Satan could figure yeah. it out and then tear it down systematically by yeah. proving to God that like, look, look what they'll, you know, look what we'll give them the, you know, we'll give them the, the closest to perfect we can get. And then, well, well, you know, even with that, you know, they'll, you know, we'll, we'll still be able to destroy it by, by, you know, tempting them mm -hmm. um, to, uh, to basically incrementally accept um, uh, things that are ungodly. And, um, you know, uh, for instance, the, 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 the ever encroaching, uh, uh, like socialist tendencies of this country, mm -hmm. the handouts where we started, where we wanted to, uh, uh, we wanted to be independent and we, you know, we, did, we probably would have been insulted to be offered welfare initially. Um, but, um, uh, you know, there's no way to have a perfect government and there's no way to have a perfect country, but I still know that I'm, uh, that I was extremely blessed. And that's what's so ugly about what's happening right now is that um, everybody is so ungrateful mm -hmm. there, because even though it's not like, I don't, you know, I've never been a flag waver. It, it, my natural inclination is to be skeptical and, um, uh, basically uh, pessimistic and uh, uh, kind of cynical about about America. So I'm not somebody that, you know, oh, well, I'm going to believe good things about this country or my people because that's what I want to believe. I'm the opposite. I, 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 I had to work back from a place of thinking the worst, uh, except for obviously I thought people were basically good. But in terms of this country, you know, just being very jaded about it and frustrated and angry, feeling betrayed by the past, basically, um, especially because of the whole slavery thing. Um, and um, I now realize that when I see what's happening, I feel like part of this whole tantrum that everybody's throwing and, and basically saying that, um, that, that, you know, that acting like America is the most evil place, 
where, and this has nothing to do with who founded it or what the purpose of it is ultimately, but it's actually the, the, what's really funny. And I think this is what Satan would do is that in reality, all like most of like in a, in a lot of ways, a lot of the accusations being made against America right now, it, uh, we're one of the least offenders of, of, you know, all of these things. And it's not based on, I don't believe it's based on um, the government. I believe it's based on, you know, just the, the people. I mean, and we are actually the, one of the most successful, if not the most successful uh, multicultural country there is. Um, most other places, uh, it, it, like in terms of oppression, uh, people don't hear about it a lot because it's, they're pretty obscure groups, but a lot of countries that have, different ethnic groups. I mean, the people, it, it's almost expected. Of course, the, the minority is going to be oppressed and nobody even feels bad about it. It's just standard. It's yeah. standard for that to happen. And yeah. nobody feels guilty uh, when they overpower it. Like no, nobody does. But in America, you've got people like me. I mean, <laughs> as a kid, I was uh, basically like self-flagellating, just wanting to somehow exercise this ancestral guilt I felt. Um, and I, I no, no, nobody else in the in the rest of the world could relate to that because the, the, only in America could you convince us to 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 hate ourselves this much over. I mean, something that uh, that that like I said, like we're the least offenders of. I mean, you know, in 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 uh, the rest of the world, let's say in the Arab countries, they were the worst slavers in history, as far as I know. But you don't see their slaves. You don't see the legacy of their slaves in their population because they castrated them. Yeah. And then they, so then they didn't, so the, guess what that meant? They had to go get more slaves because they weren't letting them reproduce. So that's what they, they were just hundreds of millions of slaves. Um, and so that's what I think is funny is I, I'm starting to notice that I think when it comes to the American dream, I, I think it's like something that, uh, Obviously, we're never going to have perfection in, you know, I think, I don't know if the American dream is about having perfection. I think it's just about having, um, like, a reasonable shot at uh, fairness and people having the things that most people want in life, a family, you know, a stable job, just a place to raise their family and be happy together for yeah. while we're, you know, on this short period of time that we're even alive. Yes. But obviously not without any strife or suffering. Right. Um, people, people get bitter and, and, and frustrated because they expect perfection, but I, I, you know, the American dream, I think is really just sort of like a reasonable, uh, thing that, uh, people, uh, like ideally a government would allow you to have not, not that it would provide you with, but it would allow, because, because in most other places, the government wouldn't allow that for the average person. They just wouldn't even allow it. Um, whereas, you know, we're not guaranteed it you know but it's possible right um um and um i you know they've slowly taken that away they've made it to where women have a very hard time staying home yeah. um and that's one of the biggest things that was really honestly one of the biggest things yeah and so but i but what i see now is the irony of 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 this all this rage being like i think god is is probably you know not pleased <laughs> because um uh, the world is a very brutal place. Yeah. And um, honestly, I, I think probably, be, like I said, because of the legacy of Christianity in this country, uh, not with the founders, but with the people um, uh, of all backgrounds, really, uh, there's probably, you know, sort of like a missionary destination. Instead of people going out, people came here and we got it. Like I know a lot of Hispanic people that, you know, would have been Catholic had they not been immigrants into this country, but they, because they were exposed to um, like Protestant church and the, you know, the true gospel, or at least a lot closer to it, you know, they're actually like, like what I guess what you call evangelical Christian. And, um, and so it's kind of like the inverse of a, of like what we consider a missionary We go out, people come here and they get exposed to it. And um, I think uh, compared to the rest of the world, everybody should actually be pretty grateful because like I said, the injustices that happen routinely everywhere else um and it's expected and no and, and, and not only do the people of doing the the injustice not feel bad the people who are suffering from it they don't expect any different mm -hmm. because um you know as 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 they would do the same if they were the majority right but see because i think because of christianity i mean that's the only thing i think uh at least the people in america are given to um to actually care about these things or or want to or want to be fair 
Yeah. Whereas, like I said, it's it's not even an, a question for most other places. That's just how it's always been. Um, you want you want uh, you want justice. You want you want to feel like you, you want your rights to be upheld. You want to have rights. Well, I guess you need to you know there needs you and what army because might makes right. So I think that's what's funny though because Satan is I I think you know he is trying to make us tear tear ourselves apart. And um, um, I think one of the things God hates the most is self pity and like um, uh, uh, ingratitude. And I was like a chief offender of that all my life, you know, just, uh, like I had no real, I had no idea how good I had it or, or what the rest of the world was like, or, or what kind of guilt I might have if I were born somewhere else. Um, uh, and I, you know, I was just, uh, you know, totally ungrateful. And so, um, you know, I, 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 that's the direction God has led me since I've been saved. He has not led me to be more bitter and more jaded, about where you know my country of origin he because like i said there's no place in the bible for any kind of self-pity god is not a fan of that i don't, it, like literally it doesn't seem it almost seems like there's no there's no kind of situation or suffering you can go through where god's going to be like all right it's okay wallow for a bit you know yeah that's all right i'm not gonna <laughs> i mean obviously he's not gonna you know beat you for it but i'm saying it's just it's it's an ugly thing because you know, we're not supposed to pity ourselves or feel bad for ourselves. We're, we're not, um, you know, we're not innocent, uh, you know, victims in anything. Um, so, uh, but I do think though, that they have torn away the ability for one of the greatest things that you can have in, you know, any country is a, is a, is a nuclear family. And so they've intentionally sure. made it almost impossible to have that now. Yeah. And that's just one of the most ugly ways that they've, so I do agree that that's one of the reasons I think why, people feel that way well where did the american dream go well our culture left we don't have that anymore so 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 um nobody's working with you you know uh nobody even knows what they want i mean everybody like the american dream was one thing when people were halfway sane 50 years ago and now i mean what would the american good luck finding a woman who even who who, who thinks that that uh the goal her goal in life is to is to stay home and be a mother Oh, well, well, you mean, no, that will be my side job, but I don't want to be an astronaut. That's the, I mean, I wouldn't be fulfilled all the way. I just have some children, you know? And so they, they, they just, they eroded our culture. And, um, and like, I, I really think Satan got us to take it away from ourselves. But I, 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 I do think that he, he started out from a place where we could have had it, where not for our sinful nature, we, we could have had a, a, de a really good exceptional country, um, in terms of you know compared to everywhere else so that's just something i'm noticing right now at least wow angel thank you you you, you made so many good points we could actually do another whole broadcast uh, <laughs> to kind of extrapolate some of the things you said but what i would focus on uh the point that you're making is uh, you know culture and community have all been eroded the nuclear family that was a good point as well uh, that is something that I believe God instilled in us, you know, the the, the yeah. beauty of having a family, having certain uh, even gender roles that God assigned us, male and female, that's even being eroded. Um, yeah. yeah, they've syst systematically changed all that. So um, for the sake of time, the, the point I want to make is, oh, I, I will say this. This is shown also in the Bible with the Hebrew people. When God was in charge, things were very, very different, but they wanted to have a king over them. Yep. So you see it, it laid out in, the, in Scripture for us that even our desires are to not be ruled by God. Uh, that, that's our internal fleshly desire is, is you know, because having God rule over us, it's too much, you know, like when when Moses talked to God, his face shone, it had a brightness to it. And they're like, oh, please, you know, he had to cover his face because they even looking at even talking to God and seeing his back parts uh, made Moses face shine. The, the light of God shone on his face. They didn't want to look at it. And, and God, one time, you know, the thunder booms and his voice and all that. He only spoke to him as far as I know. He spoke to the people one time and the earth shook, you know, and they were like, please, you know, you talk to us. Don't we, we can't bear to hear his voice again. So later on, they, they wanted to have a king rather than having God rule over them. They wanted to have a king. So 
And be like the other, the nations. Be like the mm -hmm. nations. Yeah, be like the nations. He was trying to set them apart as a different people. They're separate from everyone else. So, like I said, for the sake of time, the point I want to get to is if we were able to look at this place that we live, whether it's America, and I do agree with you, um, uh, America is better than a lot of places, okay? Uh, we just have been afforded some privileges that other countries do not have. And it is a blessing to be born here, whether you're patriotic or not. If I had the choice to live in this evil world and have it be that I live in America or having it be Nigeria, for instance, it's just a for instance, um, I would per, I, I would stay in America. I'm not going to it, it, it. This is another subject, but it, it cracks me up when there are certain people out there that they're angry with the way things are done by politicians so they say i'm going to move to canada i'm going to move to wherever we'll go ahead and move if you, if you think it's better somewhere else than it is here then then please um so having said that things are better here in america than many places <clears throat> but it doesn't mean it's a godly country it doesn't mean that each person that says they're a christian is a christian right. there are more churches in america as far as i know more churches in america than any other place in the world I mean, there's a there's there's you can usually find they make fun of us for it, you know. Yeah. Other other countries. <laughs> so God has blessed us, okay? God, you know, the you mentioned the Constitution. I agree with you. God had His hand. I, and by the way, there is a chance that the Constitution is all double speak that it actually uses this legal speak to contradict everything we think it says. Sure. But I've not landed on that yet, and that, that it could both could be true anyway. Sure. So. And Rachel in the chat mentioned that, you know, Satan means it for bad. God means it for good. And that is absolutely true. God, God has yep. had an effect uh, on everything. He has his plan. Man has their plan. God's plan will win out. Uh, so uh, in summation, uh, I just wanted to say, if we could get to the point where we look at ourselves as just being strangers in a strange land, we yes. look at ourselves as being visitors um, we're not meant to try to attain some level of an American dream. We're not meant to to get comfortable here. Um, when when the or Hebrew expect something like we're not supposed to. I, I don't know. Pe pe expect really justice. Or expect fairness in the world. Like I, that's why I don't get mad about a lot of the stuff because like a lot of the I expect it. I expect it to be evil. They don't, they don't exist. So if, if we can look at ourselves as foreigners in a foreign land, because what we're looking for is the promise that God has given us when things will be good is when Christ is in charge. When he rules and reigns, everything will be good. It's not going to be perfect here. As you said, there's not justice here. Um, there are so many atrocities. I mean, you could just point to the race thing alone, all the stuff that, that has happened to to people of, of of a different race in this country, um, yeah, it may be it may be worse in other countries, but gosh, there are some atrocities. You could spend a whole several broadcasts talking about all the horrible things that have happened. We've touched oh, on absolutely. touched on a little bit last week, so um, it, it's not great for anyone. It's it's better for Caucasians in this country than it is for anyone else. Of course, that's true. It'll be that way for any majority population in any country. The difference is. In other countries, they don't feel bad about it. Right. They don't feel bad about it at right. all. You would never be able to get them to entertain them. That's just how it is. Mm -hmm. and, and, and and that's I, I think that might be because of Christianity. I really don't know why else it would be that we could be um, like what we're seeing now. What we're mm -hmm. seeing now with uh, people, you know, getting uh, people crying, uh, just canceling, like, like because they've made some... I guess it's supposed to be racial jokes, you know, Jenna Marbles or something. She's like leaving you. I mean, like people just uh, prostrating themselves, um, which I think is good. Uh, I mean, I mean, I, I think it's, I think it's the, 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 the spirit of it is good, but I'm just like, we, I don't, I never stop to think would other people even care about this, you know, because other, this is just, you know, it's a standard other places that the majority, it takes advantage of a minority, especially if they're not from the same ethnic group or a different tribe or whatever. I mean, uh, Lee Dan, I've mentioned before, they, they, the Somalia ganged up on his tribe and tried to like absolutely destroy him. And they're, they're the same race, just a different clan. Yeah. You exactly. know, That's a good point. <laughs> so if we can look at what, okay. So when the Hebrew people were in captivity, God had certain, uh, uh, things for them. 
you know, and I'm paraphrasing. It's not a direct quote. Uh, I, I could have taken the time to look it up, but he basically said, you know, build your gardens, build your homes, get married, you know, do all the things that you would do if you weren't in captivity. Uh, and, and, and that's what we're supposed to do. You know, um, we're supposed to live our lives. We realize that we're in captivity. We realize we're strangers in a strange land. It, you know, if you're, if you're picking up on what I'm saying, mm -hmm. if we do that and we're looking to our heavenly home, our, our eyes and minds sh uh, should be on Christ. Mm -hmm. And we should be looking forward. I'm not saying sit on your butt, you know, and just, you know, in, in your in your prayer closet and not interact with anyone. No, we've been commanded to be a light and salt to the world as believers. That's what we should be doing. Uh, we have to live in the world. But we don't have to be part of the world. We don't have to to look at the things of the world and hold them up as some kind of ideal for ourselves. Our ideal is in Christ. Our life is in Christ. So we don't have to, to strive for an American dream. If we realize there's no justice in this world for us, regardless of our situation, uh, and we're not seeking the riches of this world, we're not seeking things, you know, the one with the most toys uh, wins, you know, or I'm saying that wrong. I think they, the person that dies with the most toys wins. I think that's more accurate. Um, yeah. I'm not looking for toys. Yeah, I would like to be able to to have a family, and I I still may have a chance, God willing, um, uh, to uh, have kids and and have a family. But I'm not expecting great riches in this world. I, I I would love to just just you know have a decent job where I'm able to to provide for my family and things like that. And that's all I can hope for, because this isn't my world. I'm 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 a visitor here. This isn't. This isn't what, from the very beginning, this isn't what God intended. He knew it would happen. Uh, uh, so he intended it like that uh, to accomplish his purpose of Jesus coming into the world and saving us all from our sins. Uh, but again, we're not slaves to that anymore. We're slaves to righteousness, Paul said. So if we can remember that we are uh, in captivity and to, um, uh, to be salt and light to the world while we're here, then that can help us. Then we're, we won't fall prey to these things of the world. We won't, we won't fall prey to things like Rona. We won't fall prey to things like uh, all the race riots and things that we've been referring to. We'll be able to keep our eyes on Christ, continue in his word, and to uh, uh, learn to walk in the spirit instead of the flesh. If we do those things, then, you know, uh, average age for a woman is about 82. Average age for a man is about the, in the, like, 72, something like that, I think, the last time I, I checked. So uh, we live that period of time. We're salt and light. Uh, we allow the Holy Spirit to work in our lives and to, to grow and change and show his fruit and live in his joy and his peace. And that's the best we can hope for. Right. Amen. So, that's a good place to stop right there, brother. Cripps, I appreciate your your thoughts on that subject. Thank you so very much. Thank you. I appreciate it. Sister A. Jill. Sorry. There's a really weird noise. You're gonna be our marriage our marriage yes. expert for the evening? Yeah, sorry, yeah, sorry. I'm distracted because I'm out I'm out in front of my house and there's like some really strange noise. Like it sounds like firecrackers. It's like pitch black though i don't know i'm going inside a freaky they're firing so, fire uh, everywhere, just, everywhere so we get no used. i'm out in the country it's not fireworks I don't yeah know what it is. i was it's just enough. hoping she wasn't going to tell us she saw bigfoot <laughs> i saw <laughs> so that that would be a funny <laughs> trick to play on me wasn't it uh no no never have never have seen now you're not going to talk about whether or not you think bigfoot is married are you <laughs> um yeah no i uh i i i that no, I can tell you some funny stories, but I'm not going to go there. Um, um, no, I, I really just, sorry, I'm breaking up a little bit. Are you talking, Jason? You sound great. I was saying, uh, you know, I, I'm still laughing about the black foot, the uh, black, uh, big foot black time. Bigfoot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I hear that they come, I hear, hear they come in uh, uh, at least three different shades, uh, black, yes. white, and red. So. That's right. Um, but um, uh, yeah, I just I just want to just for I mean, briefly we've gone on for a while, but um, you know the way marriage has been um, 
really cast down in our country to where we like, I know for me, I grew up thinking that, uh, well, I mean, at least once I got, you know, a little older now as a little kid, I, of course, I, I, uh, you know, had all like the little hopes and dreams that one day, you know, you find the, the one you love and you'll be with them forever and all that. But, you know, the older I got, the more jaded I got, especially by the media, because the media portrays it as basically impossible. Like you might be able to get married and, and you may be even able to stay married, but you won't be happy and won't, you most certainly won't be in love with the person you marry for, you know, for any great length of time. Like, you know, uh, maybe after, especially not after having children. Right. I mean, isn't that like the, the way that, that, that marriage, wouldn't you guys say that like marriage, how do you guys feel like marriage has been portrayed um, it, by popular culture in the past, you know, 30 years at least, right? Pretty negative, well, right? Well, yeah, look at married with children. <coughs> oh, exactly. That, that was, was, the, that was one of the most terrible uh, programs to attack marriage. I mean, there's been all different, you know, offshoots from that, but I mean, they, they always pick, in almost every television show, they depict a man as being weak and the wife is being com- dominant. Yes, a man is miserable. He doesn't love marriage. He's always trying to escape or, you know, he's weak. And then the woman is dominant and running everything and always and right. The father's stupid. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if they yeah. don't hate each other, then, you know, there's this. This dissatisfaction. Yeah. Well, go ahead, sustain. They did that in the Sorry. Well, too. Bit, sorry. Oh, man, I hate that I'm breaking up. Jason, what'd you say? They did that in commercials, what, what uh, Sister uh-huh. was saying about uh, devaluing the man. You know, the woman knows everything. They did all these commercials for, for many, many years. kids know Ooh, everything. I'm just an idiot. <laughs> and, and the woman was like, you know, all smart and stuff. And that was intentional. I mean, they're they're changing the role, like you said, uh, Angel. When we're talking about the other subject, you you were saying that you know the the woman used to be barefoot and pregnant and have the dinner on the table for the man, and that was the ideal in the fifties. And then it slowly started to change, and so that women could have careers. And I'm not saying they can't have careers. I'm saying they're changing uh, the desires of women and making them feel unfulfilled if they just have a desire in their heart just to be a mother and and, and have children. And right. Right. So both people are trying to do the same thing, and yeah. the kids are just like this accessory, like that, Look, like brother they, Cripps, they have to share duty to. Sister Angel, give me one second, brother Cripps. Do uh-huh. you remember all the way back to the Little Rascals? They used to have a club that the boys were in. Do you remember what it was called? Yeah, the He Man Woman Haters Club. There you go. <laughs> so they've been they've been programming. I told you, I don't even know when it got started. This whole battle of the sexes thing. Forever, but go ahead, Sister Angel. <laughs> I'm muted just in case. Um, so um, I came from a, bro- well, not a broken home. I don't like to call it a broken home. My mother and my father divorced when I was three. Uh, well, two, I guess. My father got custody of me, which was like a really, uh, uh, it was one of the first instances of that. Now it cost him like 40 grand, but my my mom, she was, she was kind of off the deep end at the time. She kind of lost her mind about even the, she, she, my mom had problems, let's just say with men, especially because of her, uh, her father who abused her, molested her. So my mom has to destroy every relationship she has with men. And, but my father, unfortunately, he didn't give her much ammo because he was incredible to her and he loved her until the day she died. Uh, they were actually close friends most of my life. So, because she, but she just couldn't, it couldn't be her husband because she, for somehow the man in her life like that, she, she would have to destroy him. I, I believe because of her father and his abuse. Um, she was just a very self destructive She didn't want to, she never wanted to believe a man loved her, I guess is the only way you can put it. But so uh, with my mom and my dad divorced, they always had a really good relationship. Like, I mean, they might, they might as well have been married in a lot of ways because of the fact that I always saw my, my mom and my dad, um, at least, you know, after about you know right around the divorce my mom was really terrible to my father but uh after you know like by the time i was like six or seven it was like leveling out and my and they had um i mean they were always uh you know she would come over and you know spend time with her i was with her every weekend and all summer and it was i was really lucky for that but i had i didn't really have an example of a successful marriage 
because my grandfather, my grandmother, they had a wonderful marriage, but he died when I was like one and a half. So um, uh, I guess my aunt and my uncle were the closest uh, example I had. But, um, uh, you know, I remember, you know, once I started dating and everything, um, my teens and my 20s, um, I was horrified to realize that um, I could only maintain interest or like, like attraction or feel in love with somebody for like a few months. Uh, and now I, you know, usually, you know, stay with them a lot longer than that, but kept trying to figure out like, why do I stop like loving them? Like I, I love them, like, you know, like as a person, but I just didn't, you know, I don't want them anymore. I didn't, I, I wasn't uh, in love with them anymore. And it drive, drove me crazy because, you know, I, I didn't date jerks for the most part. They were good people. They were good guys. They were good to me. Um, you know, they weren't men, obviously they had been programmed in a lot of ways to, to really not be the kind of man that I, you know, I think women need they, like a leader, you know, they were kind they were just kind of weak, but they were, you know, they were good hearted people. And so it break, you just drive me crazy that I, that this would happen over and over again, that I would lose interest. And, um, but I wasn't, you know, I wasn't cutthroat. So, you know, I would stay with them and just try to figure out, I thought it would snap out of it, whatever. Um, and I thought for sure, like <laughs> marriage must be impossible because apparently, you know, and I thought this was normal because it seemed like everybody that, you know, everybody there broke up or got divorced. And so it, I never even wanted to get like married, married because I didn't even, I thought, well, what's the point of that? You know, people just, break, you know, get divorced anyway. Why just, why call it married? Why don't you just, you know, <laughs> you just date it or you're together or whatever, your boyfriend, girl, whatever. Um, because mm -hmm. I saw, I didn't even see a point. Um, and now my husband, he uh, was raised by uh, his, well, his mother. She, she she was married to his father, but he was an alcoholic, and he like beat her up while she was pregnant, and uh, ran off, you know. And she he was never part of uh, of my husband's life, Joel's life. Um, and he's like a mayor now. And even when Joel tried to go to him and you know talk to him, he he tried to pretend that he wasn't his son. Um, very definitely is. <laughs> you know, uh, his mother is not a liar, and they look alike. And but anyway, the point is, is that neither one of us had an example. Like they say that that's one of the best ways you can, you, one of the best things you can do for your child is to stay married to their parent, you know, and, and, and show them an example of a health, like, you know, a marriage that stays together. We didn't have that. We didn't have an example of that. Um, and, um, you know, I've known him for going on like at least 12, no, wait. Yeah. About 12 years, 12 years, but you know, we've, uh, we've been, back together and married for the past uh, six years now. And um, uh, so, but we're not, so it's, people might think, oh, well, you know, you're still pretty new, but we have known each other a lot longer than that. And we did date, um, you know, 12 years ago um, when we met and I was madly in love with him. Now he is a, like, he's kind of a throwback. You wouldn't, <laughs> you see, it's hard. They don't make him like, they don't make him like Joel anymore. You know, he's, uh, he's not an emotional person. He's not, a, he, uh, he's a, he's a, real man where he doesn't think life is all about just what he wants and what's entertaining to him. What, what he wants in life is to serve. I think that's kind of like what, and by serve, I mean to provide to, to, he wants to, he likes to see his children to see me happy, likes to see us happy. Like it, I think men are designed in a way where, where that's kind of what drives them. And that's what they want. They want to, to feel like they've done a good job. They want to feel like they're useful to someone which is what's so evil about the way they've warped our expectations because now a lot of times it's the woman who has the better job or is working more. I know when I was working, um, you know, it seemed like women were the bulk of the workforce around me. Um, and, uh, you know, at least in certain jobs, but um, even in college, it was like mostly females in, in, the, in the classes. And, you know, uh, it was almost seemed harder to find a successful male or like a, a responsible male. Right. Mm -hmm. But, um, the thing is with, with Joel, I really, you know, he was the first person that I, that I ever dated who was, you know, honestly, like, a, like a, a proper man in terms of, of his mentality. Um, not that he was perfect. You know, he had problems in his twenties. I mean, you know, we all have problems in our twenties, I think these days, but he, um, he hadn't been so somehow this, his mother, he was raised by a single mother, but she would never think it. You would think he was raised by a, an actual proper mother and father um, because of how, and you know, with, with a man in his life to, to teach him how to be a man. That's, you know, he is, I, I'm so blessed that way, but um, I'm saying all this because I want people to understand that 
Um, I, you know, we both start off at a real disadvantage. We should not have a successful marriage, you know, according to the world, because we don't have any example of it. Um, and, uh, we, you know, we didn't get married as high school sweethearts. Um, we, uh, you know, I, I had a child coming into the relationship, um, uh, which is, Oh no, I'll never do that. But, um, you know, never, never marry somebody that's already had a kid, whatever. Um, but the fact is we have the happiest relationship not, not only that I've ever seen, mm -hmm. but I don't know anybody around us that, you know, you know, has anything close. I mean, we barely ever even fight. Uh, or argue it's happened like a handful of times and it, it go it's it's over so quickly like because neither one of us really want to be mad at each other and they're over minor you know like like it's not over like really big things it's usually over like somebody getting gruff with the other and suddenly getting in a bad mood we'll get in a little tiny spat and then it hurts us it's like physically painful not to to, to be angry with each other like or to not not make up you know and so we that's always over in like under 30 minutes right and um the thing that i i just it's kind of just to encourage people especially people who maybe are young and they 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 feel like oh it's gonna be impossible now to, to ever find that or you know that i mean they really set us up with these expectations even as believers um and um i really do believe that uh, well, first of all, being a believer, having my priorities straight and understanding that the word of God is truth. And it tells us um, uh, if you ha if you want the same things, you know, that's one of the most important things in a marriage. If you have the same values and you want the same things, the same things make you feel fulfilled. Not now. I don't mean the same things like, well, we both really want to be uh, engineers. That wouldn't really work out too well because who's going to, you know, who's going to do the thing where they make the home and they have, you know, they raise the children which really isn't something that's easy to do part time. Um, but it, I'm saying if the same like goals and like the same values, the same priorities make you happy and each, each of you ha takes like, he does one thing to make it possible. And I do the other, he works, I stay home and I raise children and, you know, having this home and family makes us happy. So we are actually on the same page. It's not like he's, man, I'd really like to be out clubbing with the boys or, you know, if only I could be out, you know, drinking with my buddy like you know he doesn't feel uh put upon in that way he, he comes home from work every day uh you know and, and and then come he's with me and the children and that makes him happy he doesn't actually feel like that he's being deprived of something um but the thing that i and i think this is you know uh, god uh you know he, he really blessed us obviously but i want people to understand like it, it's actually possible to not only um, to, to, to remain in love with the person you marry forever, um, but to actually become more and more in love with them all the time. Now, this might not be a revelation to everybody, but if you if you come from a situation like me, where you know you didn't have a happy family, you know your your, your parents were divorced, whatever they, or even if they were married, but they were always at each other's throats, and it was never a, you almost wish they were divorced. Um, uh, I, I know that I wouldn't have believed it. I would not have believed that you could actually have a, a, a truly happy marriage where you don't resent each other and you don't, um, it doesn't, and it's not work. It's for us. It's not like a whole lot of work to, uh, to, to not hate each other and to be happy together. It, it comes naturally. Um, and I think that's because that's how God's designed us. He designed us to be married and to love each other. And, you know, one person for one person, it's supposed to work. The problem is, you know, we, get in the way of that and because especially if we turn away from god and we don't listen to him and his word is not truth to us um and you know obviously especially if we don't have the holy spirit um uh you know it's the, the, that you know will inevitably cause problems but um i wasn't even saved at first for the first two years and we already had this incredible um relationship uh because uh, i i just i personally believe that it, we're designed to work this way, you know, um, for the lost, this is the closest to heaven they'll ever get. So I think it's even possible for the lost to have, you know, a relatively happy marriage. I mean, I think God would give that to them, but, um, we're really told over and over again now that it's not possible, but with every, um, you know, with every, rather than the kids making, pushing us further apart, every, we don't have four kids. They've drawn us closer and closer together. And we, we understand each other more. And um, even when we have arguments, the arguments have actually made us 
stronger and as minor as they were. Um, and I, it just, it, I would never have believed this. Uh, you know, if you told me this 10 years ago, I would not have believed uh, that somebody could um, really have a happy relationship, a happy marriage. And um, I also, you know, I, I, I believe that God kind of, you know, he meets us where we're at, right? And he will pick us up and dust us off and, um, and lead us in the right direction. So even if you haven't, you know, you're starting from a place, maybe you have a child already from a previous relationship or, or whatever, that doesn't, that doesn't count you out of actually having, um, uh, uh, actually finding someone that you can spend the rest of your life with happily. Um, you know, and in my case with Joel, like he did not believe he could have children when, um, when we got back together. So for him, it didn't bother him at all that I had uh, my nine month old, um, because, uh, he wanted children and, um, she was kind of like the glue that held us together in the, in the beginning. He, you know, he is her father, you know, as far like he's completely the, the, she, I mean, I, she loves him more than she loves me. I would, I swear to be you. She is absolutely, uh, just crazy about him. And she was like that from the moment that she laid eyes on him. He was ever until then any stranger that came, even like looked at her, she would cry. But especially if they came in the house and she was nine months old, she would lose it. She wouldn't let him come anywhere near her. Somehow when he walked in, um, <laughs> she smiled and let him pick her up, which that, you know, that, I think that was God. It was just, um, you know, a sign, I think <laughs> all, all, the, all that time ago now, long before I ever would have thought I'd be even believing in him. Um, but you know, I, I just, I don't know where every, I know that Lisa, you, you're, 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 you know, you've told me a lot about your father and when a crow man, he, uh, he, you know, he was, I, I hope to meet him one day in eternity. He's just incredible. I've, I know Ben said that, uh, not too long ago. And I thought um, it was crazy because I asked you about your dad one night and you told me he had passed away. And the reason I was asking, so I was like, you know, I'd like to meet him one day. That's what I was going to say. Uh, so it's funny that Ben said that too. They told me about him. They're crazy. But, you know, a lot of people don't even have, you know, even people like my age, they don't have a dad, a memory of a dad like that even. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah. I, I, and I just, I know a lot of people that I talk to that are, that are in our fellowship or people that subscribe to my channel, they're not happily married. Mm -hmm. um, they're still single and they don't even believe that they'll be, <laughs> ever be able to find somebody now because they think, well, look at how women are now. Women are monsters now. Oh, I'll never be, you know, and, or they think, well, and if they are, they're going to be damaged goods. Um, God, uh, you know, he, he, he's not looking at you like you're perfect either, but he will, yeah. he will lead you to the person that perhaps you're meant to lift them up. You know, I mean, Joel wasn't a believer when I got saved. And um, uh, I do believe it was in God's plan that, that you know, Joel means, um, I believe it means uh, Yahweh is God, right? And so I found that ironic because I, I truly believe that meeting him, it was a crucial part of me actually getting saved because I was so happy and he took care of me and he, you know, the, the things were actually in order. Like, like, you know, he was working and he was like, there wasn't chaos. I wasn't worried about some, what's he going to do? Is he going to spend all the rent money or is he going to, you know, like there was always so much chaos in the relationship um, one way or the other, just like a guy being really emotional or not having any direction. Right. But I was at peace enough to even start looking into the truth and finding the truth to where I eventually did, you know, find the gospel and actually believe it. But I just find that interesting because, um, so I discovered that, you know, well, Yahweh is God. Uh, I, I know Lisa has a, has a, a, a pretty good case against that word, but I, I, that's the definition that I read uh, when I looked up the definition of the name, but I found out, you know, Christ is Lord. Uh, I, I believe in part as a result of, 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 you know, getting married and meeting, you know, being with my husband. And then my, my name means uh, messenger, messenger of God. And I eventually led him back to God. So it, to me, even in our names, it kind of showed me how God planned to use us both for each other. So even if you're pretty downtrodden about your options out there in the dating world, don't, don't you know, I just don't want people to, to lose hope because I was, Sorry, one of the worst positions you could possibly be in uh, with, you know, with a child, um, uh, you know, and a, and a fiance who just went off the deep end. All the bills were in my name. He was the one working. 
he just I he he's just totally out of the picture. Not not because you know I uh, would de de deprive them of his child if he wanted to be in her life. He I, in fact I tried to uh, include him or, or give him a second chance. You know, and he's he's just uh, he's 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 like a con man basically is the only way I can put it. But um, I I against all odds. Uh, I, I feel like now we actually have as close to the, you know, uh, closer to what you guys would call the American dream, I guess, than I would have ever thought possible, at least. I mean, I'm staying home. We have what we need. We have our children. And we're, but, but the most important thing is we love each other. And neither one of us, if you had looked at us a few years ago, would you have thought that that was going to be how we would end up. Um, but God can, you know, God has a plan for everybody. And so I just, I wanted to encourage people, especially people who are single or feeling discouraged about their possibility of ever having that kind of life. Um, you know, don't look at uh, what you see, like, oh, well, this is how women are now, or this is how men are now. And I, and, and think, well, that means that um, there's just no hope. I mean, I'll never find anybody because there's, you know, you'd be surprised. Um, but, but, you know, I, I wasn't looking at the time I was not looking for somebody God put them in my life but and uh uh I you know I, I just really believe that because of how we're designed I think that we can have I, I think it's natural I think it's supposed to be natural for us to, to to be married and and to love the person we're married to um for the rest of our lives I think that that's like a natural inclination and, and the world has done everything to make us believe that that's, in fact, the world has told us that monogamy is counter to our nature and that actually men are supposed to impregnate as women, many women as they possibly can per evolution and all that stuff. And that's a wicked, wicked lie. Um, you are not supposed to be um, a dog. <laughs> if you're a man, you're not supposed, that's, that's not, na that's called, you know, sin. And it's also called uh, demons. And um, it, your promiscuity is not your default state. So that's not how God created you. He did not create you to, um, to, 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 to impregnate as many women as possible. But I, that's one of the lies they programmed with the men. And they programmed women to think that they should just expect that even if the, the, their husband doesn't cheat, that he just he wants to. He's just not going to do it because he'll get in trouble, you know, whatever. And those are the ugly little thoughts they embed in us that make us totally discouraged. Uh, before we ever, before we ever even try and, and make us jaded and start out from this, this place of almost just bitterness, <laughs> because we're told to expect that the opposite sex is literally like they're there to pretty much disappoint us by, you know, guarantee, guarantee they're going to disappoint us and, and do like the opposite of what, of what we would want <laughs> in, 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 uh, in our spouse. So, um, but yeah, that, that was just kind of uh, something I wanted to to share i've been thinking about making a video about that before just about how it's possible to be happily married but i have not been married i think been married longer than me but i would love to hear what you guys have to say about that because um you know i'm just one person here uh maybe i'm maybe i'm weird maybe i'm crazy but i i do think we're designed to 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 be able to do marriage successfully within reason considering our, our fallen nature Grip. Yeah. That ain't me. No? no? I don't know what that is. <laughs> I think someone fell asleep. Oh, I thought it was... I, I was hearing something totally weird then. I, that's not what I heard. <laughs> I heard snoring. That's what I heard. <laughs> it's not me. I'm I'm awake. I was listening Chris, to everything. it was you. Stop it. It was you. <laughs> <laughs> I no, wanted to I say... With regard to marriage, that my nephew came to me one day uh, when he was about, I guess about 17-ish, and he asked me, he said, Auntie, when do you know you love somebody? Now, he had been seeing this young lady. He had been visiting with her, uh, going over her, uh, well, I say her house, but she lived with her parents, of course, and he came back one day and he asked me that question, so I had garnered that he was considering marrying her now this was a number of years ago he's happily married to her now and they have two beautiful children but uh before this looking i can look back now but then looking forward i told him well i said let me ask you this way i said 
Uh, let me give you an example where if you're, let's say you and this young lady, uh, you think you love each other and everything. One day you and her have a conversation about um, whatever you're talking about. You don't agree. And you actually get into an argument where you're so angry at one another, you know, you could fry an egg on both of your heads. So, but, but prior to this, you decide to, uh, well, you have a conversation and she says, oh, sweetie, I have a, a job interview tomorrow. And I have an, a particular outfit I want to wear, but I had to take it to the dry cleaners. Would you pick it up for me? I need this. I can't do it today because what I'm doing, would you swing by and pick it up for me? Now, this is prior to you having the argument. You get into the argument before you did. You said, yes, I'll do that for you. So you get into the argument. You see it red. You're mad. You storm off. You go wherever. And you're thinking, every time you even think about it, you're still mad. That's how, you know, go through the whole day. You're still mad. You get around 2 or 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and you realize you have to get over to the dry cleaners to pick up that outfit for her. And even though you're mad, you do it because you don't want to mess her up. That's when you know you love somebody. Mm -hmm. When no matter how angry you are, you don't want to hurt them. And he smiled and he said, I think I understand. So <laughs> within, the ne within the next year or two, they got married. And as I said, they have two beautiful little sweeties uh, that are getting much older. Nephew, if you hear this broadcast, I'm mad at you. I haven't seen him in a while. <laughs> <laughs> So he lives in a different state now. But uh, that, w when you were talking about how you and Joel, when you get upset with one another, it's actually painful that uh, yeah. it hurts for you to be upset with one another. Um, watching my parents, they weren't perfect. And I watched them, how they acted towards one another. But they were always, they always understood they were on the same team. It was like they were pulling together. Exactly. And that you know, it's like the, there's a movie they did that said, uh, "I can do bad all by myself." You know, we we don't have to, we don't have to be married to do bad. So if we're gonna be working together. It should be for one another. And my mother would see women when they would get mad at their husbands, that if they thought their husband was a little too flirty with a woman when they were, they get mad at them, or if they found out their husband had been cheating, because some some men are womanizers. I remember my dad sat me down when I was a little girl. He said, baby, now you don't want to fool with a man that's a womanizer because it's a character flaw. And the only thing that can change that is God. So if he's, except what, if he is one, leave him where you found him. But, you know, uh, you want that one woman type of guy, which I'm very happy to say my sister have five boys. And let's see, two, three of them are still under the age of 12. The other two are grown, which is one of my nephews that, that I was using as the example. The other one is not married yet. Uh, but then I have other nephews from my, my brothers, and none of them are womenizers. And I love it. I'm so happy that that's not a spirit that, that, that influenced them because they had my, my father and then um, uh, his brother. They had good influences. And I really am so happy that her husband. Uh, so, you know, that it just, oh, thank you, Jesus, because that is always disastrous for men. When they when they when they have that struggle, some of them never overcome it, even when they become believers. And it's sad. It's tragic. But but true. Um, but but that being said, marriage is it is a covenant relationship. Not between two people, <laughs> well, uh, two individuals, but God also. That's why I never understood why Christians even bought the argument that other groups that wanted to claim certain things were marriage tried to, to claim and why they would even get upset because don't even get upset about it. That's not what marriage is. You know, they can it's, call it whatever they want. It doesn't matter. It God ain't in it. It ain't marriage, whether it's a heterosexual or not. Yeah. So if he ain't in it, it ain't marriage. I don't care what they call it. 
Mm -hmm. Amen. You know, this I'll, is the, the, the way we've always allowed them to do is steal the language and not define things properly. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Brother Chris. Oh, no, that's okay. I'm, I'm, I'm going to make one comment. And unfortunately, I've, I've, I've got to uh, say goodnight. Okay. Uh, this is an interesting subject. I wish we would uh, talk about it again or, or maybe continue it. Um, I appreciate everything that Angel said and also your uh, comments, Lisa. Um, I completely agree that um, you can have a great marriage, especially if you look at the Bible as a guide. Uh, the guide has uh, many verses that talk about what a marriage should look like between a man and a woman, a godly marriage, that is. And it, it includes... Uh, uh, submitting yourselves one to another. It's not just submitting the, the woman submits to the man. People overlook that. And when they preach it, uh, they seem to overlook the scriptures that talk about what the expectations are for the man in the first place. And they're actually way more uh, stringent on the man than it's for a woman, because we're supposed to love our wife. Like God loves the church is willing to give up her, our life for her. I mean, it, uh, is, is everyone willing to do that for their wife? Um, God willing, I am. I, I, you know, I, I'm uh, not yet married. I'm engaged to Jen, uh, but we have that kind of relationship, uh, the very relationship that Angel's talking about. And like Angel, I wasn't looking for it either. I had given up. I had a, a, a marriage that only lasted three years. I knew her for six years, and I uh, married outside of God's providence. I, I was like, I'm getting older. I still want a chance at family. I overlooked some red flags and I paid the price for that. I paid the consequences for that in marrying someone that was a Christian on paper. But when I got down into it and into the marriage, I realized that we were on completely different pages when it comes to uh, how to how, how to have a, a healthy marriage. And, and she chose to leave, uh, had, a, had an affair. And uh, so I was uh, uh, released from that uh, obligation. Um, and it, it broke me up because I had always uh, held marriage up as a, I, I almost, uh, almost as an idol in some ways, because I thought it would be the thing that would, you know, would make me into the person that I really wanted to be. I thought it would uh, uh, change things for me. And I, I really did hold it up as an idol, but through that God showed me that um, although I wasn't the reason why the marriage ended, that there were things in me that I needed to work on. And one of the biggest things was I needed to listen to my father. I needed to, you know, if I needed to be like Abraham who, well, he did it too. He, he, he was promised a child and he went outside of God's uh, providence and, and, and had a son with his uh, handmaid. So um, I, I learned a lot from that though. I, I definitely learned from, from my sins and uh, I wasn't looking for it, but, uh, uh, in that God provided me with a woman that was godly and she's above and beyond anything I could ever expect because it was indeed from God and it was not something I tried to go find on my own. And because of that, I have every belief uh, that this uh, marriage will last as long as, uh, as long as we both live, uh, as long as God will allow us to live. And we will be using the Bible. We will, we, will, we already are using it in our relationship, but we'll continue to do that, not by the standards of the world, but by God's standards. And those are some high standards, but they can be done walking in the spirit and using the Holy Spirit as a guide. Uh, we want to please him. We, we want to we obey him. And I believe he blesses those people that use the Bible as a, as a guide to how their marriage should be. And um, that, that's what my hope is. My hope in him uh, is that I'm able to perform that and be a good husband and treat her uh, with the respect and dignity and sub submit to her, just like the Bible says. And if it comes down to it, if I need to give up my life, now that, that could also mean spiritually. And to uh, wash her with the reading of the word, and that's, that's what I intend to do. Mm -hmm. Amen. Praise God. That's beautiful. Thank you so much. And, and you know, she already said yes, Brother Cripps, so you don't have to. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> no, she just kidding. That's a beautiful thing that you said. Yeah. Very, very, very she, nice. She can't stay up uh, for the whole show, but she listens to it the <laughs> next day. She'll, she'll, she'll hear that tomorrow. So there we go. I, I remember... I, I, I hope she's still uh, in the land of living with us here. There's a, a broadcast personality I used to listen to in my travels. 
um, at night many years ago, uh, whose name is Raleigh James. And she would talk about, she, she would do like one broadcast a week when I was listening on Friday nights. And she would do all this nostalgia and talk to people. She could go all the way back. I mean, she knew directors and actors and actresses and music and just politics. I mean, I don't even know a subject she couldn't cover and just blow your mind sharing her insights on stuff. But when uh, the topic of marriage came up like this one night, she said, uh, most people make the mistake of marrying someone. They look at them and they say, this is somebody I could be married to. And she said, that's not what you should do. You should look at them and ask, is this somebody I could be divorced from? Mm. Because she said, how they treat their enemies <laughs> is how they'll treat you when they're angry at you. And that's the example I was given with, with my nephew. Mm. Uh, when, what I told him, uh, this is true. You want to see how they treat their enemies? Because if that person loses their religion <laughs> when they're angry and they don't let Christ shine when they're angry, uh, then that might not be somebody you want to get married to. Praise the Lord. Exactly. Well, okay, Brother Chris, we will say good night to everybody before you go. Yeah, I would love to. It's been a pleasure, and I'm sorry I'm, I'm having to leave before we're finished. Uh, just, uh, yeah, it's 3.30 here. And uh, what ends up happening when we do a show till 4, 4.30, I think we did one that was almost 4.30, um, I'm all riled up, and then it takes me a while to get to sleep, and and, and then I'm sleeping half of my Sunday away. Right. So I'm gonna uh, not say I won't ever do a, a late show again, but tonight I I'm, I'm gonna gonna have to uh, call tonight. Okay. But um, thank you for letting me come on again, Sister Lisa and Angel and Ben. Thank you so much for uh, letting me uh, uh, say my piece and for contributing, and I appreciate all your uh, contributions and. Say uh, good morning to everyone in the chat that's still out there. I appreciate you guys, and I'll, I'll see you on the next one. Praise the Lord. You have a wonderful Sunday, brother. Chris, thank you. You too. Good night. Good night, Jason. Good night, Jason. I, uh, I'll be for your uh, I'm Sister sure Angel. Did you get to say everything that you wanted to say on this yes. topic? Yes, okay. I did. I mean, if, if Jason wants to go into it a little bit next week, I might have. Uh, I, okay. I'm sure there's some stuff I forgot, but... Uh, but yeah, I mean, yeah, everybody made the point for me. Um, uh, I uh, I think that the Bible is our guide. Um, so. You and the crickets. I hear the crickets again. You hear them? Yeah. That's yeah. The weird noise went away. So peaceful. All right, brother Ben, did you fall asleep on us? With that, was that you that you said you heard snoring a few minutes ago? No, <laughs> don't try that. Don't try that. <laughs> 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 You're I mean, bad, Lisa. It's not get... even that late over there. <laughs> <laughs> my sinus is like, oh no. Okay. Anyway, uh, brother Ben, with yeah. your segment, please yeah, tell I... us what it is you'd like to begin I talking about. To hear well, okay. So I'm going to probably just limit to one segment because uh, for me too, I'm just kind of getting low energy. So. Um, I no problem. a little bit longer than I thought, but I'll, I'll cover one subject and I'll save the rest for next week. Um, and I thought this might be kind of fun. Um, I'm going to play a series of images and, um, uh, Angel, I don't know if you could see it. Uh, I'm broadcasting it into Google Hangouts. So hopefully you could see as, and participate as well. Um, can you give me a, a yay or nay on that? Okay. <laughs> um, so we are. Uh, I'm going to play a series of images, and I'd, I'd like to have people um, in chat, or, or even you, Lisa, or Angel, um, just kind of uh, oh, call, call out some um, what you. I just want to see what you see. Uh, some similarity. Some similarities here. This is something I ran into. I haven't seen anyone talk about before, and to me, it was like one of the periods where I was kind of having a. Like Angel said, I periodically get like almost feels like spiritual downloads, and this is one of the things that hit me. And so I thought this might be kind of fun. Um, again, not something I heard anyone else talk about before, so maybe uh, this will be uh, new to you as well. So, um, just take a look at uh, some of these. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and oh wait, no, I, I can't. I'm gonna watch it in YouTube because. I okay. In Google Hangouts, you, uh, Angel, you should be able to click on the Churchill of the Churchill Secure and see the same thing that YouTube's seeing. 
Okay. Oh, that. Oh, I can do that. Okay. Yeah. Oh, all right. Thank you. It might, it yeah, might be I was trying to do it on YouTube. I couldn't do it. The audio oh, was okay. confusing. And I'm just curious. Yeah, I can see. Okay. Um, okay. I just wanted to, you know, if you guys, uh, these images are going out randomly and some ad subscriptions mm -hmm. are going along with it too, but I'd just like to see if you guys see the similarities of, if you could like pick <laughs> out or name some similar, similar, similar physical attributes among these things, of these images. Okay. Um, we won't go on for too long. I'll, 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 oh, wow. I'll let you cheat, but. Um, the. Well, I see the cobblestone that they had on their heads, which looks the hood, like uh, the what the Muslims. Muslims. Yeah, that's technically called a phylactery, and it's uh, apparently the the Jews, uh, particularly Pharisees, will put that on their. I believe it's the right hand or their forehead, and uh -huh. it's um, it's parts of the Torah, and uh, okay. and as we know, the Torah is known as also as the law, and the, again, they put it on their on their uh, foreheads or uh, hands. And I think it's basically a symbol of it. Yeah, this is the word of God's in my mind all the time. It's it's really for show. Um, mm -hmm. But also, do you see anything else about the the uh, kind of the uh, headdress? The hood. The hood. Yes. The hood. Oh, with yes. the Egyptians wearing yeah. the uh, with the do you what see is the that cover a asp that? on their head? Yes. Yeah, I'm looking at the pictures yeah. right now. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. It looks like a cobra. The 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 right. the hood thing. The, the this what I, what do they call that? A veil? Not a veil, but whatever. All all the different headdresses make yeah. it look like a cobra. Right. So right. The, the the a cobra has a hood. Uh, a viper, in other words, has a hood. Mm -hmm. uh, the Egyptians had that hood. And oh, it was there's also, a judge. One. Yeah, it was also and it's also striped. Um, so the Egyptians had a striped like a uh, hood, uh, mm -hmm. and then also the Pharisees had that hood. Uh, also, and it's often oh, stripes. stripes, yeah. And these judges in you know England or whatever have these stripes around oh. their uh, headdress as well. And um, oh. another common factor is the often between the Pharisees, Pharaohs, and the um, the uh, judges is they often have a, a, a chin piece as well. Um, uh huh. Um, ben, yeah. Let me stop you right there. You know, Pharaoh considered himself God on this earth. Yes, I was going into that. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> so are you saying that these judges also think themselves gods? Well, uh, again, Possibly. One thing that, well, yes, well, that's an element. So one thing I, I would encourage everyone to do is read Exodus 5. And Exodus 5 is about the uh, Israelis, is the Hebrews treatment in, in Egypt and in Exodus 5, you'll see um, statements like, uh, or, or you'll, you'll hear the, the three main uh, characters in Hebrews 5 are the Egyptian taskmasters, the Egyptian officers, and then the Hebrew slaves. Well, if you read uh, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, um, the, the three main characters really are uh, the scribes and Pharisees. So if you substitute Exodus 5 with the script, every time you see taskmasters put scribes or Pharisees in there, and then when we see officers put scribes or Pharisees in there, and you'll start seeing all kinds of parallels between the, 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 how Christ was uh, um, interfacing with these Pharisees and, and the general unbelieving Israel in general, you'll see a lot of parallels. Like we're, we're talking about scattering and gathering, you know, scattering brick and hay. And, you know, Christ said, if you, you, he who does not gather with me is scattered abroad. Um, you'll hear about that, you know, um, he who um, knew, knew his master's will and, and did nothing will be, uh, but did not know better would be beaten with few stripes. But he who knew his master's will, will who knew his mat knew what he was supposed to do. He will be beaten with many stripes. So Christ is mm. e effectively, um, treating them like they're 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 slaves, uh, and they are slaves of the law, wow. and he's like Pharaoh to them basically. Um, that's how they. Not only is that how they see God, uh, they saw God as just a, a you know a merciless, um, unrelenting, impossibly demanding taskmaster. That's what they saw the law as essentially. Um, and there's many other parallels too, but uh, again, I think a couple things are interesting here is that. Um, both the pharaohs thought they were uh, godlike. Um, mm. The Nephilim, for example, people they could they considered them quasi divine, where they're like half man, half god. Um, 
uh, th- th- you'll see that all through ancient culture of like the Akkadians. They had a thing, they had a, their version of the Nephilim were called the Apkalu, and they consider them 0. 0.666. Uh, they're, they're half man, half angel, and I think half God or something, it, it, or, or a third God. And so there's all kinds of parallels there. But, um, you know, it, it, what's interesting is that, uh, you know, again, Christ called the Pharisees the brood of vipers. And mm. um, again, they I, it just gets interesting because they all have that same hood. Uh, they stand in judgment of other people. Their words are like poison. Their their teeth are like fangs because the law mm. they they were you know they were Judaizers essentially, and, and they stood in judgment of other people as if they were not guilty, and that's why Christ mm. called them hypocrites. But as if they were better than everyone else, and they would uh, you know cast dispersion and judgment on other people, and they ultimately had that power because people looked up to them as godlike. And that's what the actually that's what uh, Timothy. I think Paul said to Timothy that um, the that there would be many that um, that would uh, uh, what's that? What's it? I'm trying to think of the phrase that they would um, have a form of godliness, but de- but deny its power. So that's mm-hmm. what the law is. It's a form of godliness, but without the Holy Spirit, it's 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 just a form of godliness. And that's exactly what the Pharisees were like. Uh, that's what the Pharaohs were like. They had a form of godliness. Um, I, I, I'm just trying to lay out some basic uh, parallels. Well, let me ask you another question. I'm noticing that these these covers, in particular, that you're showing, the wideness of their the the covers. I don't even know what you call it there with its head, there the, where the, the hood. snout comes. Yeah, okay. that that's actually when you look at the pharaohs and and also these judges, their headdresses. It is styled like that too. Absolutely, it's yes. like their head is the whole. It's like the serpent, just yeah, just absolutely. as you're looking at. That's yeah. It, that's why John the Baptist and Christ called them brood of vipers. They 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 were almost like infused with like some uh, the serpent's power. Essentially, they were they were their father, the devil, the the serpent mm. from old, the dragon of old, and that not only do they act like it, their words are like it. They even look like it. Right. Um, and well, I, I was just gonna think, say. Here's like okay, the cobras, uh, they have venom. Yep. So then their words, because man yes. basically doesn't have, yeah, he doesn't have uh venom that he spews, but other than his words, which would be venom. Exactly. Uh, when Paul or Jesus said to the Pharisees, you know, how can you? Being evil, speak good things. If you think of right. like, like venom, their their mm-hmm. words were judgment, it, 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 and that's why Paul, uh, Christ said to the false, wow. you know, "Beware of false prophets. They they outwardly look like sheep, uh, but inwardly they're inwardly, inwardly they're wolves." It, and it's because they look good. They're whitewashed tombs. They look good, but their words are poison. Uh, their wow. false, their profs, false teaching is poison. Um, uh, to me, to, to me again, I just thought this is so interesting. Oh, Ben, I'm just blown away. I'm still in shock because I'm like, I never thought about putting those two things together the way you have. Those headdresses are, I mean, you can see it. It's not, it, it's, not it's not a leap. You're not, uh, it's not a you, leap. you don't I need know. a cape. You don't need a cape for this one. This is not a leap. Right. This is like, wow. I know. <laughs> it was, it was mind blowing to me. Again, I, I, I wouldn't have come to it unless God showed me it, I think. And it's like, oh my God, how did, how did, how did, I've never heard anyone talk about it. I was always it. Like, wondering why they wear those wigs. Yeah. Like, yeah. And especially oh, the yes. dumb wigs. And they, they don't even, like, it was one thing when they made the, with the powdered wigs and it looked like all regal, but the way they just slapped this piece of carpet on their head now over there, they look retarded. And <laughs> I was like, why are they doing that? And that's a really good point. And the robes. That that's that has other significance as well. Uh, you were touching on uh, just briefly there with those stripes, just like on the headdresses. But a lot of these judges in our courts, they don't wear in en- in the English courts they do wear those wigs, but in these courts they just wear the black robes. Right, and even the Egyptians they had a serpent on their headdress uh, uh, on their head. Um, that's interesting that they don't wear the thing, the headdress in our country. I wonder what that's. I about. think they did in the early days. I think they did. Uh, I think they I, did. Yeah. Too, I, could be wrong. But I think they they wanted to try to distance themselves from England because we were supposed to be, you know, rebelling. Our country is supposed to be the uh, rebels who uh, separated themselves from England. How are you going to still have the the courts look identical to 
that of England. Right. I think it would have been too much of a giveaway. That's a good point. That's a good yep. point. Although you could have passed it off. No, this is just what judges look like. This is, just, <laughs> you know, this is just because I mean, I, they even a lot of colonial countries, countries that were colonized, they have those headdress. They, you know, uh, they wear that. You know, like all different like ethnicities of of people. I've seen judges with those headdresses. Right. Um, wow. That are like British colonies. So, well, so what took you down colonies. this road, Ben? How did you? Uh, it just came to me one day, and I go, I don't know mm. if anyone's ever. I've never seen anyone talk about it. So, so I said, "Wow, this is a supernatural confirmation of 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 spiritual truth." And uh, wow. it, it just right in your face, and it goes through all through history. And I don't think these people are even willingly necessarily do, doing this. I just think it's a spirit behind it. And even too that you know when Paul or yeah in, in Acts there was that there was that um, slave girl they said they had a had a spirit of Pythia or spirit of Python and mm -hmm. apparently this was uh, some oh, kind of yeah. Uh, yeah she could predict the future and uh, or supposedly predict the future. Um, I've heard people rebuke Python spirits too as well, and then also these uh, the Pharaoh issued decrees because his word was. That was it. If it Pharaoh said off with your head, it was off with your head. That's exactly what these judges do. Yeah. When and you're in also, the courts, they issue decrees or also, what do they call rulings? Right. And yeah, and, and uh, exactly. And not only that, what's interesting is that these people, the judges, they stand in judgment. Well, guess what? And again, the the Pharisees were uh, judges as well of Israel for, for all intents and purposes. You know, they, they would point their bony finger at other people. And I kind of see that as a fang, almost like a serpent fang. Um, and yet, because uh, they are under the law, they, they are, even though they're judges, they are, themselves are going to be under judgment. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, you know, it's an offending of the tables or a there's all kinds of reversals in the Bible. Oh, yeah. um, and, and that's going to be one of them. And um, something else I was going to say, but I don't remember now. This but this was definitely, definitely spiritual. Yeah, yeah. So I, that's something I wanted. I'll probably plan on doing. I just a bunch of little things like this I've come across uh, that I, I think are interesting. Um, and I'm sure other people will. Uh, I'm hoping other people will find other um, correlations or insights mm -hmm. that I have not uh, seen of this yet. Um, wow, but that was interesting. I think it's amazing. I'm gonna be thinking about this the rest of the week because uh, I never, I never seen anybody in all the time that I've been a believer make this correlation between the judges and the the pharaohs ever. That's amazing. I always knew judges were extremely significant, though, because. For the for a while now, I've realized that um that uh, the you know the legal system and the idea of a like it's all like uh, we didn't come up with it. In other words, like it's kind of, it's 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 a representation of God, but obviously you know Satan uh, you know he doesn't it's not a uh, it's not a very uh, uh, accurate representation. But in a lot of ways, I think you know Satan has to. You know, he has to base his legal system. It's almost like Satan was the original attorney, right? Um, right. So oh, yeah. He, so, yeah so it's like, the accuser of the president. Yeah, exactly. So mm -hmm. it seems to me that um, it, it, that a lot of the principle, like a lot of the legal principles probably do operate by the, uh, you know, by the actual the law. Like are some uh, principles um, that uh, like, you know, he would have like, they would be true to certain um, principles that are, you know, that that uh, how God views things or God's legal system. I feel like that that that's kind of the the point is um, Satan likes to try to make you guilty under the law, um, and uh, I so I don't think that uh, he really bastardizes um, the law very much. I think the law is, um, you know, an ugly cutthroat thing. So it's probably a pretty a pretty uh, uh, true. Uh, the, the the way these I would love to study like how uh, like the comparison of our legal system to all the ones around the world and figure out what they have in common because I bet you that those are the those are the the axioms he has to operate by uh, if well, that makes sense yeah it does I mean the Bible says he Satan has the power over death so the the strength of sin is a law oh. uh, and the sin of the uh, of sin is death um, so th again. Satan is a legalist. He's a legalist to the extreme. And God 
God's law is good. It's not, it's not that the law is bad. God's law is mm-hmm. perfect, but it keeps out the outsiders, you know, and I, I kind of see the law I as, see. like I said, it's God's almost like protective membrane almost. And, right. and no, nothing's getting in. It, it, the only way you get in is to be born again inside the, inside that membrane. Um, and whereas everything else, his righteous, holy law keeps out everything filthy and mm-hmm. dirty. And, and that's why I think this uh, a lot of times in the Bible, it, it, it identifies sinners as with their offense, you know, mm. it, it, you know that's why it says these who uh, such people who practice these things. It's not to say like, um, it, 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 it's, it's, it's basically another way of saying, well, everyone's this, everyone's has, is an offender of these things. You're guilty. You're, it, it identifies you as someone right. who's guilty under the law, you know? Um, well, and also if you see correlations with Christ, they didn't have any problem. Uh, bearing false witness, putting Jesus to death, knowing that he was innocent of what they were charging him of, uh, which was actually just a complete repudiation of their so-called justice because, look, they were violating the law to put Jesus to death. Thou shalt not bear false witness. And yet they brought in people they knew were lying on Christ, Uh, like about destroying the temple when he was talking about the temple of his body. He was not talking about the physical temple. And various things that they'd accused him of. Uh, but also I see in the pictures, you can barely see it in the one with the guy has the red outfit on, a robe. Uh, there's a gavel laying just in front of him, just almost outside the shot there, just barely in the shot. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> the gavel. Wow, King yeah. of Pharaohs uh, yes. with their decrees, right? So yes. they would uh, use their uh, scepter. Right. Um, Kings would have to use that to, uh, when they issued the law, they would have to either mark it. Either Sometimes they had rings, but usually it was a scepter that they used. And so when they give their orders, they slam down the gavel. And then uh, also all rise. They have a, that's actually the name of one of these new <laughs> judge programs called all rise. When, when the king would enter the, co- the uh, king's court, Oh, that's the other thing. It's called the court where the king was. So uh, they that's what it's called there, the court. Everybody has to stand when the king comes into the court. And usually, like if you saw in the movie, um, the pre- uh, briefly a couple of weeks ago, uh, they had to remain standing. Uh, back in the day, the king was on his throne <laughs> until he dismissed you. You didn't get to go. You couldn't sit down in the king's presence. Everybody had to stand. So that's uh, that's interesting. But, you know, we do have to rise. If you're in the courtroom, they will tell you to stand when the judge comes in. And until they tell you to be seated, you, you're not supposed to sit down. Right. I can't sit down. Did I lose you guys? No, nope, you're still there. Yes. No, you're still there. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, I was just uh, making a couple of those correlations. Sister Angel, do you see anything else? I ha- there was something I was going to say, but now I'm trying to trying to remember what it was. Um, um, okay. Oh yeah. Well, so you know, there's like this this um, gray area where we like we think of um, like our children or even our family, our loved ones, right? Like, so you think. Uh, if this, let's say they committed a really horrible, atrocious crime, especially your child, um, uh, uh, murder, rape, whatever, like on the one hand, like the one part of you want to say, you'd want to see them punished to the fullest extent because that of the, of how heinous the crime would be. Right. If they did something really, really evil. But on the other hand, because they're a child, it's like, it's almost like the, you're, there's no way to reconcile the two things. Like you'll, you'll always love your child and probably almost no matter how heinous the crime was, uh, I don't know. I don't know many, if any parents that would be able to, to see their child, like, you know, executed or, or not want to be able to take their place, even though they would, you know, there would be a part of their brand be like, well, they, they would be a danger to other people. I wouldn't want, mm-hmm. you know, want them to be out and about the, 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 the system of law and, and judgment cannot reconcile itself with the love a parent has for its child, for their mm-hmm. child. And I think that that's, that's a really good representation of what Ben's talking about, about how there's two systems, right? And I believe mm-hmm. about, you know, grace or law. 
Now, as you know, he gave us the ability to be parents so that we would understand this, understand the, 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 the difference between the two things, because we, we yes. really just are not able to apply that to our children. And, you know, I'm sure it's, it's almost like a brain teaser or like a tongue twister for, you know, to, to try to figure out how you, how, like, how you would feel or, or how you would, um, like, what your, what would be the right thing to do or the right way to feel. Uh, if you're, if you're, you know, let's say your child was Jeffrey Dahmer, like, like what would be the right, what would you say would be the right thing to happen for them? It's just, I don't think it's, it's possible for a parent to, to actually do that. And I think that's because, you know, it's a picture of, of how we can either be under the law or we can be God's child, in which case mm -hmm. um, the law doesn't apply to us. It's just, well, that's it's exactly really a perfectly right. built in thing. That's exactly right. Like if you think of a judge, uh, say you have a judge. He, he, you know, every day he sees another deadbeat come before his, his courtroom who's guilty. You know, he very, he's very cold, and and he reviews the law and says, "Okay, well, the law said you're guilty." You know, he just click gavel, you're you're guilty, you're in jail. Yet when he goes home, his kid may do the same thing, and mm -hmm. and he would instead he wouldn't have that. You know, hopefully he wouldn't have that same. Uh, right. attitude, a very loving attitude. You say, well, you know, what's wrong? But to understand the problem, how can he correct the problem? It's, it's a, that's the relationship he's, he's trying to relate there. And in fact, I was reading Matthew 12 recently. And uh, again, another thing that came to me that I don't think I'll, I've, I've ever seen with anyone mentioned before is that the overall theme of that is he's trying to teach Israel. There's example after example in, in, in Matthew 12, mm -hmm. where he's trying to teach Israel, hey, there's something greater than the law. So, for example, in Matthew 12, uh, Jesus went through the grain fields on the Sabbath with his with his um, disciples. They were plucking grains of wheat. And the Pharisees saw it and said, ah, you're breaking the law. Mm -hmm. And then, but then he says to them, well, have you not read that David, when he was hungry, and those who were with him, they entered the house of God and ate showbread, right. ate showbread which is not lawful for them to do. But mm -hmm. no, you know, none, none of the uh, – no one ever said, oh, David was a, a you know a lawbreaker. They, right. you know, it's, so there's something greater, mercy – triumphs over judgment and she tried to teach him that and then he goes right after that he goes to another example uh right, well then he talks about I, I desire you know but if you had known what this means i desire mercy not sacrifice you would not mm -hmm. have been the guiltless um and then he mentions um oh then they then they the pharisees get on his case about healing a man's uh hand on the sabbath um and then he let's see here Oh, then right after that, he then he talks about casting out a demon, mm -hmm. and you're basically saying, uh, you know, unless something comes, unless something comes in that displaces that evil, in other words, unless there's something greater, like the Holy Spirit displaces the law. In other words, um, mm -hmm. you know, if you try to keep the law yourself, it's it's disastrous. You're going to end up beating yourself alive. I think that's why you see the Ouroboros eating itself. Um, right. And, and, uh, I mean, and so they, he's trying to basically say, hey, you, do, you need the Holy Spirit come in and displace what's evil. You need a, a, something greater to replace the lesser thing. So the Spirit of God, if there's no law, the fruit of the Holy Spirit, with all those characteristics of the Holy Spirit, those are not under the law. And so uh, it displaces that 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 the uh, the strong man, essentially. You need a stronger man come in and displace and, and bind up the the uh, other the the. the other the previously lesser strong man um and then he, he talks about okay and then he talks about the the, the blasphemy of the holy spirit that they said that hey you you are unclean uh you're the spirit that you have are by by which you perform these miracles you're unclean and he said it's, he says a very peculiar thing where he says well uh it's okay to call the son of man unclean but it's unforgivable uh or i shouldn't say it's unforgivable it it's it's not an unpardonable sin. It's an unpardoned sin. And that is, mm. they were blaspheming the Holy Spirit, which is greater. Mm -hmm. So it's it's okay to call the Son of Man unclean, because he probably, you know, the Bible says he, he I'm sure he was, it had the most clean appearance. It said that he had no comeliness that we would, we should desire mm -hmm. him. Mm -hmm. But the Holy Spirit, to call that unclean, that's, they were blaspheming, the, the they, or they were basically uh, uh, saying no to the, to the force that would, could, the, that could clean them. Because the Holy Spirit, there's many verses that say, oh, you've been washed, you've been cleansed, uh, washing and renewing by the Holy Spirit. So they're saying the Holy Spirit was unclean. Well, you need, you yourself need to be cleaned by the Holy Spirit. So, um, again, that's another case where he they were not seeing 
the greater force at play or, or among them. And even later on, he says uh, the queen of Sheba came in, uh, came to see uh, Solomon's wisdom, but uh, someone greater than Solomon is here. Uh, the men of Nineveh, uh, they uh, repented at the preaching of Jonah, but someone greater than Jonah is here. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, so those are all the themes of Matthew 12 is that you need something greater to displace or um, the only way you can, you can overcome sin in your life is with the Holy Spirit's uh, mm -hmm. support. If you go fall, we fall back into our sin nature. That's the weaker man. Um, we, we are going to, that's it's a recipe for disaster. But if you walk in the spirit, that's when you can have success over the um, your sin nature, essentially. Uh, mm. I don't know why I went down that path, but <laughs> oh, well. Wow. Okay. Thank you, Brother Ben. I appreciate that. That was very interesting correlation. I believe the Holy Spirit led you to uh, discover there that, that you know, um, just like we can discover that words have meaning, uh, yeah. there's a saying that signs and symbols rule the world. Right. And we didn't even know what we were looking at when we see these things. Well, probably we never really thought about them too much over here because they don't wear those headdresses. And you know they wear the robes. I used to ask myself why they why they wear robes. So, I mean, he could come in with with a, a shirt and slacks on and, and a tie. Why is it that he's wearing a robe? Where did that come from? And we never think about it. You know, we never ask ourselves where did these traditions that they have come from. And I think you tied it together beautifully. One last amazing. thing I, I thought of was the uh, serpent's forked tongue, and that you mm. always hear. Uh, so many people on uh, so this day and age, they'll say things like, oh, yeah, we know you're great, saved by grace through faith, not of yourselves. It's a gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Then they'll go right, right around and say, oh, well, no, you can't uh, just you can't live in uh, open fornication like that. Or, you know, it's a forked tongue. They, they have a, a dual. They have a it's a conflict. They're speaking out of both mm -hmm. sides of the mouth. Hmm. And it's just so typical of false prophets. They, they have an inconsistent gospel. Wow. So that's, that's all. Uh, that was really great, Ben. Thank you so much for that. Wow. <laughs> I'm still blown away. that I had never thought about it. You know, we see these headdresses on these pharaohs and stuff. Did we ever stop to ask ourselves, even if we just tried to find out what it was to them, what the significance of the meaning was to them? Because they were wearing it for a reason. It wasn't just decorative. I, I mean, <clears throat> it was partially that, but it had it, they had reasons for wearing that stuff and doing the things that they were doing. It wasn't an accident. This is right. very good point you made, Ben. Thank you for that. Well, even like uh, like David Bowie and Alistair Crowley, you know, both major cultists, there's pictures of them wearing the, the Egyptian headdress. So right. they, they know there's something to this. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Sister Angel, did you have anything else you wanted to remark about this? Oh, no. I mean, uh, just uh, uh, that uh, it's a really good point. I mean, just tying the whole judges thing back together. Like I said, I've, I've known for a while that they are really significant in some way. And it's very occultic. Um, mm -hmm. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I hope I, I, with the forked tongue, it's also like a forked mind because, right. you know, I, I, I posted that list. I think I sent it to you in a text that list of like all the things that would have to happen if a man could lose his salvation. Yeah. And um, mm -hmm. which is awesome. I think there's like 63 things on the list. And I posted that under on point preparedness. <laughs> Uh, on point preparedness, he he made like a community post uh, uh, saying that he has uh, made his statement of faith available. And so I posted under that. I said, for anybody who has no problem with his statement of faith, please, uh, please take a look at this list. And, you know, I, I, I got, you know, no, no, no comers. Right. So or mm -hmm. no, what do they call it? No takers. Right. I got mm -hmm. comments. I got people supporting, but I got like this one guy. He must have left like like six or seven comments uh, trying to argue with me but not actually addressing the list right like That's i, I kept redirecting him to the list because he would right. say so you're so you i get i take you believe in the greco-roman uh insertion <laughs> of eternal security and i was like i was like no 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 don't pull a democrat don't deflect from uh from the actual argument like you know before actually addressing 
you know, what I've stated already, there's plenty for you to go through. Why don't you go and explain all of these things to me? And I mean, like I said, he posted all these different comments, but never actually, <laughs> you know, uh, before right. I even responded because he couldn't find a way to come at me, uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, without uh, he, but he couldn't actually refute any of the things on that list. Um, mm -hmm. So I don't even, you know, I don't even know if he read it. I know he mm -hmm. might just read what I said, which is, um, or, or, or the beginning, if a man could lose his salvation, this would have to happen. And I bet you he didn't even read that list because, uh, you know, maybe you read the first few things, but he, 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 he stated one verse out of context. Oh yeah. About enduring till the end. And mm -hmm. so when I said, you know, I gave him the, the, you know, I gave him a couple of explanations of that, um, you know, and they just come at me from another angle and other people, like I know people have seen it because this guy takes a pretty good stand, not a good stand. He takes a pretty strong stand against eternal security, this on point preparedness guy. And, mm -hmm. um, I know it's, it's weeded out a lot of people that actually truly believe the true gospel from his, his subscribers. So it's a lot of people that believe a false gospel. And so there's only like two likes on it. But um, <laughs> that list is like, it's like kryptonite for, yeah. um, yes. Yes. for people like yes. that. And it's amazing to see that nobody's arguing with me. Well, if I had just pointed, if I, all I had posted was you can't lose your salvation. I would have had so many different comments. Right. But I, right. That's what's so great about that list is that. Yes. They can't deflect to other out of context verses because, well, all right, well, like there's so many things you have to explain here. Let's not even go over there yet. Let's just tell me how I'm misunderstanding these things. And they right. can't, they can't go there. So, but it's double mindedness because right. they're, they're, they're going to say it's grace somehow. Uh, but you have, but not without your own effort. Well, what's another word for mm. effort work. Right. And, 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 and the, it is, a, it's a forked mind and a forked tongue. Sometimes they don't, you know, sometimes they uh, uh, just have the one, but usually they have both. You know what I mean? Yeah, uh, it is a forked tongue because they don't believe in salvation. They believe in probation. We're, we're, uh, we're working to try to get salvation. You know, it's like, it we'll work for salvation. That's what they're doing. Well, then they try to tell you work doesn't mean work. Exactly. Right. Baptism is not a work. Oh, I hear that a lot. <laughs> uh, yeah, it is because you have to get up or either somebody gets you up right. out of that bed, get dressed, go down there, get in the water, and allow the preacher to dip you. So that is a work. You got to do something. Right. And, and those same people will say that that the that the work oh no it's the uh, the ritual law. Well, what is the baptism baptism if not a ritual? Mm -hmm. Like most of this, a lot of the stuff in the law was just the same type of thing. Like how is baptism not a work of the law? If, um, if, you know, all these other th observations that, you know, uh, the Jews had to keep, you know, they're just ritual, like observance, right? So that's what it's mm -hmm. called. Like when you, you observe these rituals, and you have to keep them. Uh, that's all baptism is too. I, I yeah, mean, they, 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 observe it's all semantic. Do. Mm -hmm. It gets it's so frustrating, but they'll come because they're so confused and all they speak is confusion. You can get confused trying to argue with them, even if not that you ever doubt or, or, or am I right? But I'm confused as to how, like, like how to keep the argument on track and how to keep, you know, circling back to your point because it seems like nothing can penetrate, you know. But if you hit them with a wall of not just verses that they can twist or, but like, like principles, things that were clearly stated in the Bible about. Um, you know, plain statements about how God would never do this and how you're always going to be this way. And, and, you know, once you're born again and how you, you'll you never be disinherited, they, that's a really a good way to address them because um, the verses we can twist, but principles that are clearly explained in the verses, you know, they have a much harder time contending with those I found. But yeah, no, I mean, no. it, it's gotta yeah, be spiritual. There's so many, yes, it is. Uh, there's so many ways that, that God gives you angles to prove, disprove false doctrine. Another one is that I like to use a lot is, okay, was Christ our, our substitute? And most people agree with that. Okay, was he baptized? Yes. Did he did he uh, add or remove from God's word? Did he speak on his own authority? No. I mean, he everything they would accuse you of uh, or failure they could point to you, you just redirect and say, well, did Christ do that? No, he's our substitute. He's our life. What is a substitute? If I substitute one ingredient <laughs> for another, do, am I also using that ingredient? If I am, then no. that wasn't substituting it. That's right. right. 
It's one or the other. Right. Christ well, is our life. Our life is hidden in him. And, and don't get that. He, if, if there was anything that we had to do, mm, mm, mm. because he's our substitute, if there was, anything that we, there was left for a man to do, Christ could not have been resurrected. And that, that's the whole reason. He was I'm raised sure. for our justification. He's already raised, you know, and it's done. <laughs> Amen. I mean, we get it. We're, it's yeah. crystal clear to us, but. Well, um, it, it took me a while to get that crystal clarity. I, 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 I feel, I understand people struggle and, um, but I, I, what I hate is when people fight against it. You know, when people, if people are willing to say, oh yeah, thank you. Or, you know, willing to listen, that's one thing, but they fight against it. Then it's, you know, <laughs> Uh, it's yeah, spiritual. I don't understand that. That part I really don't understand because I barely understand the confusion. But you know, I barely understand how it's easy to get confused. I know I was I had a hard time figuring out exactly how to prove it at right. first when I very wow. first believed, and I I had barely even read the Bible. But even that was pretty easy to figure out. But I I, I don't and I don't understand the the impulse like to, so that wouldn't. You don't want to believe you can't lose your salvation. Can't you at least say that you want to believe that? That that would be a good thing, you know? Like, can't we get on the same page there? Like, it's all, like they're like they're. It's like you're telling them bad news that you can't lose mm -hmm. your salvation. Like that would that that's like horrible. How dare you? Well, you know, like you know, like it's a negative thing, and it, it you know that just shows you the strength of pride, really. Because right. uh, anybody that has, you know, anybody that recognizes their own, you know, their own uh, insufficiency and how how much they fall short, you know, they're terrified. They would be terrified to, to, mm -hmm. to think, what if I could lose my salvation? Mm -hmm. And they would be like almost they have itching ears to hear how the, how maybe they couldn't, mm -hmm. you know. And so the people that will come well, at you and fight it, it's like, you know, that that that's pride. I mean, it, it has to be. It really has to be. There's no I. I it's one thing, like I said, one thing, if, if you're not sure, you haven't figured out how to argue it yet, um, whatever. But uh, when, you, when you fight it, it's, you know, it, it, it's got to be coming from a place, I mean, a really big, a lot of pride, like profound pride. Yeah, that's the, exactly what the Bible says, that the strength of sin is the law. Brother Ben. Yes. Do you, do you feel you have enough uh, uh, energy left? To talk about QAnon, or would you like to begin there next week? There hasn't been a so whole curious. lot. Break. There hasn't been a oh, whole lot okay. this week. Um, so I think I'll hold off until next week, if you don't mind. Okay. No problem. Well, then, ladies and gentlemen, let's see. What time is it now on the East Coast? Oh, and again, there. if anybody's not listen, hasn't listened to the others, we're not endorsing Q. Uh, we're not saying, oh, yeah, trust Q. Follow. It's it's more of an analysis of, of the PSYOP that we, we all agree Q is and the truths that we can pick out within the PSYOP, we, basically. Like, Ben's not a, a, a Q cheerleader at all. He doesn't trust Q. Like, no. But the people no. might just be tuning in, and they'll get, they'll get triggered. Uh, and I know oh, I yeah, get triggered, right. too, if I think someone's uh, – like, I could have listened to this whole thing and agree with everything. As soon as they said that, if I didn't know <laughs> what, how, what our angle was, I would have been like, damn it. Not another <laughs> one. Another one bites the dust. They committed suicide. <laughs> yeah, we, 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 we believe in, in this broadcast – this is just uh, believers having a conversation, and we just throw everything on the table. It's you know how they do those uh, those what do they call those? Because I'm not really into them. I don't think I've ever done it. Uh, where they have like those crab boils or whatever, and they have the corn and the potato and the crab, and uh, maybe even lobster, and they then boil it all in the pot, and they just come over and they dump the pot on them like oh, a yeah. newspaper right in front of you, and everybody just picks what they want. We're just picking through the. <laughs> the stuff that we throw on the table and uh we, we're eating the meat and throwing away the shell that's what, that's what we're doing trying to decide what's the truth like ben showing us that those headdresses have significance with these judges and tying that into egypt that was just amazing so we we come together and we're just sharing insights we're not saying any of this stuff is written in stone or go make a doctrine out of it we're just uh examining what we've discovered as believers in and talking again, also learning from people in the chat who have some wonderful insights as well. Shout out again to everyone out there in the chat. We've had 27 people remain with us this evening, all the way to what time is it out there, guys? Because I always get it wrong out 4 here on the web. 4 4 4 4 4 4 4 4 4 you guys have managed to run 
again to another five hour broadcast. Gosh. I want to thank you all so very much for uh, hanging with us this evening. You you have earned it. You have earned your night all badges. You are all B people. And we went over that last week. You're not larks. Although <laughs> you stayed up this to this early in the morning, if you keep you you could qualify as a lark as well. So you can get both up. Uh, thank you again, Brother Ben, for your insights. Uh, Sister Angel, for yours. Thank you so very much. Shout out to Brother Cripps, who hung with us as long as he could. But we understand he's getting older, so he needs to go to bed, get his Geritol. And no, I'm just, I'm just messing with I know, I know Brother Cripps would appreciate that. Just messing with Brother Cripps. Thank you so much. Uh, I don't know what movie he's going to come back and share with us uh, next week. But we're going to look forward to that. Uh, I'm also going to start with the topic. Uh, next week of um, we're finally going to delve into the whole binary thing the way that I want to and how it ties into transgenderism as well as I would like everyone out there who's going to join us next week and as well as the panel to think about a segment I want to do with healthy tips for people whatever it is if it's a if it's a like a cool what I, what they call cool life hacks you know that you can share with people to say ah, let me show you how to do this this way. It's, it's really cool. Or you see something that you didn't realize, you know, you were doing it wrong. <laughs> and it can be really just a, a, a nice little thing that just makes things click for you, you know. Awesome. Um, bring yeah. some tips that can be helpful to one another. Because that's what we should do as believers. We're supposed to edify, uplift, and help one another. Amen. 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 So on that note, thank you so much again, everyone. Much love in Jesus' name. And I hope you have the most wonderful of strong ends and enjoy your Sunday. Be blessed, beloved of the Most High God, in the mighty name of King Jesus. Amen.